Uh... Well, I, the weirdest part about finding D.B. Cooper's lost money stash was where do you hide it? Because, you know, the government's been looking for that shit forever. Well, the best part about that is you don't need to hide it because it hasn't been found in, like, what, 50 years or whatever? No, I'm saying we found it. I'm no, just I trying to figure out where we hide it now. Yeah, but that's the point, is the place you found it at is the best hiding place because it hasn't been found. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I mean, us Chuckle Nuts found it. So. Mm. Oh shit, you didn't send that out on air. Uh, I do not have D.B. Cooper's cash. Three. Yeah, I, yeah. We're, we're all very tired once again. Yeah, so I was... kind of low energy. I had an awful night's sleep last night. It was terrible. I've had two hours of sleep now. I slept well. Horrible. But I went to bed around like 6 o'clock, 6.30 p.m. I woke up around 1 or 1.30. Something like that. Mm -hmm. And I've pretty much been up since then, except for, like, an hour and a half nap I've had. Yeah. I have not gone yeah. to bed yet. <laughs> yeah, Pagan hasn't it, slept it, since the last egg. Here, it's just so muggy and hot. Like, we haven't had a single day that was below, uh, what is it, 68% humidity? Fuck, it sucks. I hate it. I hate it so much. Because then even when you open up your windows, because it's going to be cooler, because you're crying for relief from the heat, you get suffocated by the fucking humidity. I hate it so much. Yep, I fucking despise summer. Yeah, I, I just hate summer. I hate summer in general, too. Kretosis, are you <laughs> going to play Starfield or wait to see what happens to the game? No, I'm going to be playing it for the channel. I'm going to do a video on it in some form, one way or another. Yeah. Um, we're going to do a stag talking about it. I, I have no idea what form that stag will take or who's going to be on it. Um, th this is kind of the problem with the big Bethesda game, like covering it on stag, is we won't be able to do it until a couple weeks after the game is out. And yeah. Like, I feel in order to fully... I should say fully, but to get a large grasp of what's in the game, the three of us are going to have to take different paths each. You know? I already know I'm going to try the serpent thing, just because I want to see how fucked that is. Um, and I will you, absolutely you, shred it apart if they keep talking with <laughs> I was gonna say, everything. Ah, uh, yes! The brothers, Steven. I was going to say, you absolutely cannot wait for every single character in that faction, 100% of the time, to talk like this. Yeah, absolutely. Every single one. I, I imagine that would, like, screw up a lot of conversations. Like, even if they do, like, they shouldn't do that. But if they do, I hope they have at least one character who's like, fuck, I, I hate talking like this all the time. Can we just talk yeah. normally? Yeah. Heresy, you must talk with the list. It is of <laughs> our serpent ancestors. Oh god, I'm getting frontier flashbacks. <laughs> Speak softly and carry a big stick. She sells... Oh, I already fucked it up. She sells... She sells... <laughs> Imagine why they're trying to say something like that. <laughs> ah, yes, Brother Rendell. What is the password? Oh, no. <laughs> the spells, the spells by the sea store. <laughs> I'm sorry, brother. You must work on your enunciation. <laughs> uh... Yeah, it's stuff like that in the literal space cowboy that does not give me hope for the game. Like, sure, the combat looked kind of ass, but you can deal with that if everything else is good. But, once again, it's ML writing, and you know when they have stuff like, oh, it's a snake faction, and they overpronounce their S's, 
and here's yeah. a literal space cowboy where it's a cowboy hat because that's what space cowboy means. You know the writing's gonna be simplistic because that's the fucking most simplistic things you do. Yep. Also, it's funny that you would mention that the combat looks like ass. I won't elaborate on that, but it's funny you mentioned that. <laughs> it may be, as we say in the business, <laughs> that might be foreshadowing. Oh no. Does the guy in that video say the combat looks great? Yes. Oh, oh no. I didn't How? prepare my news today. I can't hang myself. <laughs> Skyrim oh, is the most biblical game. Yeah, they've got flying snakes in that game. <laughs> so anyways, Cree, what did you do this week? I'm getting really fucking sick of the S thing already. <laughs> Too bad. So sad. Um, I released a video, I finished listening to an audiobook, and it's really good, um, The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. I've heard Shad talk about him a lot on, like, different streams, so I decided to check out this, uh, first audiobook, and it's really good. Nice. It's always good to hear. Always. Yeah, I think you'd like it. Um, there's, um, you know how you talk about world building stuff where there's, like, one kind of significant change in how that would affect the world. This book does yeah. exactly that, where um, they have uh, incredibly violent storms every few days. So the way buildings are designed are built like built around that. So the sl um, they're sloped facing the direction the storms come from, because they always come from the same direction. And the plant life um, has evolved. Excuse me. The plant life has evolved in such a way that they have, like, shells they retract into or they retract into the ground to protect themselves during the storms. And, nice. um, there's, there's one region where, uh, the grass doesn't do that. It's, it's just normal grass, and, uh, a character is amazed by it. And the reason it evolved that way is that by the time the storms reach that location, um, they've lost a lot of their strength, so plants can develop more naturally. Nice. Brandon I like, I like that. Yeah. Brandon Sanderson uploads writing lectures on YouTube. They're an awesome place to start learning about writing. Oh, I'll have to check those out. Yeah, that was fantastic. Because, um, this, this first book I listened to, um, it can be a bit slow at times, but you realize this is the first book in a, uh, what's supposed to be a ten books, uh, series? So this first yeah. book is essentially the prologue on its own. Yeah, and you ought to set up the entire world and how everything functions, right? Yeah. Especially it, if it's, it also, not, if it it's does, not like our world. Yeah, and this book does uh, a great job with its characters. Its characters are really fucking good. Oh, I agree with that. Most other writing YouTubes are absolute garbage. Yeah. That's a fucking fact. And they all blend together, too. Like, I can't pick the difference between, like, uh, writings from the screenplay, Just Write, uh, Nerd Write. Like, it's all, they're all roughly have write in their name, and I can't, uh, I can't distinguish between any of them anymore. So I can't even remember, like, who was the good one. <laughs> Because there was, there was one of those channels that was the good one. And can then all the others were, like, awful. Can we give them a song of ice and fire, please? Uh, I wish. But yeah, um... That's, this is fantastic. Pagan! What did you do? Uh, mm. Existed. Vibed. Did, did I content. do anything? This weekend, you upgrade the horde base in seven days. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> wow. Okay, so he was non-phased, happy, content, living in his swamp. No, I was lane. the exact opposite of that. I'll tell you that. I am. My skin is actually starting to change color. Ew. It's gotten that bad. Ew. 
Yeah. It's pretty bad. In fact, after this stream, I'm probably going to go in the bathroom and just fucking take a bunch of ointment and just put it all over my body and try to get this shit to go away. Hmm. Pagan is extra moist today. Pagan's becoming one with the swamp. Yeah. I'm gonna fade away into it. Oh, I did watch Watership Down for the first time. It was pretty good. Nice. Oh, the famous children's movie that kids all around the world love. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Well, I didn't do much uh, this week. Um, well, I mean, I did a bunch of yard work and stuff, but uh, well, I mean, not a bunch. I uh, uh, basically, fuck, what do they call it? Not not trim the yard. It's um, it's where you actually chop the edges of all of your uh, your grass, and everything like that. So it just looks nicer once you mowed and stuff. Fuck, I can't remember what it's called. But uh, basically, I did that. Helped, uh, help my dad out. He's feeling sick. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah, we did more of the, um, we did more of the, uh, dragon mod on Minecraft. Um, I accidentally, spoiler, gave away what the secret mod was on there for a second, but so far nobody picked up on it, thankfully. So we'll, uh, we'll see if that sticks, but there's still a secret mod we're looking for. And, uh, yeah, uh, just having ourselves a good old time flying around now, because it turns out that if you pick Dragon from the start, you can actually get Fly from the start. Really nice. So I've just been zip-zapping around, and we've been setting up a lot of environmental storytelling for our world already. Like, there was a village that got hit by a raid, and, um, I didn't, I didn't save the village, because I'd never seen a raid before. I didn't know raids existed in Minecraft, right? Because this is not a thing that the mod added, this is a thing that existed. So I had no idea that that pillagers uh, would actually go on raids, and well, so what I... happens is they'll send out a scout. They'll usually yeah. spawn like in an area around you, and yep. if you happen to be in a village, um, the raid will start instantly. But if you kill them, you get a debuff. Well, yep. you get and a debuff either happened. way. But if you're in a village, the debuff will go away because the raid will start. But as yeah, long as I, have, you have... I had the ominous uh, warning or whatever debuff. Yeah. yeah, that's what happened. And as soon as you approach a village with that on, if you weren't in one already, then that's when the raid will start. Yep. So I had no idea raids existed. Um, so then I, I fought the raid. I, I got killed. The By the time we were on the last wave, we would have the evokers and everything like that with it. And um, I died and the village died. So now there's nothing in the village. So I decided to make that part of the storyline, and I just uh, damaged more of the buildings in the village. Well, I left a bunch of the uh, buildings untouched, because I think that's more creepy. That fits more with, like, what would happen. The doors are all busted down, but the buildings themselves are totally fine. Uh, meanwhile, some of the buildings got damaged, and I set some of the buildings on fire, so, you know, just to give a little more natural look to the destruction. And just kind of set up as, like, this village, this used to be a village, and then the pillagers attacked. And the villagers would have escaped towards where my nest is right now, which is which is going to be called Drake's Hold eventually. And I'm building right now underground in a massive city underground because we have this gorgeous chasm that has 16 or so uh, ravines that all feed into it in different ways. So yeah, it's just beautiful chasm with these natural pillars that grew from the ceiling downwards. If they weren't the actual um. Uh, stalactites or anything. No, it was it was just world generation error that created just pillars of like here's just stone hanging down from the ceiling. So it's just just really cool looking fucking cavern. So yeah, we're doing that. <laughs> and then the fire um, nation attacked. Yeah, I, I thought it'd be like a neat little thing because then it could be like, well, maybe the storyline would be uh, if people would come along to it. Uh, yeah, nest. Because, again, it's a dragon mod, so you actually have a nest. You can set up a nest, and you can actually sleep on treasure. Like, to act as a bed. It's fucking funny. It's adorable as shit, too, when you actually curl up on your, your big treasure piles. Um, but, we just had that as, like, a funny thing. Like, what if adventurers come along and they see this village that's been ransacked? And then, nearby, is the, the fortress that's gonna be at the, the mouth of the chasm. The mouth of the first ravine that feeds into this huge network of ravines. 
um, that is Drake's hold, and it'd be like, well, putting two to two together, it's clear Drake's hold massacred the village or whatever. I think that would just be a fun little uh, little thing. Good. I'm not going to ever mount anything. I just think it's cool. Um, yesterday, then, my community watched The Punisher. God, that movie holds up so well, and holy shit, it's such a fantastic movie with really good, subtle details and like expanding upon the Punisher lore in amazing ways. Like the fact his son buys him the t-shirt with the skull on it and they're joking about how it's kind of edgy. Right? And then his son gets killed and that t-shirt was left there because again the Punisher didn't take it with him. Frank Castle didn't take it with him. But when he shows back up to where his entire family at the family reunion got massacred. He uh, sees the shirt in, in the sand and pulls it out of it. And it's all, like, stained properly, like, as if it had been there for a few months. And, God, just, what a fantastic setup. It was so fucking good. Um, yeah, yeah, the, the Punisher is too, uh, too freedom-loving. So, you know, can't have that. Yeah, holy shit. Uh, and it was the first Punisher movie, the Thomas Jane one. Fantastic movie. I remember seeing that years ago, and uh, I've actually kind of been wanting to rewatch it. Maybe I'll do that at some point. It's really fucking good. Um, I actually just watched the uh, Indiana Jones trilogy. I had seen Raiders of the uh, Lost Ark for the first time a few years ago, but I didn't get around to watching the other two. Over the past couple of weeks, I watched uh, all three of them. And I really like those movies. They're they're really good. Yeah. I understand why so many people like them now. Mm-hmm. And, um... Yeah. Hmm? No, no, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, before we get to the video, um, I also wanted to mention that I'm actually going to be on someone else's stream later today. Um, yeah. True Pop Culture Seven does his own streams, and uh, he's in, he's invited me on for later tonight. So yeah, yeah. What about the new one? I haven't seen the new one. I've heard nothing but bad about it. I have heard somebody actually unironically praising it and saying it's just as good as the Raiders of the Lost Ark, and I was like, fucking how? Video? But I didn't want to. I. No, it's this guy in a Twitch chat that said it because the, the streamer hadn't seen it. And another guy said, I went to go see it. And he goes, oh, did you? What'd you think of it? He's like, it was fantastic. Just as good as Raiders of the Lost Ark. And I was like, me sitting there going, how the fuck? But I didn't want to start shit. It's not my stream. And it's not my stream community. I thought I didn't want to go in there and be like, no, you're an idiot. I'm tempted to see it for the sake of covering videos of it on Stag. But then you two would need to see it too, and I don't know if I want to force you through that. We yeah. are going to have to start doing stuff like that if we want to cover a wider variety of topics, though. So. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I want to I want to get you guys to watch some other stuff too, uh, like Babylon Five and everything. I mean, I'd be down to watch stuff like that. Just like you know, if we watch it together, I don't, I don't yeah. care. You know, you know how I am. You know, I like shitting on fucking terrible movies and stuff. Like, I got you to watch Jurassic World Dominion just so we could shit on it. So, oh, I, <laughs> well, I wish. Really pisses me off so much. I really want to make a video on that movie. <laughs> we need to make Cree watch the Super Mario Brothers movie so we can shit all over that movie. Because my God, that movie is just frustrating. Uh, yes, True Pop Culture 7. Yep. Alright, let's grab yeah. these, uh, super chats and get to the video. Yeah. Five dollars from Adeptus Fantasticus. Thank you. Your Holy Emperor's message of the week is to always love thy neighbor, unless he is a mutant, xeno, or heretic. In that case, purge thy neighbor. <laughs> And uh, one dollar from just a guy from Alabama. Thank you. If this updates the live chat, there we go. Uh, no. Would you agree that Temple of Doom was the weakest of the three originals? Weakest, yes. Yeah. And I, I, I can see why people didn't like it to a degree, but I thought it was really solid overall. the The biggest issue 
was the woman <laughs> screaming. And yes. It's just, short round. I I don't have a big problem with short round himself. It's just kind of random that Indy just randomly has this kid sidekick now. Yeah. I just always their their dynamic wasn't great either. Short round and the and the um, lady I can't remember her fucking name uh, from the movie, but oh, uh, and, Willie. Or, yeah, they they just never seemed like they had like good chemistry. It was always just like, lady, Indiana needs us, lady. <laughs> like, stop, stop, both of you, stop. Um, yeah. I... I, I think it was a solid movie for the most part. Like I said, the screaming. Yeah. I, I and again I don't Badass hate... ending. Badass ending though. Oh Holy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Badass villain. Like that's such a cool villain design. Yeah, and and just how does he kill people? He rips their fucking heart out of their chest. <laughs> like, holy shit. And it fucking combusts in the flames as he holds it. Yeah. I just love that at the end. Uh, Indiana, come to your heart, Indiana. And he's like, "What?" <laughs> like, grabs his chest. It's like Kalima, Kalima. <laughs> the villain would have survived the Gators if he was Florida Man. If he was Florida Man, that would have been those would have been his pet Gators. Those would have been his emotional support Gators. Canonically, Indy's son was killed by Short Round in Vietnam. Well, it wasn't Short Round who killed him, but... Yeah, so... A lot of people don't like Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I haven't watched it yet. I might to see it's, how it is. It's but really I've bad. I've it heard, is really bad. I've heard almost nothing but bad about it. But, oh. like, you can still pull some positives out of it from some of the things I've seen people talk about it. Uh, even if it is overall bad from what a lot of people say. Um, but I can't believe ends... you haven't seen that movie yet. It is it's... so <laughs> fucking bad. Well, I only just saw Temple of Doom and uh, The Last Crusade for the first time within the past week or two. Fair. Um, and I, I watched all of the uh, Indiana Jones movies a long time ago, and then for the longest time there wasn't one, and then they came out with Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, and I was like, ooh, I'm so excited. I finally get to see a you know, a fucking Indiana Jones movie that came out in my time, and I went and saw it. At, I went, I went and saw that shit in theaters. It was fucking awful. It was so bad. Um, and though he, seriously, I, I think I can say this pretty safely. We should have the the best timeline would have been more Indiana Jones films with Sean Connery and Harrison Ford together again. Maybe, because yeah. But their even, chemistry was so fucking good. It, it was. But I'd be fine with more good Indiana Jones films, even without Sean Connery. But it, it, it's the thing when you watch or play something really good, and you're like, damn, I just wish there was more of this. That, yeah. That's the feeling I had mm. at the end of Last Crusade. There, There um, is a little bit of the, tism the point, uh, in it, but yeah. The point I was trying to make several minutes ago, though, is despite all the problems with Crystal Skull... It still ends on that happy note of, okay, yeah, Indy gets married, his, uh, there's a hint of his son maybe picking up the mantle as sort of like a, um, he, he's about to put on the hat, but Indy takes it away. And then apparently fucking Dial of Destiny starts off with, yeah, your kid's dead, Harrison Ford. It's like, oh. That, that's, wow. that's a great way to start to, oh, Andy's getting divorced. Yeah. Mm. And then, and then the movie apparently ends with uh, Marion coming back. It's like, what the fuck was the point of that? Yeah. Yeah, that's just, fucked. It's just the whole fucking Luke Skywalker Han Solo thing all over again. Oh, hey, this beloved classic character, let's ruin him as hard as possible. Yep. I, uh... God, though. Like, thanks for reminding me that. I'm gonna... Go, I'm gonna watch the fucking Indiana Jones movies again. You know what, my community, we're going to be doing that uh, at some point. Once we finish the Lego <laughs> movies, that's what's up next. Well, I was going <laughs> but, to say, once I've done this video, the three of us should uh, sit down and watch them, because I do, yeah. like, like I said, I just watched all three of them. I enjoyed them so much, I do want to watch them again. Oh Yeah, yeah. I'd be down for that. 
but wait, I wait. really, I really want to see your reaction to. Well, obviously, there's the fucking nuke. Everyone knows about the nuke, but yeah. I really want to see your reaction to the ants. Yeah, honestly, I, uh, I know about that already because I've seen Mr. Plinkett's video on Crystal Skull. Oh, okay, fuck. Oh yeah, <laughs> I laughed my ass off in the theater at the ants part. I was dying. <laughs> I was just <laughs> laughing so hard, and everyone else in the fucking theater started laughing too because it was so absurd. It's so gruesome too. Like Jesus yeah, Christ, yeah, it's way very to die. gruesome. It was, it was like the one good scene in the entire movie. But even then, it was also just so fucking out there and dumb that it's like it's hilarious. But I'm also really glad that it's here. Yeah. God, though. Never mind. The, the thing that I was trying to say, though, is my favorite, one of my favorite scenes from uh, The Last Crusade is when they're trying to escape in the biplane and <laughs> <laughs> that senior tries to shoot the airplane and he shoots out the tail of their own plane. I knew exactly where you were going. <laughs> Now, in real life, that's impossible. There's actually an interrupter that will stop you from shooting your own uh, tail off. But, you know, get rid of that that nitpick aside. I just love the fact that he's like, uh, Son, I'm sorry. I'm for dead. Son, they got us. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about uh, that. That's great. <laughs> and it, is, it is so fucking good. They have such great comedic timing with each other, too. Especially tied to the chair. Dad? Yes? Dad? Yes? Dad? Oh, the fireplace! Oh. <laughs> if I can, the voices will not stop immediately with the face. And then, ants in my ass? More likely than you think. <laughs> oh, no. I am unmedicated today. Oh, no. I could tell. Holy shit. I saw your one <laughs> comment earlier where it was literally just like screaming, like storytelling skeletons. And I'm like, well, someone's seen the video. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I guess a little minor spoiler. This guy actually praises the storytelling skeletons. So, you know, that's that's a big old yike. But um, <laughs> yeah, chat, to, to kind of get you a setup for this video, this guy, he's a smaller channel. Um he starts off his video with a minute and 50 seconds uninterrupted of a super copyright heavy song. When he doesn't see, he doesn't say anything. There's no title screen. He just plays it for some reason. So I actually had to download his video, chop that all off, and then re-upload it. I, well, while I was re-uploading it, I also I cleaned up the, the quality a little bit so you can see things a little bit better. And I uh, upscaled it from 720p to 1080p. So hopefully you guys can see it better, too. But I'm going to tell you right now, chat, we're going to play it for a little bit. And then I hope you'll understand why I say that we're going to be playing it from then on at 1.25 speed minimum. <laughs> if not 1.5. Oh, by the way, back to the topic of Indiana Jones very quickly. Some of the names people are coming up with for the Dial of Destiny are fucking hilarious. I, my favorite one so far is the diagnosis of dementia. Yes! That was cool. <laughs> yeah, that one's a good one. <laughs> skeletons! Did you say skeletons? Oh, boy. Oh, and, and prepare yourself. We're, you're about to get one of the most wild comparisons ever. And... How they, how this guy doesn't understand that they're not remotely the same, <laughs> even if the, the base premise is the same, is just like whoa. Indiana Jones and the Dilator of Disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! God. Well, are we ready? <laughs> Indiana Jones. And the dying old destitute. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Suicide Hotline. <laughs> Indiana Jones, the downfall of Disney. I like that one. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, yeah, see, so I was going to make a point of, like, yeah, he's not saying anything, chat. So he had a minute and 50 seconds of him just playing the I don't want the world, to, I don't want him to catch the world on fire. And then he just starts with another 15 seconds of not saying a word, uh, and like, at all. And it's like, what a weird fucking pacing this video has. Well, you, did say, you, you did say it's a smaller channel. This is one of the things he could uh, improve on with future videos. Yes. It, it, I would be a lot more negative or, like, angry critical of this if it was someone with, like, 200,000 subscribers or even 50,000 subscribers, you know? Yeah, but this guy has, like, 285 or something like that. He's okay. super, super tiny channel. Okay, so it's a small channel. It's probably someone who's new to this. This is one of the things you can improve with over time. This is yes. legitimate advice. Try not to have dead air in your videos unless... Like, there's a point and purpose for that dead air. Um, yep. Obviously, don't play copyrighted music in your video unless you have the right to, so you can still monetize your video. Um, mm. Stuff like that. Yeah, I... <laughs> from, from watching this video, I don't really dislike this guy as much as, like, some of the other people we've covered, so I'm probably not going to be anywhere near as mean... But he definitely does start to get a bit on my nerves towards the end where I'm going to be maybe a little bit more harsh. But for the yeah. most part, like the video is meh, but I, I would say I don't dislike <laughs> the guy, but is he an idiot? <laughs> a lot of this. Yeah, and I, I don't want to say that to be mean, but there are moments where I'm just like, but how? But this I'll, first point, this first point here is going to be pretty fucking wild. I'll try not yeah. to be mean, but I'm laughing at some of the comments in chat because I, I mentioned dead air and they're already, uh, people are already uh, referencing the Kumite. Whoa, Kimosabi. <laughs> dead air. <laughs> <laughs> that is unironically a great song. <laughs> I, I, is, I... Oh god, Ice Cuz? I already explained it. it was, I had to download this guy's video and chop out a big chunk of it because he had copyright music at the start of it. So I had to fix it. And then while I was there, I, I went ahead and um, cleaned up uh, some stuff and then changed it to 1080p instead of 720p. Yeah, fucking UMG straight up claimed it because, yeah, of yes. course, that he played the entire song unedited and uninterrupted for, like, literally at the start of the video. That's how it opens. And it's like, yeah, for UMG's going to claim your shit. For just shy of two minutes straight. Yeah. Just shy. So we had to cut that out because otherwise UMG would claim this stream. Yep. All right. In Fallout, Fallout 3, you play the role of a vault dweller. When you first play the game, you go through most of your early life to start the game, and this is actually quite unique. In a movie or show, you might be given flashbacks of what happened. Well, I, I just want to say, too, like, you can kind of see what I'm talking about when he's kind of slow and ponderous on a lot of his stuff. Um, so there's a reason why we're going to increase the speed. I don't have the biggest but, issue with that. It... I, for a channel that small, I am surprised that his audio quality is that decent. Yes. Um, yeah. So that, that's it's just, definitely a good first step. It's just trying to get through this is uh, pretty pretty rough. Um, so we're going to increase the speed of it, but I just wanted to give the, the audience a chance to hear what it is at proper normal speed, right? All right. Um, and, uh, think yeah. oh, go ahead. As you say, with this, the whole thing of like it being unique... It doesn't make it good. Well, like, not just that. I, I disagree with that in the first place because um, there are TV shows or even movies that dedicate a big chunk of their time to, like, the the start, like, where your character comes from. Not, yeah. like, the character's early life that's significant to the story isn't always presented in flashbacks. Yeah. It's just, I... It's just, it'd be more fair to say the flashbacks are very common. Yeah, they are common, but uh, this kind of thing has been done before. Now, I'm uh, referring to his cadence of speech, um, though he does have some pretty low IQ takes. 
in this. He has a he has a take that point I agree with a lot, but then he'll waffle it around so much that it just turns into like a what the fuck. You had a great point there, and then you just you just kind of like bleh. Yeah, my thing. I, I'm not gonna spoil it too much, but there is one thing that comes up where I'm just like, yeah, no shit. Like that. That's literally the point of the saying. <laughs> like you're you're not yeah. breaking new ground by saying what you're saying right now. Everyone knows that. Mm. Um, is it skipping for anyone else? His video skipped for me, so it's going to skip for everyone watching. Oh, it did. I didn't know that. It's very brief. Very brief. Ugh. Well, we'll go back a little bit it's... just to uh, just case. Well, we didn't miss anything there. It's just more important arguments in the future. We have to be aware. Well, I'll have to be aware of. Okay. And I just put it to one point two five. So here we go. You go through most of your early life to start the game, and this is actually quite unique. In a movie or show, you might be given flashbacks of what happened to a character early on, but in a game, that doesn't work as well. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Most of the time, you have a character that is very strong, very well written to make up for... So, here's another thing of, like, give examples of when it did work and when it didn't work. Because uh, right now, Fallout 3, it didn't work. It was a really bad idea. Especially because your childhood doesn't actually revolve around your childhood. It is clear that the, the developers had a very clear railroad message that they wanted to get through. Which is why you got the fucking uh, Barbarian comic that is not useful for, well, I'd say 99.9% .9 of the player base. I'm not sure, well, I haven't watched a ton of uh, Fallout 3 Let's Plays, but I don't think I've ever seen anyone actually use hand-to-hand. Because -hand. Yeah. you're playing a post-apocalypse wasteland game, why wouldn't you use guns? I have seen a hand-to-hand -hand playthrough for Fallout 2. Mm-hmm. That's because Fallout 2 is going to get referenced run. in this. Like, Fallout 1 and 2 are going to get referenced in this, and they're going to be pretty, like, eh. Oh, no. But, yeah. Um, it was just one of those things, like, it just did not work here. Like, this whole section... There's a reason the, the I think, the most popular mod... I'm, I'm pretty sure it's either the most popular mod or one of the most popular mods, is to skip the entire childhood section and just start you right outside Vault 101. Yeah, it is one of the most popular mods. It was one of the most popular mods for a while, and I think it recently, like, just a couple of years ago, got beat out by some other mod, but for the longest time, it was um, the most popular. Yeah. It, but yeah, the, the intro is basically just setting up for you to try and find the main character of the game. Yeah. Which is... Not you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because... It, it... A lot of the intro is either character building or trying to get you attached to dear old dad. So you mm -hmm. care when he runs away. It's like, but why though? Yeah. Like they, I'm sorry, building up an audience's attachment to a character is, you, you need more than what they did here. I think you can do it in the time they give for the uh, intro. It's just they didn't do a good job of building them up as someone the audience should care about. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's just because he's... Well, you don't get to know much about him at the start of the game, and the more you learn about him, the more... Well, logically, you should not like him, because he abandoned the entire wasteland to the water crisis. But he intentionally did that, and he was the one that was keeping Project Purity together. So it's on him that Project Purity fell apart. And allegedly, the entire wasteland's going through a water crisis. A water crisis but, that everyone dying from the water crisis isn't aware of, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. So it's and one of those, just, like, hmm. Yeah, and he just decides, like, after his wife dies, like, oh, well, I need to make sure that me and my son have, you know, live a... A, d a good life away from all this so just gonna go in the vault fuck everyone else fuck uh, fuck doing this this project purity shit yeah and it's like uh, y you know you could still work on it and raise your kid at the jefferson memorial right yeah oh there's also gonna be another claim in here that gets made later we'll we'll counter that claim when we get to it but it does involve the jefferson memorial and project purity itself 
Yeah. I guess I should make mention of a chat. This video here is titled, um, so obviously here you see I, where I've done the audio fix, but the video itself is titled, Why Fallout 3 is an Underrated Masterpiece. Which is kind of so, a hilarious title because underrated means something that got a lower rating than it should have, essentially. Like, um, like New Vegas, for example. Like New Vegas, for example. But, like, you know, hey, this thing should be an, a 9 out of 10 rating, but it's only a 6 out of 10 instead. Yeah. Um, Fallout 3 is actually rated pretty highly by the critics. It's used as a fucking talking point and argument against criticism. Oh, well, it's highly rated. Yeah. Like, so... To, to say it's underrated when it's got, like, what, an 86 on Metacritic or something? It's, it's like, something pretty high. It, it's it's very high. And to say it's underrated, it's like, how high do you think this should be? Yeah. Yeah. And now, anything, if anything, it's, it's way, way, way overrated. Yeah, yes. it is. It is so fucking overrated. People love this game to death and as we will see love to contradict themselves because yeah. my god this guy just does not seem to know what he wants this game to be and like he'll say a bunch of stuff where he rightfully criticizes it for why it's not a good game and then we'll just be like completely ignore it's everything a, he just said it's a great game and a great fallout game is what he'll say like in the next sentence it's like what the f yeah it's so weird like he'll go oh. on this like tangent about like oh yeah well the game's bad for this reason this reason this reason this reason like like all the yeah. core reasons that a game should be good and then he'll just randomly say like later like oh but it's a really good game in fact it's a really good fallout game yeah. when, I, when i said 86 i got that number wrong apparently it's 91 on metacritic which Jesus Christ, this is not a 91 out of 100. No, not even yeah. close. Um, but yeah, so chat, like I said, I want you to keep in mind the title. Why Fallout 3 is an underrated masterpiece. Because again, the whole point of this video is to explain that title. He has made the assertion that it's an underrated masterpiece. Now he needs to prove it in his video. And see... Mm. See the evidence that is provided, and and see if you can figure out did he even talk about it that way. <laughs> Ninety one Metacritic is fairly rated. Not going to lie, no, that is way overrated for this game. This game yeah, is this really be, not good. This this should honestly be like I don't, I don't want to say the tens, but maybe the twenties or thirties on Metacritic. It is yeah. it is abysmally bad. Yeah, it, it, especially like the more you go over it, like we have, like. The more, yeah, the more you the more you revisit it, the more you realize it is so bad. For like the longest time, well, I, I don't want to say the longest time, but for a bit there, I was starting to think like that Fallout Four. I don't know. I, honestly, I went back and forth because for a while I was like, oh well, at least Fallout Four tried to do this because they learned their lesson from Fallout Three. But then at the same time, <laughs> I'm like, ah, oh, but then Fallout Three at least did this, and Fallout Four didn't. So. I don't know. They're pretty close to each other in terms of being pretty bad. Like, I used to think Fallout 4 was way worse, but now I'm starting to be like, I don't know. They're both pretty shit on, like, for different reasons, and it's like... I was going back and forth for a long time, too, because I had a hard time figuring out which one was worse. After do uh, redoing Part 2 of the Fallout 4 analysis, I'm a lot more confident in saying Fallout 4 is worse for... Yeah all the issues involving synths being so much worse than I thought they were before. The fact yeah. that the Institute accidentally created a way to... Or, sorry, invented a way to create energy is insanity. And no yeah, one not realizes it or it. notices it. Mm -hmm. Um, 20s and 30s? Look, maybe it's because I don't really play the OG 1 and 2 Fallout games, but I really like the story. It's that the story is the worst part of Fallout 3. Yeah, even Again, this guy admits that the story yeah. is awful and that you don't play this game for the story. Which, it, I'm sorry, but if it's a fucking Fallout game, it's kind of important that the story is at least decent. Also, yeah. you don't need to have played the first two games. It's just Fallout 3 on its own has a plethora of problems, even if you ignore the lore of uh, Fallout 1 and 2. Um, yeah. Again, yeah, the main and... story, the world building is a big part of it. Um most of the side quests are incredibly shallow. 
Um, like, even if... Let, let's pretend Fallout 3 is the first game in its own series. Power of the Atom is still shit because it's, hey, do you want to nuke this town for no reason? Yeah. Even if this yeah. was called Fallout, you know, no 3 or anything on it, um, the fact that it's a... The entire story revolves around a water crisis that does not exist, but we're just told it is over and over again. But no, the entire rest of the game world doesn't give a shit. Citizens don't care about water. Water isn't, like, insanely expensive or rare to find or anything. Like, th there is no water crisis, except that the game storyline keeps saying that there's a water crisis. But no, there isn't. It doesn't exist anywhere else in the game. There are no yeah. mechanics stating there's a water crisis. None of the NPCs talk about a water crisis, except for the people in the main storyline. I And this is a water crisis that had been go has been going on to the point when your character comes out for at least 20 years... If not longer, because you wouldn't Def create Project Purity the day the water crisis started. You would have no. created it beforehand, seeing the crisis coming up. So at least two decades. Yeah. Um, One dollar from just a guy from Alabama. Thank you. The Fallout 3 prologue is just Mountain Blade's backstory selection with considerably less impact on your character. I've never played that game. Yep. I, I would agree. I would absolutely agree. Uh, five pounds from Threadnought. Thank you. Did Creed just diss, uh, unarmed builds while criticizing a Grognak comic? That combat, or sorry, that comic raises melee, not unarmed. And unarmed is great in Fallout 1 and 2. So I said, like, Fallout 3 in particular for unarmed. And yeah, I did get that wrong. There's a different skill book for unarmed. Grognak is melee. But I still don't really see people use melee. Um, yeah. I, I really, the, the only time people really use melee in Fallout 3 is when like they get the power armor and the super sledge. That's about it. Like other than that, nobody really touches it. Uh, I do want to grab this comment before we go to the next super chat though. Uh, Witho says, "I enjoyed Fallout 3 when it came out, but when I listen to people criticizing it, I totally agree. I still had a good time playing it back then, but it doesn't change the objective quality of the game. Absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. the whole thing. Is like, again, if, if you're." Maybe that's a bit harsh. I was going to say if you're a person of character. But if you're just a, a normal functioning human being, you could separate like the fact that something you love is objectively shit, but you still love it. Like, The Room is objectively shit, but it's still a classic to watch because it's so bad. Birdemic is objectively fucking shit with its kamikaze suicide birds that make plane noises, but it's so inept while being sincere that it's fun to watch. Like, it's fucking Right to Hell Retribution is a god-awful game. I love the shit out of it because the main character is so pants-on-head stupid. Morbius. <laughs> yeah, Morbius. Morbius. I, don't well, even I can't have say to that say I anything. like that movie, but... <laughs> yeah, just, just Morbius. That's all you need yeah. to know. I, I can't yeah, say I, I like that movie, but... Oh I my can. god, yeah, it is. <laughs> it's a thing. Yeah, definitely creak in. Yeah, I, 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 I want to push back on that whole, like... Oh, because you guys played like one and two. It's like I I started with three and I did not play one or one or two until many years later, and Same. I only played them once, and it was so I could get the story, and that's it. And I never touched them again because I'm just not a big fan of that type of gameplay. I never have been, so I kind of knew that when I play it, it'll literally just be I will beat it once, and I will probably never touch it again. But it had a really good story, and I did really enjoy it, but I probably just won't ever play it again. But yeah, no, I definitely started with Fallout 3, and I did really like Fallout 3 when it came out, and I first played it. But then over time, I was like, even then, when I first played it, I was like, the story's not very good, but I like everything else. And then as time went on, I was just like, oh, no, this game, this game is just bad. So this yeah, reminds Fallout me... Actually oh, go ahead. Fallout 3 was also my first Fallout game, and I didn't play Fallout 1 and 2 until after Fallout 4. So. Yeah. Well, this reminds me. I wanted, I forgot to bring this up in the section when we talked about what we did last week. I watched Patrician's, both of his uh, part 1 and part 2 of his uh, Outer Worlds uh, video. He was a bit unfair in different parts, like saying that it was Obsidian's fault that they, did, they signed the Epic exclusive deal when it was the publisher that signed the deal. And so Obsidian had to honor it. 
because again they were published by private division and private division is the one that signed the deal so that was a bit weird but he had, he had bit stuff like that but i hadn't known about some of the the quest stuff and some of the dialogue that patrician had found so originally i would say that i would have given um outer worlds like uh six maybe 6.5 out of 10 um Man, after some of the the dialogue stuff that Patricia had found in his playthrough, because and then this is the whole point of why I like Patricia's videos, is that he will actually show the evidence for his fucking points, the things you're supposed to do. Yeah. So he showed his evidence for the points, and he was showing the dialogue and stuff that he found that I didn't encounter when I was playing through the game, and I was like, oh yeah, that's that's not okay, that's. That's kind of fucked. They, they give away the, the entire concept of the game earlier, like way earlier in like a throwaway quest, and that, that does undermine the reveal quite significantly. Um, oh, man. And just like all, all these little things that add up, and I'm like, oh, God, yeah, if I had seen that, that would have fucked that over. So, no, after, after seeing more of the evidence, I would definitely draw it down. I'd probably say it's a 5 out of 10. It's just It's just average. Maybe four point five out of ten, because there is there is some tism there that's pretty rough that I didn't encounter, but uh, Patrician did. And again, that's why I'm I'm grateful that he does the videos the way he does. I'll disagree with certain points in his video for sure. I even talked about this on my stream, but the fact is he actually shows his evidence as he goes through, Which and that's most... the beautiful thing. That's what you should do. Yeah, and most people don't for some reason. I don't get it. Yeah. $10 from Holdra Dancer. Thank you. Once upon a time, I used to like Fallout 3 way more th uh, than New Vegas because it was more fun for me to try and make a character in a box. Now I look back and am appalled by my lack of choice in Fallout 3. Yeah, there was a time yeah. where I considered Fallout 3 to be the better game uh, than New Vegas, and then I started looking at things critically. Yeah. And even more so when you start taking in, like, when you then take in the fact that it is Fallout 3, well, what's it a sequel to, Fallout 1 and 2? And you start looking at those objectively, and then you compare, and it's like, oh, yeah, Fallout yeah. 3 is not a Fallout game. Especially when Fallout 3 poaches most of its major plot points from Fallout 1 and 2 and completely fucks them all up. Yeah, which is just wild. You can explain uh, and, the whole water crisis thing with it's been going on for a while and people just accept it as a way of life and not really a crisis anymore. That doesn't work that for doesn't your work. day to day survival needs, though. You don't yeah. just go, well, oh, well, there's no water to drink, so I guess I'll die. Yeah, because, again, water is something you need, like, to such an extremity that if you go a few days without it, you deteriorate so quickly and if you go just a little bit past that point of not having any water you fucking die like you go going into extreme dehydration like you will your body will start wearing down dramatically first motor function skills will go then mental capabilities will start to fall apart you'll start having seizures and your body will seize up and spasm and then eventually you just expire don't and and when also... I say eventually, I mean, like, within a couple days after the, the seizures and shit like that start, you're just fucking dead. Don't you also start experiencing uh, negative effects after, like, less than a day of not having anything to drink? Like, um, like, headaches and stuff? Yeah. You'll get some impairments like that. But it, once you get into the point when you're having motor function issues and you're actually having mental impairments, that's when you're you're kind of on the... The, you need a drink of water right fucking now or you will be dead. Yeah. In fact, there was that really fucked up story that happened semi-recently about the, uh, the guy who was, like, running around trying to find a drink of water and just, like, could not find any or, or reach anywhere where there was water. And you could see him on, like, uh, like TV footage or, like, you know, security camera footage running around trying to open doors and stuff. And he, they just couldn't get any water, and he just collapsed to the ground and died. And, like, it's weird because he looks perfectly healthy. Like, he's able to move around and everything. He's, like, running. But then because he couldn't find water in time, he just fell over and died. Yeah. And he 
he died of dehydration and it was because his coaches pushed him too hard and they wouldn't let him get a drink and and he just like it got so bad he just like took off and ran to try and find some and couldn't and then he just died damn yeah yeah literally me every time i play seven days to die <laughs> also, jesus christ pagan i just saw that thing you posted <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's just, it's just one of those wild things. Yeah, that's, hydration's important, everybody. Uh, but yeah, this is just one of the, it's just one of those things like, nothing works in Fallout 3. Nothing. The The entire world doesn't function. There, Nobody is making food. Like, the traders just randomly have food because they have food. It's like, oh, where are they getting their food from? Actually, I don't uh, even know don't if the know. traders actually carry food. It's just an assumption that, oh, there's traders outside this town, so surely they're delivering food. Well, we know they carry food because of, um... His name Bill? He was the one that said that he traded for a couple things of food. Oh, Billy Creel. Yeah. he Remember, he, he specifically says that he got food shipments in. Yeah, but that doesn't mean these caravans have food. Because some of them only deal in, like, weapons and armor. And if you buy from them, I I don't recall seeing them carrying food. Cause, yeah, cause none the of the traders... Specialized. Yeah, the, the traders are specialized. None of the traders from Canterbury Commons that are on that set path specialize in food in any shape or form. And yeah, so doctor, they're, they're, not, an armor. they're not getting supplied... And it, and then it would come into question of like, okay, well, wh even if they were, where wh where are they yeah. getting this food? Yeah, where are they getting the, the settlement... food? It's always been a thing. But I'm yeah, well, none of the settlements are growing any food whatsoever, or raising cattle or animals for slaughter. Nothing. The, you yeah. have hunters, but they're a random encounter, and nobody has like hunting stuff. You don't have like smoked meats or like butcher shops hanging up like hills that they bought off of hunters in the wild. The voices, like the voices will not stop actually just solve the problem for us. They get the food from the supermarket, silly. Yeah. That probably. unironically being part of the quest line. Like, again, that would make sense if it was a year after the bombs fell or something like that, you know? I don't know. Even a not... year after, like, maybe if it's in an area that isn't populated, maybe... Yeah, but, but... I mean, like I said, I'm trying the hard to steal man the shit out of this. <laughs> um, Moira Brown is one of the biggest fucking idiots in existence. A subtle butt shark in chat says Doc Hoff actually carries food alongside the extra chems. That, he he that does was... have some, that, but that that's what I'm trying to say. It's that they don't specialize in food. What what little food they have, it's literally just like they have a little off to the side. And it's like, that's not enough to feed an entire town. You can't be regularly supplying an entire town with food with, like, the extra rations that you carry on you to sell. Like, yeah. that is not going to sustain an entire town, especially when we know for a fact that none of these settlements are producing their own food to then give to everyone else and they don't leave the commonwealth so they're not going out anywhere to get more and even if they were that wouldn't necessarily explain where the food is coming from because even new vegas you know makes a point that uh while they do get you know extra meat from the brahmin barons outside like in california outside the mojave that's still not enough food to keep everyone supplied with food yeah. In the in Nevada, they still have to grow their own food, and it's why they are shown growing their own food. Yeah, why they have the sharecroppers, and why the sharecroppers having a, a little mini water crisis is so fucking important. Yeah, and the fact that there's literally a mission to you know get more meat because they are so limited on the resources they have, where they're just eating corn and beans. For protein and you know it, he literally gives you a mission to go find meat from one of the traders so that they have more to eat and you could go to the crimson caravan who will make a, a better deal with the, the uh 
Brahmin barons who will so that they can then ship meat to Camp McCarran so that the soldiers can actually get a better diet. And it's like, see, that's great. They're actually explaining the issue with the food, how they're maintaining having any food at all, and what they are doing to get more. And it all makes sense. You don't get anything like that in Fallout 3 at all. Nothing. <laughs> it's such a major problem that just isn't addressed anywhere in the game, but then everyone tries to pull these awful excuses out of their ass that just make no sense, don't explain anything. And by the way, we're not I, talking about oh. you, chat. We're, we're not. We're talking about some of the in-defensive videos. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm through. talking about the videos that we've covered where they just, like, make up insane shit like Matt and where he'll just say, like, oh, yeah, well, there's three mole rats outside of Megaton, so therefore that, that must be their food source, even though they're not farming them. And if, even if that was the case, that they're hunting mole rats, killing three mole rats behind Megaton would then you wouldn't have any meat left. You'd have to become a hunter-gatherer tribe where you're constantly nomadic and on the move following the food sources. So you yeah. couldn't be a stationary town like Megaton. You'd have to be more like a tribal society that is nomadic and constantly moving, which they are not. So yeah. it makes no sense. They just can't have enough food. Yeah. I, also, I also want to grab a comment here. Um... I mean, when you go to the Super Duper Mart, aren't all the shelves empty and all the food is in, um, is in the way back where the raiders are living? So that's their stash of, uh, rather than food from the market. Yes, yep. but the problem, the, the problem, there's multiple problems with that. First of all, it's the fact that she sent you to a grocery store at all in the, not the post-apocalypse, but 200 years after the apocalypse. There's yeah. There's no way in hell there's she... going to be any food there. In a realistic way. She didn't way. know the Raiders were going to be there. Yeah, she didn't yeah. know the Raiders were going to be there. But the other thing is, once you tell her about the Raiders, she still considers that to be a good thing, because it's, it's her solution is, oh, well, you could just kill the Raiders for their food. Yeah, like, most people it, it's aren't gonna so be able fucked. to do that in the, the way the world is presented. Yeah. But it's also just weird, because it's like, oh, well, we'll just raid the Raiders for food. And it's like, oh, yes, we'll raid raiders the people who do not farm the people who do not do anything to get their own food yet you have to go you have to raid them to get food and it's like okay well where, where are they getting their food <laughs> it makes yeah. no goddamn sense or how any animals are alive in the capital wasteland to begin with what are they eating yeah and i'm i hate this argument that oh well the dead grass that's clearly dead isn't actually dead and it's like no it's fucking dead dormant grass does not last for 200 years it just doesn't work that way after 200 years even if it was still somehow dormant it would lose all of its nutrients and be of no value to herbivores at all yep and also it so, doesn't rain uh, at all so yeah plants would be dead like that's one of the most common arguments against the plant argument is oh well if it's all dead for 200 years it would have turned to dust and blown away by now yeah, you could do anything in a fucking video game. I could put a car floating in the sky. It doesn't mean gravity is turned off. Yeah. Uh, like, if there's no rain at all, and there is no rain at all in Fallout 3, then those plants aren't getting water, which means they're going to fucking die. Because they need yep. water. Yeah. And even if they were still alive, like I said, they would be they would have like little to no nutrients at all. Well, 200 years they'd have none. But if we if we wanted to like steel man the argument and say, "Oh, well there was a tiny bit left in there." You would have to be a like hyper specialized herbivore to even get nutrients out of that. So like maybe the brahmin could have evolved into that, but it's like no, okay. No, I, I disagree that's... with the brahmin. Well, I well, think I, it, they have to be a small species because you would naturally evolve to require less nutrients to continue surviving. So they would have evolved smaller and smaller and smaller to need less. Yeah, well, the the argument I'm trying to make is that even if we were to say that, like, oh, well, the Brahmin are, you know, like hyper specialized to get nutrients out of these plants. It's like, OK, well, that explains one animal, one thing that. Honestly, it, there isn't that many of in the wasteland. Like, there's a bit, but not enough to sustain the like carnivore ecosystem that there is in the game. 
and yeah. it just do- it still just doesn't make any sense no matter how you try to rationalize it it just doesn't work and and that's oh, if you're willing willing to actually steal man these ideas that are just completely flawed like oh, okay. from the get go yeah sorry I, I really want to get to this comment cuz this is like gone the opposite direction now uh, way too OP for you, says. I mean, when you think about Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 3, both are kind of the same. Sure, Fallout New Vegas cared enough to show the farms, etc., but those amount of farms wouldn't be enough to feed the entire New Vegas. Again, as we said, New Vegas knows that that's not enough food. Yeah. Which is why they have the caravans coming in from California. They specifically mention the caravans coming in to bolster up while they're trying to get all these farms operational. It's actually yeah, and this part isn't... of one of the quests because if uh, if you the the cannibal quest on the strip, um, the white glove society yes. or whatever, um, yes. If uh, no, no, hang on. Way too op. You're you're not listening to what we're saying. So way too op says there's also uh, mute fr- uh, mute fruit and cave fungus in Fallout Three, as well as hunters getting meat. It's not like there's no food in Fallout Three. There shouldn't be. They're physically Fallout 3's world cannot sustain life there is nothing like what are the hunters hunting they're hunting animals what are the animals eating uh nothing the animals just exist because animals need to exist so the hunters can exist to get the food so that the world can exist the traders aren't trading with anybody else or any other settlements outside of the dc wasteland also mutt fruit comes from rivet city it's one of the things in the hydroponics lab that you can't ever see yeah so yeah, it's you only ever see it as like an already picked fruit. It never grows anywhere. It so it, there, uh, yeah, it, you can't use it as the an entire game that has any living plant life. Well, I should say plant life because plant life on its own in, implies it's alive. The only area in the game where there's uh, plant life is Oasis. All the other plants in the rest of the game are dead. Yeah, and mm-hmm. Oasis is considered a new, like, geologically speaking, like maybe last 20, 30 years. Like, Relatively it is new. not a. Yeah. And the only and fungus back... in Fallout 3 that is described as, like, a food source is in Little Lamplight, and they specifically mention that they have to feed it strange meat in order for it to grow, meaning they're, they have to kill people or find corpses to put on the fucking fungus for it to grow that's not sustainable <laughs> also even ignoring that i just i do not believe cave fungus is uh, sustainable for growing children no yeah. it, it really isn't again yeah, the um, problem would be the... the 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 problem would be the type of vitamins your vitamin deficiencies would be fucked back to the yeah. point i was trying to make earlier though the uh, Campbell quest on the strip. Um, one of the options in ending that quest ends with Ted Gunderson saying something like, "We're going to starve out the city. We're not. I'm going to make sure uh, no food comes into the city or something like that." Because mm-hmm. he's a big Brahmin baron. He owns a bunch of farms raising Brahmin, and he was here to make a deal to sell food to the strip, and he has the kind of power, money, and influence to be able to starve out Vegas if he wanted to. Yep, they make a very big point of it that if you piss off Het Gunderson, he can potentially just starve out all, well, most of Nevada because most of the food that is being like, because here's the thing, it, the NCR, who is the government for California, is basically doing what America and the other countries were doing during World War II, where... um. Uh, what's it called uh where you like ration food for the troops to send to, mm. like to send out to the front lines so they are like mass producing food to ship out to nevada and one of the big suppliers is het gunderson because he has chased off most of the other like brahmin barons he's he's either killed them or chased them off and taken over their farms so he basically has a monopoly on this stuff and yeah, if you piss him off, he will starve out the strip specifically because of what the White Glove Society did. 
And so it, the fact that they make that a point of, yes, they are growing their own food, so they have ways to sustain themselves in the short term, but they need the food coming in from California in mass, which it's taking an entire government to do this. And it's like, yeah, they, they're explaining that. And I like that they explain that. In fact, they do this with almost every settlement. The only settlement that doesn't seem to get this treatment is Novak. Novak is like the only place that doesn't seem to have like a real food supply other than like they do have a ranch with some Brahmins, but again, it's very few. And it's also been described that, you know, they've been getting killed recently. So it's like, where are they getting their food from then? But, um, at least uh, with Novak, you can, sh you know, that it's uh, on the trade route. Fucking and hell. Just because other varieties of plants don't appear in game doesn't mean they don't exist in the lore. The game wasn't going to have the room to show you every little dirt patch or I guess they ran out of characters. No, this is something you show in the game. Uh, yeah, like, if, you're, show. if you're building a world that people are going to be exploring and then all the plant life is dead, then that tells us something. Like, you, you can't say, oh, in the lore, when the world shows us something completely different. That's completely fucked. You can yeah. Plus, you could say it well, rains in the lore, so all the plants are alive. But then that raises the question of why isn't anyone collecting rain in water barrels or rain catchers or anything? Yeah, which like, thus eliminates the entire idea of the water crisis. Yeah. Why? It, th this is. It, it's just broken. It, like saying it could exist in the lore uh, doesn't fix anything because. What we're seeing in the game is the primary source. If there's any background lore that is explained elsewhere, that's a secondary source. The primary source comes before the secondary source for fucking obvious reasons. Yep. Yep. And even if we wanted to say the lore, okay, but they don't explain any of this stuff. Like, none of the, the food sources are explained in the game like there's nothing there to be like like they don't go into the same detail that new vegas does where they talk about california sending like using their war machine to produce all this food to send to the troops which then feeds the mojave along with the food that we see them growing on top of that you don't get yeah. anything like that in fall three there is no explanation you say the lore but what lore is there that explains where all this food's coming from? There just isn't any. Also, other than how can... other than like a slight mention of, oh well, we get some food supplies from the caravans, and it's like, okay, well, none of the caravans we've seen specialize in food. The only thing we've seen is some hunters that occasionally hunt food and sell some of the meat they get. But it's like that's not sustainable. And if we're talking about you know caravans that do specialize in food and we just don't see them. Where are they getting that food? We don't hear about any farms being made or being used to bring food into the Capital Wasteland. That's never mentioned, ever. Also, how come yeah. New Vegas is able to show plants growing and Fallout 3 can't? Oh, no. Yeah. Hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, uh, way too OP says, because they had to work out game mechanics like shooting, skills, etc. New Vegas was able to just copy a lot of Fallout 3 while adding stuff to make it better. You don't know how New Vegas was made at all, clearly. And yeah. so these all those mechanics... in general, because even Oblivion had different combat mechanics and magic uh, mechanics and stuff from Morrowind, and they still put yeah. food into the game that you can harvest. Yeah. Like, oh my god, dude. No, like now you're just you're just coping to protect a sacred cow at this point. Just stop. Yeah, you this need is to just getting stop. ridiculous. Because by that logic, if you want to say like, oh well, Fallout New Vegas just copied. Okay, well what's stopping Bethesda from basically just copying what they did with Oblivion and just making it with guns? Yeah. Which yeah, basically it's like, is that what Fallout 3 is anyway. Exactly, that's basically what Fallout 3 is, but it, then it's like, okay, so if we're going to say that New Vegas did that, then why is Bethesda so incompetent that they couldn't do that with, you know, with the game that they made prior to Fallout 3? It I just remember, doesn't make any sense. Bethesda had years and years to do yes. that. Yes. Bethesda had a year and some change. They didn't have the full 18 months. No, you, you have Obsidian. Gold Obsidian. 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 Yeah, Obsidian. Yeah, sorry, I meant Obsidian. Yeah, I bet. Bethesda yeah. had four or five years in Fallout 3. Obsidian had 18 months, if we're being 
if you're not being generous if you're not Obsidian. being generous yeah yeah um yeah, but again if you know how video games are made they there would have been a few months there where they couldn't work on the game itself they could do art assets and things like that that's about it but you can't work on the game itself because you, that's your gold master copy you have yeah. to get gold master certification if you're gonna have a physical release oh so people in chat are asking us to start ignoring this guy and get back to the video uh, i'm gonna read this one super chat then do so Wait, 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 wait. Before you do, there, there is one thing I wanted to bring up because I was, I was starting to talk about it and then I got interrupted. Oh, sorry. Uh, the, uh, the thing when, when I mentioned about the, uh, the fungus. Um, one thing I really like that New Vegas does is, like I said, it, almost every settlement in the game has an explanation for their food, and I love that they do this detail. Like I said, Novak might be an exception. No, Novak but... has it. Ha Novak has an explanation. It's on the trade route, and they specifically say they trade with the scrap from the Repcon facility for food. Yeah, that's fair. But um, uh, I really like how Nellis, the, where the boomers are, if you talk to the kid, you can get uh, the one that does like tells you the mural. Um, it's explained that when they move there, uh, they were able to cultivate legumes as a temporary food source before they were able to finally get like crops, like actual crops growing like corn and all that kind of stuff. So they were able to use um, their Geiger counters for one on their pit boys because they actually had pit boys. So they could tell where radiation pockets were and they were able to cultivate, you know, fungus like different types of fungus to temporarily feed themselves. And I like that. They also made it, kind of clear that it was temporary like it wasn't meant to be their primary and only food source it was just meant to be a uh a temporary food source until they got a real farm going like a real crop fields going but they obviously they still probably cultivate legumes alongside what they make but i like that they explained that that you know it's like that's good detail that's something that that you should do in your games especially when your game is about like survival and needing food and water to survive. It's kind of important. And the fact that fallout three doesn't do anything like that really bugs me. Boomer beans. <laughs> hey. Um, a super chat before we get back to the uh, video. One dollar from just a guy from Alabama. Thank you. You say that Fallout 3 does not have enough food to sustain any population, but there is at least two people who sell food. This is totally enough to feed 1,000 people spread around a dozen settlements. Yeah. Yeah. Five dollars from Alpha Craig. Thank you very much. They should have talked about radiation versus dehydration, and they chose the slower deaths. So it's still a crisis, and meds are expensive. Uh, very lazy Bethesda. Yeah, they, radiation death could have been interesting as a thing, but it's been 200 years, and as we know from the real world, uh, nuclear bomb explosion radiation doesn't last around that long. Like because it most of it, especially if it's air bursts, right? If it's ground burst, yeah, you'd have more of a problem. But because it's air burst, a lot of that radiation is going to get swept away and diluted. Because, again, the first thing, you have the ionizing radiation. Then you have the radioactive particulate matter. That's the thing that's going to get swept away by the winds, by rain, everything like that. So that's not going to be a problem for that long. So 200 years after the bombs fell, things are going to be relatively stable in terms of radiation. Anyways, uh, we were 45 seconds into a video. Yep. Yeah. Uh, let's to make up for a little. Let's say let's back off a little bit just so it doesn't do. Hopefully, it won't do a like a load thing for you. All right. Works sometimes it doesn't. Most of the time, you have a character that is very that is very strong, as in a little less of a story at the beginning of a game. Some games have exceptions to this, however. We didn't know too much about John Marston's earlier career in the first Red Dead Redemption. However, with the second installment of the series, we get to see the struggles he had before the first game. This still isn't really giving the sort of childhood that Fallout 3 does. 
You said this is sped up? Yep, this is sped up. Yep. Like I said, there's a reason I said 1.25 minimum. Yeah, Jesus. he. there's a lot of dead air between like words, words that he says in his sentences. Again, I appreciate that he's slow and enunciates and everything like that. There's, there's a point where even I had to slow it way down because he goes like rapid. Blah, 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 and I'm just like, what? What was that? All right. By the time you walk out of the vault, you already know a couple, couple things about the main character. And they were born. Number two, their father. Their father. Fi it keeps skipping for me. Is it shit? Hold on. I'm just going to wind it back just a little bit. Okay. <laughs> the voices will not stop. Dead air. Whoa, Kimosabe. <laughs> <laughs> Character. Number one, their mother died when they were born. Number two, their father thinks differently than the others, along with how the others think. I'll explain that in a second. Your father thinks differently than how the others think. Uh, uh, so here's here's the surprising thing: everybody thinks differently from everybody else, right? That's, well, that's part of the not... reason we talk and have conversations is try to get everybody up to the same page. Not just that, but just the way it's worded. Because you could have said, yeah. your father thinks differently from everyone else, rather than your father thinks differently than how everyone else thinks. He has a couple of those word problems throughout this. Yeah, that, that's one of the things you could work on to fix, where you just remove redundancies like that. Yeah. Um, he'll have a few times where he'll fuck up the word he uses as well, and he'll, he'll do the usual YouTube thing where it'll pop it up on screen like with the word he actually meant. It's like, no, let's just, just re-record that. Just take that out. Yeah, re-record those. But because this is a 20, 20 minute and 20 second video. Granted, I cut down a lot of the stuff that wasn't you doing anything, so it's an 18 and a half minute video instead. Like, you have plenty of time to just to, to re-record that. That is not a lot of uh, that's not a lot of stuff to re-record. They were bullied. Whether this bullying was effective or not, kind of depends on player choice. But overall, it was not very effective. Number four. Again, what a what a wild statement. Number three, they were bullied. Was it effective or not? It depends on player choice, but it wasn't really effective. It's like yeah, well, I mean, nice. it doesn't like what player choice is there to have with the bullying. Like, I there guess, isn't any. I, I guess you can justify. Oh, I'm going to kill everyone in the wasteland. I'm going to nuke Megaton because. It kid uh, stole my sweet roll at my tenth birthday. Oh, just wait until we get to some justifications and how they're. Totally yeah, I was about to snakes. say you're not uh, too far off from an argument he makes. <laughs> today, old friend. <laughs> yeah. Or they lost their vault along with with some of the people they had known their entire life. Not lost later on and save what's left of it, I guess. But Jesus, the skipping is bad. I swear, watch together is going downhill. Probably. Uh, do you want to try refreshing Watch Together? Maybe. Quick? Hold on. Cause my, mine's going smooth, so that's why. Yeah, mine's fine as well. I'm not having any issues. Maybe it's just my internet then. Uh, sorry, Watch Together. Cause maybe because I'm streaming, that's causing a problem with something. Maybe. Could be. Don't show up to Megaton tomorrow, kid. <laughs> 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 Depends. For all, it was not very effective. Number four, they lost their vault along with some of the people they had known their entire life. Not lost, of course. You can come back to the vault later on and save what's left of it, I guess. But a couple people died, and more importantly, the overseer might have died. Player choice. And the most important of all these things, number five, they lived in a controlled environment where the overseer was a dictator, and where their life was dictated by this person. Okay. <laughs> So this feels very wishy-washy in terms of it, it is like describing is. things. Wait, um, again, we're we're about on the cusp. So you already see a wild claim already. The overseer is a dictator, and he dictates things. It's like okay, well, literal definition of a dictator. Sure, that he is dictating things because they are in a you know this is a hyper scarcity environment. This isn't in an environment like 
where, oh, we can just go out and get new stuff. Like, they can't even, they aren't even supposed to leave the vault ever. Like, the vault door is never supposed to open. So, you, you kind of are stuck with whatever you've got there. And, um, yeah, maybe you can mine to try to find new stuff, hopefully. But that's about it. I'm, I'm trying not to be an asshole, but I have to say this. Uh, this this character in this game is a murderer, and uh, he he sometimes murders people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, uh, for whatever reason, he just wants to call him a cockstarch. The, the overseer is a cockstarch now, so, you know. What? What? He's a cockstarch. He's a rooster potato. The main reason this is important to me is because it because it gives a reason behind why the main you as the player have the oh option. Oh my to god, this fucking skipping! Oof! Like here, here's you know what? what's happening. Just maybe so you... I'm gonna take off the speed because maybe the speed is not helping with the skipping, right? Here's what's happening though. Um, he'll say something. And then the uh, the video will play that section of the video again, like, oh, the overseer is blah blah. Oh, the overseer is blah blah blah. So it's it's repeating stuff like that. And then it'll randomly just skip. Yeah, like I said, I'm gonna take off the 1.25 speed and and uh, see if just bo going back to normal if it'll skip as much. Hopefully um, not. Because again, it's, it's playing fine for me and Pagan, but if yours is the big one, that has to play fine for. Yeah, because I'm hosting a stream. Yep. It gives behind why the main character does what they do. You as the player have the option to become a slaver and a murderer of innocence, or become the slaver of the wasteland. But every choice you make... <laughs> yeah! The slaver of the wasteland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's, oh, that's, that's when funny. you definitely should have re-recorded. Oh my mm -hmm. god. Yep. Yeah, why you wouldn't re-record that, I don't know. <laughs> you can uh, become a slaver or murderer, or you be can become the slaver of the wasteland. <laughs> that, that's that's a big one, man. That's a big oh, one. Oh, that's so I, bad. <laughs> I like I like the chat, though. The chat, A lot of the people in the chat got the joke. Um Threadnought explains it. Kratosis, Seth was making a play on the word dictator. It was so hilarious, I now have crippling depression. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Yeah! There you go. <laughs> All right. Pre has now caught up to the game. Look, I don't... My mind doesn't work that way, okay? <laughs> <laughs> He's special, okay? <laughs> look, her, look her with your special moment. eyes. <laughs> think, think with your smooth brain. I swear, <laughs> I just heard the dialogue. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> wow! Oh my god, I could hear the disc tray spinning. Rude. I'm using an extreme example here, so do keep that in mind. Keep in mind, chat. He said he's use, going to use an extreme example. Keep in mind. And brace yourself for the example. But the North Korean dictatorship, or as Wikipedia says, unitary one-party socialist republic under a totalitarian... Okay, screw that. Has a couple things in common. What's in common with the system Vault okay. 101 has? Yes. Um, Re-record that if you fuck up like that. I I think that was intentionally supposed to be a joke of him not being able to say totalitarian. Yeah, but totalitarian is an easy word to say. It's not like you're saying some. Like, <laughs> what? No, the chat just like what? <laughs> Everybody's just like what? Yeah, that's his example. The dictatorship of North Korea is like Vault 101. I don't think it was supposed to be like he can't say total. Oh my god, totalitarian. It's the fact that 
it's just this super long name for something that doesn't need to be that long, and he's just like, fuck it, I don't, I'm not going to read this whole thing out. The tortellini Ian. Yeah, but that's the thing, is he did mispronounce totalitarian, that, that's why. Yeah, I know, but that... Yeah, whatever. I, no, I oh, again, I don't what you know... Mean. It's just... Kind of weird. Yeah, I, I think that's more supposed to just be a joke, and it, it just didn't land at all. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so remember, chat, his, he said, he already warned us this is going to be an extreme example, but the dictatorship of North Korea is the same as Vault 101. Socialist under a totalitarian. Okay, screw that. Has a couple things that Vault 101 has. They are both hermits to the rest of the world. They both. Okay. Okay. So. Can you already see why that's a bit fucked? That's a bit disingenuous? Like, one of them is, hey, we're surviving in a post-apocalyptic nuclear wasteland, hiding from the threats of the outside world. And the other is... Uh, scarce. Yeah, and the other is, uh, we're a country that pretends that we're super special and we hold all of our citizens underneath the iron boot heel that's on their throat at all times. Like, not, not because the rest of the world is a shithole, but because that's the way we want it to be. Didn't North Korea just jail, like, a two-year-old girl or something because her family committed fucking thought crime? So I think so. Yeah, what a wild, what a wild one. So there's your first one. Ready? So, second point? They both employ police that serve their leaders and will do, and will do what... Okay, so again, one is an actual police state where you can be arrested for thought crime. The other is we're in a hyper scarcity society, living inside of a metal tube, basically. I mean, I'm I'm also, being reductive, but still, it's worth noting too that uh, the police force in the vault, they fucking go around the overseer in trouble on the home front. That's one of the ways you can talk the situation down. Yep. Um, and, and even better is like what he just described that they have a police force that listens to the leadership describes every single fucking country on earth. Yeah. I was about to say like that, that's basically any country though. Like there's not that's, really, that's if you want any sort of society to work, you need to create laws and then have somebody to enforce said laws. I guess you could make the argument that he, he doesn't say this, but he should have, if he wanted to make this comparison, that they will wrongfully kill people in the name of the Overseer, even though they probably know it's not the right thing to do. Yeah. Maybe that they... The way to word it better is that uh, both have a police force that, although paying lip service to being law enforcement, are instead just the iron fist of their particular leader. Yeah. That would be a better way to say it. Mm-hmm. By the way, chat, this YouTube video is why Fallout 3 is an underrated masterpiece. Okay? <laughs> Like I said, remember, keep that in mind. Why Fallout 3 is an underrated masterpiece. You ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Part, okay, three. Brainwash their population. Do what I, now? I... Oh, oh, it did. It skipped I literally really only heard brainwash their population. Well, that's basically said, and both brainwash their population. So you missed the and both. That's it. Oh. Yeah, that I, I have to push back against that because they don't really I mean, they do trick them into thinking that the outside world is completely uninhabitable. But besides that, it's a pretty normal society with normal education and like you learn normal things like nobody in the vault seems to be like completely brainwashed to the point of like. You know, all hail the overseer, all hail, you know, the vault. Like, we, you know, it, there's dissenters, there's, there's people with their own ideas, there's people 
Trump doing their own things. Is a quest literally about the vault being split into two groups. Well, technically three. Uh, those siding with the overseer, those who are actively rebelling against them, and the people who just don't fucking care. Yeah. yeah. So I just I don't believe that. And also he's gonna make some arguments about like, oh well they you know they're just yeah. they're not educated and stuff like that. And it's like No, he's gonna have evidence. He's gonna have evidence, chat. He has the documents, people. <sighs> it's so annoying because it's the like, vault dwellers gay. But your character literally says things that he wouldn't be able to know about unless he was being properly educated. Like, how would he know about the like the proper founding of America and shit if you know, if he wasn't being educated properly. Yeah, don't worry, don't worry. Again, he's going to show evidence, and the one thing he's going to show, the single point in the GOAT, well, he's going to talk about it, he's not actually going to show it, because if you actually showed it, you'd realize that it is played as a joke. And if if the over, if this was a dictatorship, you would not be joking about the, you know, and who is the one that protects us from everything, and blah, 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 blah. And, and the only answer to the multiple choice question is the overseer. Yeah, and, you know, yeah, you're right. If they had show, if he'd actually shown that, you would know it was a joke because even the way the dude reads it, it's like yeah, he yeah, actively, yeah, yeah, yeah. He actively goes out of his way. He's like, okay, oh, big sigh, over exaggerated thing. And who is the one who shelters us from the harm of the waste? Yeah, yeah so exactly. he is going to bring up that as his point for why, and that's literally his only evidence, by the way. But, yeah, sorry for a mild spoiler, but again, he has the documents, people. He's going to give us the evidence. Five dollars from Alpha Craig. The, sorry, go ahead. Five dollars from Alpha Craig. Thank you. H-Men and Biden have some striking similarities being men before, uh, born, ni uh, bleh. Being men born before 1970. And furthermore, both like dogs and drugs, so therefore Biden equals the H-Men. What's H-Men? I don't know. I'm not is. sure. I'm not sure on the H-Man one. Hmm. Is meant oh to God. see who... I got the swirly thing there while it was loading. Sorry, bro. <laughs> H-Man is the superhero of Nazi Germany. <laughs> oh, he, oh, he's talking about... <laughs> you just could have said the Austrian painter or something like that. <laughs> well, character count for the super chat. Fair, but um, maybe... Uh, hmm, that's a good way. Uh, it doesn't matter. Let, let's just move on. Yeah, yeah. And we'll do what they say. And and they both brainwash their population. And you take a test called the GOAT. This test is meant to see who you will become in the future... However, this test has one question that I want to focus on, and I quote, Who is indisputably the most important person in Vault 101? He who shelters us from the harshness of the atomic wasteland and to whom we owe everything we have, including our lives. And the answers are all on a multiple choice question. The Overseer. I know this. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so again, you should have actually played the clip. Because, again, the clip would have disproven the point you had just made. It's like, yeah, that was on the test. Sure. But the way that the guy speaks of it, he's not speaking as in, like, hush tones or, like, super patriotic and this is the way, like, it must be. He's actively, like, making fun of the last fucking question. Again, yeah. it's the final question. Basically, you sign it and then you turn it in and it's done. It comes off more as, like, the overseer is an egotistical airhead and yes. the rest of the vault just kind of, you know, endures it. They're just like, Oh my God, he's such a fucking idiot, but whatever he is the leader, I guess. Yeah. Like that's literally how it comes off, especially when, you know, you want to say he's like a dictator it, similar to North Korea or South. Yeah. No, no, no North Korea. No, yeah, yeah. Yeah. North Korea. And, um, but it's like, there's plenty of times where he's mentioned that he lets James get away with stuff because, you know, it's just like he, he's not a dictator in that sense. Like, he's not going to be like, oh, you you have wronged me in some way. Time to die, you know, kind of thing. Like, 
like what North Korea would do. It's literally like, God, I really wish you would stop doing that. I mean, ugh, fine, do it, I guess, but I really wish you would stop sort of thing. It, it's it's not a true dictatorship. Yeah. Um, two pounds from Threadknot. Thank you. See that ruined building? You can go there. Oh, <laughs> you sold you me can go there, but you Fallout Three. <laughs> yeah, you could go there, but you can't go inside. <laughs> the voice will not stop. The overseer oversees things. <gasps> oh no! Shocking. Yeah, how terrible. I always got the impression that it was more of a vault tech thing rather than that specific overseer. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, that could be. Vault-Tec could have put that in place as part of the test. This is supposed to be a vault that never opens. That's the experiment for Vault 101. It is supposed to be a vault that never, ever opens its doors once it's sealed. And this overseer in particular violated that because he didn't want to let James and his baby die. Well, no, they needed a doctor. That, that was the main thing. Hey, right, fair. Yeah. They also sent out a search party at one point, like a yeah, was that, a scouting party. I believe that was under the previous overseer, though, which is the current overseer's mother. Yeah, yeah, fair. I know this was probably a joke of a sort. The whole yes, vault is was. supposed to be a sort it of was. joke. No, no, li yeah, listen to what he just oh what he's talking about. Oh my god. Yeah, the it, gets, it gets was so supposed much to be a sort of a joke, then that undermines everything it's trying to say. Yes. Yeah. And the answers are all on a multiple. The overseer. I know this was probably a joke of a sort. The whole vault is supposed to be a sort of joke, like talking about government, I guess. Or maybe I'm just reading it entirely wrong. But I'd say okay, you're yeah, reading it entirely wrong. So here's the thing, if the entire, well, the entire vault is a joke, but the entire vault is the introductory segment to the game, which is supposed to be a small slice of the overall game. It's giving you an impression of what the rest of the game is going to be like. So if that yeah. entire section is a joke, that means the entire fucking game is a joke. Yeah. Again, yep. your, your opening is supposed to set the tone and pacing of your world. Like, that's Which, supposed to give you what what you're going to experience from that on. Now, you can counter that. Like, you can set up a tone and a pacing that seems more normal than have it all dashed away. That's kind of what the, the whole trope of the idyllic village life that's ten seconds away from being raided by the orcs or whatever. Well, that's how uh, the original Last of Us starts. Yeah. So you can do that as a counter, but the counter in and of itself is what sets the tone and the pacing from that point on. There is no counter to this. It's just, if you assume that the entirety of Fallout 101 is a joke, because there is no counter to it, then the entire game must be a joke. I respect Bethesda more if they just told us to go fuck ourselves, and their Fallout games are shitposts. I would, yeah, I would respect that more than this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I will be uh, right back. Feel free to continue. Yeah. All right. When you think about the main character, who is a child, who has lived in that environment for their entire lives, and what people say outside of the vault, jokingly, uh, is pretty messed up. They've been living in an environment of fear, and yeah, it's 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 not very good. It's an environment Not of fear, really that's why, the, why people... the tunnel snakes can just exist with impunity. Exactly, that's what I was going to say. It's like, no, there isn't this, like, air of fear. It's There's this air of maybe a bit of strictness, but not, like, fear. Because, yeah, like you said, the tunnel snakes could just do whatever the fuck they want with, like, no punishment, really. This... At most, they might get a scolding every once in a while. As long as they do their vault assigned job, then they're free to do fucking whatever it seems. Yeah, it's like even like you. So the game establishes that on your tenth, sorry, the day after your tenth birthday, is when you start getting uh, jobs in the vault. Like you're gonna help clean up or do something. You're gonna help keep this place running. 
Um, so by the goat, the time of the goat exam, the tunnel snakes are an established uh, gang, Butch and his friends. So I, I would assume they do their chores still if they can just hang out and fuck around in their leather jackets. And by the time of escape, Butch still has the jacket. He gives it to you. Like, he's wearing it, and he gives it to you if you uh, save his mother. Yep. Also, this idea that, like, if the overseer was this, like, iron-fisted tyrant, I don't think he would allow Butch to make fun of him so mm -hmm. openly. Like, you know, like what he does with Amada and stuff, where he's like, oh, the overseer's... You know, little baby and shit like that, and yeah, like too saying big screw shot. and screw the overseer and that kind of stuff. It's like I don't think he would just allow them to do that. Yeah, else tube in chat says pretty much the same thing. People literally bully the overseer's daughter, and from what is shown, nothing happens to them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. <sighs> It's it's basically just like a schoolyard. It's really not that much different from like going to school. So this idea that it's like an iron fisted tyrannical dictatorship just well, doesn't make you, any sense. Well, you see, Pagan, if you're growing up as a child and you have a few chores to do and have relative freedom aside from that, that's a dictatorship. Apparently. But even more, you can just counter this whole idea that it's a dictatorship to begin with. The tunnel snakes exist. Yeah, we were talking well, yeah, about we just, that. Yeah, we just talked about oh, that. Sorry about that. I was I was going chat. But that yeah. was the thing I was thinking of while I was uh while I was up uh, going to the bathroom and grabbing a drink. Yeah, well, we were just talking about the fact the that whole, um oh it's a dictatorship. Yeah, yeah. Like, you, you wouldn't you wouldn't let a subversive counterculture rise in a dictatorship. Oh yeah, yeah. especially that, one that's directly flows. bullies the overseer's daughter. Yeah. <laughs> like the tunnel snakes mere existence disproves that this is a dictatorship yep also the fact that even after you know trouble on the home front and they've written like you know fuck the overseer and they're actively going against him and everything and the overseer the overseer still doesn't have them executed yeah in fact he was yeah. holding back because he wanted a peaceful resolution i believe yeah, he actually doesn't want people to die. The only time the one guy shoots is because he gets scared. And he's like, oh, don't come any closer. And he's like, he's an old man. He's not a security guard. So he fires off a shot to scare them away. And that's it. Yeah, and again, his uh, whole security force planning to raid the rebels is what makes... Um the overseer reconsider his position and I can't remember if he steps down, but he brings an end to the situation because holy shit, I do not want this happening. That's bad. That's very, very bad. Yeah. Yeah. The, the best argument you have for the dictatorship thing is the security guards trying to kill you in the start, like during escape, which is just fucking retarded. They shouldn't be killing you anyways. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Like, even with Jonas, they argue, like, the, the game says that, oh, the security guard went too far. I can give the game the benefit of the doubt on that one. It's all the other guards, except the one who's friendly to you, trying to kill you. Which is just dumb. Yeah, yeah it's just weird. Especially when when you confront the Overseer, he can he will actively tell you, like, surrender and, you know, go peacefully and, you know, like, you won't be harmed or whatever. And then after you, after that, even if you just stand there, the fucking guards will beat you to death. Yeah. And it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> he steps down and makes a motto, the new overseer. Yeah. I thought that's what happened, but I couldn't remember for sure. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, this is pretty fun. Surrender yeah, that's great. and die. <laughs> um, by, by the way, I have heard the full thing in context, and it doesn't actually save him that much as much as he said it does. But it, it also is more muddy if he's which thing he's talking about. <laughs> like, it, it's like his tra his brain got caught on the buzzword. Oh, my concern. 
and he was answering because Tucker says you're more concerned about this than that, and it feels like he maybe was trying to answer that. But again, it's just a bad soundbite in general. It's really bad. I, yeah, I just saw that meme you posted in the uh, Discord. Yeah. Yeah. Tucker, yeah, Tucker it, went rhino hunting for sure. Oh yeah, like, like I was saying before, I was like, yeah, he pretty much just eliminated Pence's chances of winning with that one clip. Yeah, and again, like I said, it, the way he answered it, it could almost be that he meant the Ukrainian tanks thing isn't his concern, maybe? Um, but it, the fact that there's ambiguity at all is the problem. Yeah, that, especially the way he words it. American cities are none of my concern. It's like, well, he, he doesn't say American cities. He says, that's none of my concern. Again, it almost felt like he was formulating the answer for Tucker, what Tucker said, right before he said, shouldn't American cities be your concern? Like, because the first thing Tucker says is, um, so... So you're more concerned about tanks in, going into Ukraine than American cities that are falling apart. Should American cities be your concern? That's not that's not my concern. And he's like, the, the problem Oops. is he didn't correct himself. Yes, the fact that there's ambiguity on what concern he was talking about is is a problem in and of itself. The reason why the people of North Korea don't rebel rebel is because of that fear, the godlike power that they have and most importantly the fact that they have never lived a different life these are all okay so how I'm do you sorry, explain but... the people in the vault rebelling yeah you said they have the fear but they don't but they do though he said so yeah but we know by evidence that they don't they don't have that fear yeah but it's a yeah. dictatorship did you look at the goat exam yeah <laughs> I, again, this is one of those things, like, the, this is why, if you show your evidence next to it, this is why, even when I disagree with Patrician on some of his points, the thing is that he showed his work, so I could see where the, the wires got crossed, or where we've gone off the tracks, because he actually lays out the evidence for him, and then you'd be like, yeah, but that evidence doesn't say what you think it means, sort of thing. You'd be like, here's where you went wrong, because this actually means this instead. This guy's just asserting, making the assertion that this happened. But it, it doesn't. We know that they aren't afraid. Again, the tunnel snakes exist. We know that they aren't living in fear of the godlike power of the overseer. They rebel. Like, yeah. and, and it isn't because that they've never experienced another life. Well, the vault dwellers in this vault have never experienced another life. They've been vault dwellers their entire existence. This vault has been sealed for 200 years. So all of the people we see, even the old people, they've lived their entire life inside this vault. They've never known any other life. Dictatorship is when there's an authority in place. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. I would love to use that as an excuse, because holy shit, I would love to go up to uh, to a mayor and be like, you're a dictator, because you're authority. <laughs> <Smack>. <laughs> that wouldn't work out well for me, but it'd be fun. These are all traits that could be shown in the characters inside of Vault 101. From the security forces patrolling the hallways and cracking down on dissidents to the small test. Okay, but they don't they crack don't down on dissidents. Though. They don't. They literally do not crack down on dissidents. Yeah. We know that for a fact. The, 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 the tunnel, tunnel snakes are allowed to act with impunity. Yeah. And again, they're patrolling the halls because, uh, again, you didn't show it, but... The rad roaches can in, can tunnel into the base, and rad roaches are fucking nasty. They could kill people. Yeah, they do you kill kind people. Of, yeah, you kind of want people to be on patrol and be on lookouts. All right, do we get a rad roach infestation here? No, okay, we continue moving. Again, even if you're not patrolling for like dissidents or anything, maybe you're just patrolling again for the rad roach problem, or because hey, somebody's been stealing food or you know extra food, and we're in a we're in a hyper scarcity society here, so you well, gotta not, figure out who the fuck's doing that. Not just that, it's to generally keep the peace too. If there's people who have a problem with one another, they could eventually get into a fight, which is obviously gonna cause problems. You don't want your people fighting. So you'd have security roam the halls just to make sure 
you know, nothing's... And it's also not just a matter of security and stuff, too, but it's a medical... Er, medical? It's a matter of medical emergencies and stuff, too. What if someone's yeah. having a heart attack? What if someone's choking? What if uh, any number of other things? What if someone slipped and fell and got a concussion? Yep. And again, even just the whole thing of, like, feeling like, hey... Me and this guy are having an argument, and it's going to come to blows. So they go to a security officer instead and say, hey, you're a neutral third party. This is our problem. This is our beef we're having. So you can have them even show up as just a person to be like, hey, I'm I'm uninvolved with either party here. What are your, what are your problems? You know, talk to me. That's what I'm here for. How dare you get a concussion beats to death. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, now the, the only time is when it totally breaks character and they try to kill the player character, which makes no sense. It is so dumb. Yeah, why why because your father opened the vault and ran away and left you behind? Again, like he always does. Your father runs away from all of his fucking problems apparently. <laughs> um but Yeah, no, he just he just abandons you. Like he did Project Purity and the Wasteland before you. Uh, but now the security was to kill you. Why? You're still in the vault. You haven't done anything wrong. All they have to do is, is shut the vault and just tell them, yeah, your dad went crazy, opened the vault door and ran out into the wastelands. Well, that's the whole thing is they want you for questioning, apparently. The overseer wants to question you. About what happened. There's literally no reason to kill you, the player. But yeah. they have they have to contrive that the security, um, the vault security are trying to kill you because they need to force you out of the vault. Which is weird because you could have just had a situation of do you resist the the peaceful efforts of security to come get you in? Hey, we need to talk with you because your dad did some stuff and we need to have a conversation with you now. And you could say no, or piss off, or something like that. And now you have to escape the vault, or you go with them, and then they say, "Hey, your dad left. We don't think you're being honest with us, so we're just going to exile you from the vault." You know, we're going to give the peaceful option and be like, "Hey, we're not going to rough you up or anything like that. We'll give you a little bit of food and some supplies. And just get out. You're not you're not welcome back here anymore." Yeah, or hell, you know, at least if they just wanted to do it the way that they did it have have an established bit where like some of the security detail was against bringing you two in and they have been very against you from the beginning and th this is their opportunity to finally get rid of you yeah well and you could have used the birthday party as a thing like if you ran to to get the security guard or more accurately run away as security guard gets up scripted to go stop the, the bullying. Mm -hmm. um, but have it to where you get bullied and the security guard is laughing at you and talking about how much he didn't like either of you and you got what you deserved. Yeah. You know, so just stuff like that to kind of sow that animosity. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, when the, when the first security guard shows up and he's like, hey, you there, instead of doing like the fucking oblivion guard thing, like halt there, you know, that, that, that shit, it could have been like, Oh, I've been waiting to do this for a long time. And then the rad roaches show up. Yeah. yeah. Characters that Fallout three want to stop the player primarily because when he is not in game, they don't exist. And the pain stops. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It's, it's reboot all over again. Oh no. <laughs> that show was so, that show was so stupid, but it was that charming level of stupid. I, I just loved watching it. It was so dumb. If the if the player ever wins a video game, it wipes out the entire city. So we gotta go into the video games and be the NPCs trying to stop the player from winning. What a what a fucking dumb concept, but what a wild ride that show was. the small test that makes you know who is the most important person in the vault. The character has no way they could have learned anything else other than what he was told by this vault. Well, and wrong. From what, and from what we've seen, father it's... Father teaching you things? Yeah. yeah like Yeah, there's that, and also the fact you. that 
you know, from what we can tell through dialogue throughout the game, you seem to have been raised fairly normally. Yeah. Like, there's nothing where you're, like, super confused about what's going on. In fact, you seem to know more about the country's history and how things work than most of the people in the wasteland. So, no, I wouldn't say you were brainwashed in any capacity. Like, there's some joke answers you can give to Moira that's just fucking stupid that never come come up again in the rest of the game where, like, you could say some dumb shit like, oh, yeah, the, the ceiling in the main room is so high I can't even see the ceiling. <laughs> like, that dumb shit, which never comes back up again. Like, you never say anything that retarded throughout yeah. the rest of the game. Um, also, I'm not... I'm not talking i'm not insulting reboot i'm telling straight facts reboot had a lot of tism in it but it was an enjoyable tism because it was done with such sincerity and and just goofiness right right yeah wrong i just i just want to point out the fact that he goes re, and then the first thing the guy says is right. I actually didn't <laughs> even hear that. I heard a couple <laughs> seconds of music. <laughs> What's reboot? Reboot is a 3D animated cartoon from the 90s that focused on characters that lived within the computer, yep. and like it, the computer was a city. And every so often, a giant cube would come down, which would be the game, and they'd all be put into the game. And there's, like, weird... Like, the villains were viruses, I think, but they were called, like, Megabyte or whatever. Megabyte and Hexadecimal and stuff like that. Yeah. It's, all computer um, terms. It was a lot of tism by people who didn't know anything about computers. Yeah. Again, the entire concept was that the... I forget what they were called, the Guardians themselves were called, but they had to stop the player, the person who owned the computer, they had to stop them every time they booted up a video game, no matter what the video game was, what genre it was in, because if the player won, it would wipe out the entire city for some reason. So they, they would have to play the NPCs trying to stop the player. And I just remember one of the best episodes was the the Western one, where the player character is, like, playing a power fantasy game, and he's just, like, going th through towns as a gunslinger, just wiping out everybody. And they just have this, like, moment where they have to have a, a awkward standoff. It's just so fucking... That show is just so wild. Because they the could've... player would delete the game because they won, it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the most important person in the vault? The character has no way they could have learned anything else other than what he was told by this vault. Right? Wrong. There is one main figure, main figure who is different than the vault. Your father, James has his own thoughts about how things should work for a while. But wait. But, keep in mind, James has a bad habit of abandoning things. So, you might not want to take his advice uh, as gospel, either. Because the game has an unfortunate habit of James running away and abandoning whatever he's currently doing, just on a whim. Not a, not really a good, like, inspiring role model figure. It still bugs the fuck out of me that the game just completely passes over the fact that James traveled through the DC ruins that are infested by super mutants and feral ghouls, talked to Three Dog, left there, went to Project Purity which is also completely infested by super mutants, left there and traveled all the way to fucking vault whatever it is for the VR sim thing. And there's like... 
no evidence of this aside from the holotapes he leaves at Project Purity. And, like, how does he survive all that? Uh, well, yeah. Cree, he has a thirty-two revolver. Duh. <laughs> That'll yes. take down a death claw. Yeah. Like the one that literally patrols right outside the fucking gas station to the vault that he's in. Mm. <laughs> or the, you know, super mutant behemoths that are roaming around. That'll, you know, that'll See, be like a bee sting. Let, let's, yeah, it's the let's, God Slayer. Let's just ignore the fucking death claw and the behemoths. Just dealing with one super mutant with a 32 is going to be insane. Never mind the infested DC ruins, the infested Project Purity, and then all the wildlife and raiders that you're going to encounter between DC and fucking the dumb gas station. Oh shit, that reminds me of a joke. Uh, first, Anx Anxel? I don't know how to say your last name, uh, said Deathclaw, level one. That reminds me of a joke from an old comic book where the the characters get brought into a video game and they're like, oh, this is stupid. And the main leader of the group is like, stand back. I'm a, I'm a fighter with a ton of experience. And he goes and attacks and he's like wearing himself out on the first enemy and it finally dies. He's like, ooh, that was a really tough one. And then his XP bar pops up over his head and he looks up and it says, a fighter with a ton of experience, level one. <laughs> and it's just like, okay, that is fun. And the character, right when he reads that, looks really pissed off and annoyed afterwards. Sorry. Do we ever actually see the dead do anything combat related aside from Kamikaze the Autumn? If you travel with him back to Rivet City, he'll engage in combat with the wildlife or whatever yeah. enemies you encounter, but at that point he's a companion and he he's immortal anyway, so he can't die. The yeah. the main Yeah, he just The main question is how he survives the things that a lone unarmored person with a thirty two shouldn't be able to survive or sneak past. <laughs> it's so funny seeing him like plink at stuff. It's hilarious with that little thirty two. He's just ping, 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 ping. <laughs> it's so funny. Could have only gotten funnier if it was a twenty two. Yeah, it would. <laughs> if it was a twenty two, that'd have been great. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm shooting them. With what? Yeah, apparently he's so non-combat oriented that he sends you to go in to take care of the yep. super mutants at the Jefferson Memorial, and he won't even offer to help you. Like you're, he's your he's your dad, and he won't even offer to go in and help you clear out the place. He's just like, hey, you, you seem to be good with guns, uh, son. Why don't you go in there and kill all the super mutants for us? Like, wow, thanks. Okay, sure. Well, again... Won't even um, offer to help. It, it, it just highlights even more of the fact that James is kind of a shyster. All, all throughout. Like, unintentionally. They don't want him to be a shyster. They want him to be, you know, the noble savior who's trying to do the good for the wasteland. But he also... Like, ignore the fact he abandoned the wasteland and all these people to the water crisis uh, for at least 20 years... And then he just abandons you in the vault, like, out of nowhere. And then when you are most needed to clear the Jefferson Memorial, he, he doesn't want to help you at all and sends you in to possibly die a horrible death. Yeah, yeah. because that's, that's like, the thing. Most fathers would either find... Like, let, let's just take the situation as it is. We need to get into Project Purity. There's a bunch of monsters in there that realistically we won't be able to take on he would either try and hire a mercenary or several mercenaries to go in and help clear it out or he would go in with his son or even alone like a, a decent parent wouldn't send their 19 year old kid into a monster infested ruin for like hey you know you have a gun just just go kill the fucking superhuman creatures in there yeah. <laughs> He's your dad. He can create more of you. 
Oh god, the, the, the whole phrase. I brought you into this world and I can take you out of Yeah. <laughs> Fallout 3, Dad, is what Last of Us 2 fans think Joel is. That's kind of a that's kind of a funny comparison because Fallout 3 fans think uh Liam Neeson in that game is what Last of Us 1 Joel is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is. It is weird. How would Father do this if he was locked away inside of the vault for all of his life, just like you? He would end up brainwashed as well in a system like that. Except, except people in the vault aren't brainwashed. Yeah, yeah, we've already been over this. You're not none of the people in the fucking vault are brainwashed. It just doesn't work. Also, oh my god, I forgot about the Omni Man quote. That's great. What's another eighteen years? I can always make another. <laughs> yes. Oh god. <laughs> oh my god, that's perfect. <laughs> well, that, well, and then the the comic gets fucking weird from uh, yeah, from it that does. Point. I haven't read uh, a bunch more of it, but I read up to the point of uh, the new planet. I I, I don't want to get super spoilery, but uh, uh, Omni Man finds a new wife. Let's just say that. If I can remake Fallout Three, I, I trust me. I like uh, Liam Neeson. I think I'd replace uh, the father character with. Uh, the guy who voices Omni Man, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> honestly, I would too. I, I yeah, just, Liam Neeson is great, but holy he is shit, great. I that. just don't think he works for that role. You know? <laughs> no, chat, don't mention it. No, I was trying to leave it spoilery. It's just that... <laughs> the bugussy, <laughs> the insectussy, <laughs> the bugussy. <laughs> J.K. Simmons, yes, him. I forgot his name. I'm terrible with names, okay? Yeah. Except he was not born in the vault. He was a member of Project Purity, and he was not born in Vault 101 at all. You were not born in Vault 101 either, rather being born in Jefferson Memorial, in case you haven't played the game. Your father was the key to making you see things the way he saw things. Again, you don't know that. You can't just assume that, especially because you've already got the assumption that everybody in the vault is brainwashed wrong. You can't assume that, therefore, all of your morality comes from your father. Because, again, the things we do know about your father is he abandons things unfinished, he runs away, and he makes you fight on his behalf. Like, that's not... That doesn't paint a good picture. And they didn't mean to do that, but that's what they did through all of his actions he takes throughout the thing. And not just abandons things halfway, he abandons the entire capital wasteland to its fate. Like, that's pretty hard to get over that fact. In fact, I th this idea that he taught you all the stuff that you know in the vault, and it's like, from the way that the game portrays it, it seems like you don't actually spend that much time with your dad in the vault at all. It seems more like he's kind of distant and you rarely talk. Like you even bring up like, you know, your discussion about your mom and it feels like it's something he's been avoiding. And like, like you just, like you just don't talk to him and it feels more like you spend more time with Amada and everyone else in the vault than you do with your own father. Yeah, it's weird. So I I don't believe I don't know. Th this scenario he's coming up with just doesn't make sense to me because it just doesn't seem to be what the game portrays in any sense. Also, the whole idea that you get your morals and beliefs from your father is completely fucked the moment you step out of the vault and uh, nuke Megaton or sell yeah, yeah, exactly. slavery. Oh, or... oh, just wait. He's gonna he's gonna talk about how that's all totally consistent. Just wait. But it's yeah. not though. He just explained. No, it. no, no. It's totally consistent, Cree. But it's the not video maker though. knows he just better. Said you get your morals and beliefs from your father. No, it is totally consistent. Don't worry. He's not gonna have a moment of like, what the fuck? That in fact, 
when we get to that part, let it play a bit because I actually want him to say <laughs> both examples specifically yes. because they they contradict one another and it can't possibly be yeah. true. <laughs> if if what he asserts here is true, these can't be true. to make a character player could make no matter how insane or how insane or logical the player is the main character makes sense killed a bunch of slaves you've never seen slaves and you believe the people who tell you slaves are not human because you've been lied to your whole life saved town from raiders your father taught you that it's right to save people and be the best person you can be by a <laughs> that completely contradicts each other. You, they can't both be true, you fucking idiot. Yeah, you're, how you to you're totally consistent. Totally what consistent. the fuck? Like, yeah, yeah, that makes you, no sense. You know sense. what a person looks like, so someone telling you a slave isn't human wouldn't change that, first of all. But second of all, does anyone even... Like, does anyone in the game even say slaves aren't human? No. No, no one says that, and... Uh, from everything we've seen, you're actually a very well-educated person. In fact, yeah. more educated than the average wastelander. So you would know that that's bullshit. But also, I'm pretty sure if your father was the type of person who would raise you to save people and protect people, he wouldn't also advocate that slaves are lesser beings that deserve to be fucking put down and subjugated. Yeah. And keep in mind, the fact is that he's head, he's headcanning the entire idea that your father is teaching you anything at all. Yeah. Because what the game shows us about James is that he's a coward, and he'll run away from everything. And that he doesn't actually have morals and principles. He'll, he'll just randomly get an urge to do something, and then he'll do it. Slaves. Oh, no, I guess. Or as I like to call them. Lizards. No, no. Stop it. <laughs> I got the perfect image to describe this uh <clears throat> this statement. Oh no. There you go. <laughs> 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 oh shit. I look, I don't want to be mean. This is a guy with a small <laughs> channel. This is probably like one of his first videos or something. There's time to improve, but to be fair, I, like I said, I did preview this whole thing, and it is one of the, I, I feel like one of the less malicious ones we've covered, but man, does it get hard to say that towards the, the end. end of this, because <laughs> yes. the end kind of ruins all the goodwill I had toward this guy. Not completely, but enough where it's like, it annoys me so much that I get angry. Yeah. Assume. Because that sort of person. Okay, sorry, I, I should have let him say that for a little bit. He said, I assume because he seems like that sort of person. It's like, no, he doesn't. Again, if you actually read his actions and things he does, he actually seems like a really terrible person. He, he abandoned everybody to a water crisis to run away and hide in a vault so he could save himself. And his child. abandoned you in and said vault that with no guarantee that you're going to be safe after what he just did. There's a very yeah. good chance that you could be killed for that. And then yeah, like, and, and even, even assuming you don't get killed, there's a very high likelihood they're going to kick you out into the wasteland and you're not there for him. Like, like why wouldn't you just take him with you at that point? Yeah. Uh, and also the fact that he sends you into the Jefferson Memorial to fight super mutants by yourself. And he doesn't even and offer to help. I, I think this needs a bit of emphasis. The Brotherhood of Steel and their power armor have trouble fighting the super mutants. It's yeah, the it's like they're... That they, um, they, they... The Brotherhood held more territory in the wasteland until the super mutants started getting more aggressive. Yeah. Yeah. It, the the super mutants before the enclave comes along was like their biggest adversary that even they struggle with with many like troops in power armor and large heavy guns and you're just a kid who's just expected to go into this 
fucking facility alone that's full of fucking super mutants that even the Brotherhood have trouble dealing with, and he doesn't even offer to help. Oh, it drives me yeah. nuts when when that when that happened the first time, and he didn't follow me in. I just turned around and thought, like, is his AI bugged? Like, surely he's not sending me in here by myself. He would have. He's supposed to follow me in here, right? No, he doesn't. He's not. He literally says, like, you go do it. And then I, once I realized that, I was just like, wow, you're a fucking asshole. Holy shit. I hate you. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just so fucking weird. Again, from from the evidence we're shown in the game, James is not a person you should emulate. Except for the suicide. <laughs> oh, oh, just wait. Just wait. <laughs> that might be mentioned here. Oh, no. All right. And, and I'm, I'm going to bring up another thing when we get to the end of this section. Because this is a section, so. I'm surprised Very this so video is long enough to have sections. <laughs> it has only two, but here we go. at the beginning of the game is already amazing because they are able to be molded into the player's liking and still make sense but of course strong disagree so the first half of that cut like i heard a bit of music and i think part of what he yeah. said got cut off i don't think so no it was, it was just music for a long while there i want to play it again just in case all right fair enough Might, because he seems like that sort of person The main character at the beginning of the game is already amazing because they are able to be molded into the player's liking and still make sense. But if yeah, that's yeah, no, a big no. I, that that's a big no. <laughs> no, Jesus Christ. Especially if you want to play as a bad character because you grew up in a vault that's almost saccharine levels of good where like the worst stuff that happens is light bullying and you know, and that's treated like the worst thing ever. And when shit actually goes down when your father escapes, it's actually treated as like very shocking. And it's like, yeah, no, that wouldn't change your character overnight to become a bad person because he saw some of the fucking security guards trying to kill you. I, I think this needs pointing out in the Fallout universe of all the fucking cards you can draw from the deck. Living in Vault 101 is a pretty good draw. Yeah. yeah, it's like one of the best draws in life. In life, you could possibly get. Yeah. So this idea that like, oh, it totally makes sense that your character leaving this basically paradise into the wasteland would would obviously be a psycho murder killer who just kills everyone on sight. It just it totally makes sense. It's like what? That not only was this place basically paradise, your father, from what we're shown is shown to be at least pretends to be a moralistic person who expects you to do that stuff, even though he doesn't do it himself, but he expects you to do it. So it, it just wouldn't make sense. Wow. What a take. What, what a claim to make about this game that makes sense. <laughs> Ooh, no sense. That is one of the worst claims about this game I've ever heard. Able to be molded into the player's liking and still make sense. But of course, the choices you make outside the vault is what really makes the game shine. Big disagree there. All right. For the first time. So, chat. That has been six and a half minutes, almost to the exact second. This video is why Fallout 3 is an underrated masterpiece. <laughs> like, what the fuck was that entire first section? Please, chat. Please, please help me. Please help me. Maybe I'm the maybe I'm the one who's not thinking clearly. How was that entire first section anything to do with? Like evidence for why Fallout 3 is an underrated masterpiece. 
Well, because y you see, you might kill slaves and you might save people from raiders, and those two things are totally consistent because... <laughs> yeah. Well, you see, Vault 101 is an allegory for North Korea, so that makes this a very <laughs> deep and philosoph philosophical game. Velociraptor, yes. Velociraptor, yeah. I get it. <laughs> Raptors are Philosophies. kind of lizard, right? <laughs> no! Slap. Technically, it's a bird. Yes, actually, that is more accurate. Birds and that's are... the funniest thing, too, is... Uh, uh, birds are more reptiles than crocodiles are, which is just fascinating. Birds are my favorite kind of lizard. <laughs> Man, just give it another year and eventually every single animal on the planet will be a fucking lizard, according to Cree. <laughs> fish are uh, my favorite kind of lizard. <laughs> <laughs> Be bees are my favorite kind of fish. <laughs> no, that one I disagree with. Bees are my favorite kind of lizard as well. <laughs> Uh, Grandmaster Pi says, Setch, I have the answers you seek. They're at the bottom of this shotgun barrel. <laughs> <laughs> Fallout 3 fans, when they have to defend their game without inventing a head cannon. <laughs> yeah. I like how fucking derp these YouTube emotes are. They're great. Yeah. Like the one who is, uh, the, the hands covering eyes, it's literally just two giant eyeballs, not even a head, with eyes, or hands slightly in front of the eyes. It's great. And that fucking blue, uh, face blue wide eyes, the one in the middle there. Yep. <laughs> Out of the vault for the first time, you are completely alone. You have minimal supplies, and you start to wander towards whatever you can find. I remember walking down from the vault to the town of Megaton for the first time. I remember the beauty that it all had, being able to see this dead, <laughs> like, isolated world that really had nothing left. And there was no people. There was a high school nearby with a bunch of raiders inside. But those are people. There was a... <laughs> no, those raiders are aren't people. Raiders are people. people. Raiders no. are not people. No, they Confirmed. are not people. They do oh, not have the same rights. What a, what a base what a base take. We can extend that to criminals. Criminals are people. Yes. Raiders are more people than slaves are. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because uh, slaves are only slaves are only fifty percent people and fifty percent bomb collar. <laughs> I mean by weight, yes. Raiders are lizards. Raiders are my favorite kind of lizard. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> hey, hey, Setch. Um, did yeah. did you know that um, that lizards are my favorite kind of lizard? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Raiders are just the remnants of the Illuminati after the Great War. <laughs> <laughs> lizard people. God. <laughs> <laughs> the Illuminati are my favorite kind of lizards. <laughs> 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 oh god! <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. But now he's gonna—he's—he's he's pretty wild and all this thing. But now he's gonna start hyping up Megaton. Everybody, are you ready? Oh no! Raiders are just the descendants of ATF agents. <laughs> <laughs> there was a person who was hiding from. Uh, I forget from the bar oh come on you for you're making a video trying to tell how this game is a masterpiece and you don't even do the research to know the characters you're talking about like yep. i i do these multi-hour videos on on these games and I, I can't remember the name of every single character off the top of my head but i write that into my script so i know when i get to okay um who, who's the paranoid weirdo in uh, Diamond? Oh, right, that's Myrna. Okay, I'll write that into the script so I don't fucking forget it when it's time to record for the video. Yeah. Come the fuck yep. on. Also, I didn't yeah. quite hear what he said. Is he talking about Mortarity or is he talking about someone else? He's, he's talking, talking about, about the... Silver hiding from Mortarity. Yeah, and right now yeah. he's, he's like 
passive aggressively pointing a gun at the back of her head. Now he's thinking about pickpocketing her, and then he's going to point the gun again, and then he's going to give up. <laughs> it was yeah, again, weird, confusing gameplay on top of the weird and confusing uh, dialogue that is currently being experienced. I love that. That's just become his name now on the on the, on Stag. It's it's not <laughs> it's not Mortar Arty. It's Mortar Arty. <laughs> yep. And Moyer Mortar Brown. Moyer Brown. <laughs> Terry A. Davis told me that the Raiders glow in vats. Oh. <laughs> it's Billy Creed, not Billy Creel. <laughs> yeah. If you talk to Billy Creed. <laughs> a person who was hiding from uh i forget his name from the bar and i remember just going to megaton and seeing the giant doors open for the first time walking around i remember i spent hours walking around getting quests and just looking around i did get lost because i didn't understand how everything worked i was Old. trying to find Old. Like crater side supply. I don't know <laughs> how. How he do you get lost? He walked around for hours in Megaton and got lost and couldn't find his way to crater side supply. That's you why just... I was laughing so much. I was like, hold, hold the cut. The, the topic he's saying gets much worse. You just have to look up. That's it, or look directly to like your opposite direction that you're currently looking to see it at it's visible at all points in the town like i guess you can make the argument because megaton does everything does look kind of samey because it's all made of like the same junk material with yeah almost so no small. no proper signs and shit like yeah. that but at the same time <laughs> it's so small and it everything is within view at all times so there's yep. no reason you should you should ever be able to get lost. Someone mentioned <laughs> Vivek in chat from uh, Morrowind. I could understand getting lost in that in-game city for hours. Like, yeah. Vivek is a huge fucking place for a game. Separated by multiple bridges to other huge areas. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah. But then, like, Megaton is just so small. It has, like, what, 20 buildings? If that. If that. Man, I don't know. I, I question your ability to navigate if you get lost in Megaton. Because as far as, like, in-game towns and, like, locations go, it is not complex. How I got lost? Maybe it's just the town overall is a little confusing. Maybe it's just me being dumb. Look, I'm I'm trying not to be mean. I'm I'm trying here, okay? If you got lost in Megaton, that was absolutely you being a bit dumb. Yeah, I, I, I could least... somewhat, I could somewhat understand if you're first going in and you're lost in the sense that you don't know which building is what, because it, everything does kind of look the same. Because yes. they didn't do a very good job with like the design, and they, they also don't label things properly, so I can understand that regards of being lost. But being like, oh, I don't know where to go, For you know, because this this place is just confusing. I, I'm like, no, the it's not confusing at all. It's very simplistic. Well, remember, he didn't say he got lost for hours. He said he was exploring for hours before he got lost. So. You've been in Megaton, this tiny little shithole, with three quests? I think it's three quests. Um, survival Guide, the Water uh, pure, the water Purifier, and then the uh, Moriarty stuff for the main quest. Oh, I guess the Bomb. Bomb quest. But yeah. Um, so, yeah, you're, you're in this place for hours, and you, you like can't put together where you are anymore? You then get lost? Yeah, I don't I don't get that. I can at least understand getting lost in Rivet City because that exists in impossible space. Yeah, that literally makes no sense. If you're trying to apply logic to that place to figure out where you're going, you're gonna get lost because it doesn't make sense. Yeah, absolutely.
But one thing I love about this little town is how massive of a quest you can already complete the second you get it. Get it. Okay, so now that little part there, I had to slow it down a bit, but he says you complete the second you get it. Because he, he kind of stumbles there. Like every other time, he's been very slow and deliberate with his words. There, he just kind of fumbles them all together. Just real quick. But, yes, he is talking about the quest you think he's talking about. I'm just going to go back slightly, and then we'll go from there. Uh... How massive of a quest you already complete the second you get it. A quest where the character can show their morality, because it the, the answer seems obvious. You could blow up a bomb, or a nuclear bomb at that, at the center of Megaton for money and luxury, at the expense of the people or disarm the bomb in Megaton and help the people there, but you get less money and less luxury. So there's the whole thought. It's like that's, that's not wow. morality. That's a that's a what well, are you stupid or are you a thinking creature in the slightest? Amazing the moral good, choices. The morally good solution to power the atom is to blow the town up. <laughs> Unironically, yes. It certainly feels like it. I mean, it you're is, just yeah. putting natural selection into action there. Yeah, you you built in the bottom of a crater, for God's sakes, around a nuclear bomb, for God's sakes, and you're so stupid. Like, as a town, the person who's trying to figure out how to survive wants you to go to grocery stores. Holy crap. Oh, and also, you're so dumb that even though the person maintaining the water uh, filter for your town giving you water to drink says that it's going to collapse and the whole town's going to die, you just don't help him, ever. <laughs> like, you you are, like, on Darwin's, not just his short list, you're on his fucking hit list at this point. <laughs> kill the people or don't care the... Uh, bleh. Kill the people or don't kill the people. Fucking worried emote. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't get how anyone, especially nowadays, after it everything keeps that's been said, happening, Pagan. That's yeah. the how I, I how do, can I you do. look at this quest and think, "Oh my god, what an amazing choice to have in a game! I could nuke a town, or I cannot nuke a town," and that's the extent of the reasoning behind it. I do want to point out that this video is from four years ago. I lied, it's from four months ago. <laughs> like, I I can imagine the odd person here and there coming up with this argument that, oh yeah, it's a deep moral choice, it's a big thing, blah blah blah, blah whatever. If they're like a crazy fanboy desperate to defend the game. But... It is nearly every fucking video we cover on this game where they make a point about Power of the Atom being such a great quest. Um, the like to dislike ratio on the video is three likes to one uh, dislike, basically. And not only three in general, but I mean three times the number of likes. And it's it's a video, its channel has 250 subscribers, something like that, and the video got 11,000 views. So, it, again, it goes further to disprove the people that say that negativity sells. No, clearly, when it comes to the fucking Bethesda bots, positivity will get you the clicks and views. Especially yep. when it's a video this poorly put together. Again, I don't mean to be rude or mean to this guy. I'm, like, he can definitely improve the quality of his videos if he puts the work in. Um, but, like, this is just not a very good video. This also directly contradicts what he just said beforehand about, like... Yeah, your father's morality. Yeah, your father would have taught you everything you knew about morality, and your father even scolds you for blowing up Megaton if you do it, so... That directly contradicts that it would make sense that your character would do that. So you shouldn't be praising this quest by your own logic... Oh my god. <laughs> These people just don't think. No. Any. And any. Again, it's not three likes. It's, it's a three, three to times. one ratio. 
<laughs> oh god. Three like, likes. Again, again it's, <laughs> it's hard not to be mean, but so like th this is this is what we mean when we say people are NPC brained or they don't think or whatever. It's just you hear what other people say and you want to defend the thing you like, so you just say fucking whatever to do so. Yeah. Yeah. It's I will just... say this dude in particular, there is something about him where I feel like we could have like we could sit down with him and have a very nice discussion with him and it would be pleasant all around. Yeah. But at the yeah. same time, it's like I'm sorry, but your video is just not good. Yeah. You you weren't paying attention to Fallout 3 at all. And you weren't paying attention to what the game was actually saying, the game storylines, the dialogue, what was actually happening around you. Like, I I'm sorry, you, ju you just weren't. I don't believe this man wrote a script. I don't either after he said, oh, wh uh, whatever his name from the bar, I forget his name. Yeah. Like, again, you could work that into a joke if you wanted to play that, and whatever his name from the bar was, and then all of a sudden you show, like, a Sherlock Holmes, like, raising an eyebrow or something like that. To play the subtle nod that it's Moriarty. <laughs> the side of Megaton, like the Wasteland Survival Guide and the ability to learn the game. But that's not all. There's also like a quest where you can help this guy with addiction. There's Jericho, who is inside, who is a former raider. Who has now put that life behind him? Unless you hire and him. And I know the thrill will leave you when you replay over and over again, but the amount of things to see in Fallout 3 is pretty diverse. I know that's for every Fallout game, yeah. but I mean, come on. There's a settlement. I cannot. Like, he's talking, but all I can see is these two fucking autistic creatures shooting at each other and missing every single shot and i'm just like good god i, I hate this game actual, what you don't understand pagan this is a really deep thing he chose this clip in particular because it is an actual metaphor for his entire video and all the points he's making <laughs> <laughs> like I, I did not hear a single thing he just said because I was so focused on the fact that this bloatfly and this iBot are shooting at each other and I, not making contact even once. I just find it hilarious that you called them autistic. Because I <laughs> imagine <laughs> these two autistic creatures. <laughs> but yeah, I was zoning out too because this is it's again, no offense, it's putting me to sleep. It's like a LARP session with people throwing wadded up paper at each other. Too magic, too magic, too magic. <laughs> Alright, but here you go. Listen no! carefully. Close thine <laughs> eyes. No! <laughs> Listen. Here we go. Vader, who has now put that life. And I know the thrill will leave you when you replay over and over again, but the amount of things to see in Fallout 3 is pretty diverse. I know that's for every Fallout game, but I mean, come on. There's a settlement run entirely by children who you can't... Oh boy, do we really want to get into talking about fucking Little Lamplight and how that <laughs> fucking makes no goddamn sense? Before we do that, I want to tackle each of his points here quickly. There's someone you can help with a drug addiction. It's a quest so small that it's not even a fully marked quest. Oh, Jericho is the guy who retired from raiding? Literally until you hire him to be your companion. Yep. He's complete, like, it's not like it's a part of his life he regrets or that he truly put behind him. Because when you invite him out, he's like, sure, fuck yeah, let's go. Yeah, he was looking for an excuse to get back in the action, basically. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, one of the ways you convince him is by saying, like, oh, doesn't it? Yeah, wasn't those good times? We should do it again. Um, yeah, and then he talks about how there's just such a diversity of things to see and experience. Like brown grass, three. dead trees, brown grass, dead trees, brown grass, dead trees. Collapsed, collapsed gray building. Partially collapsed gray building. Gray building that is in ruins that you can enter. Metro tunnels, metro tunnels, metro tunnels. 
<laughs> yeah, it's right, too brown. <laughs> so one of his one of his things one of his evidence for uh, how just diverse this game is in in terms of like its content is little lamplight. Okay, so what could be the next one? Who you can't kill because Bethesda doesn't appreciate appreciate child murder. Kidding, YouTube. Please don't demonetize me. I mean, I don't really. That doesn't really matter yet. I'm sorry, but you demonetized yourself because at the start of the video, you played for almost two minutes straight copyright music. Yeah, and you and G claim that shit faster than fucking. Oh, well, actually, I better not say that, but. <laughs> oh, my God. But yeah. I... But really, that's your problem with little lamp plays that you can't kill the kids. Uh, I can tell you right now, that's not my issue with the fucking <laughs> with with everything involving little lamp light. See, I'm once again in a position where I have to defend the bad video game from the person who likes it. It wasn't yep. so much that Bethesda doesn't appreciate you killing children. It's apparently that if you have killable children in your game, it will automatically get an adults only rating. And that kind of yep. restricts your ability to sell your game on storefronts. Yep. Or even in certain countries. Honestly, I'd just say fuck it and go for it. Um, the alleged rumor is that Baldur's Gate 3 is going to have killable children. That's going to gonna get fucking dark. Granted, Baldur's Gate 3 has an entire character who uh, is insane. I think would be the best way to put it. Or like, there are things trying to drive you to do the worst things in all situations, and even the developers are like, it's not for the faint of heart, trust us. Like, it goes really dark. And I'm just like, oh god. Hmm. I mean, the fact that your character is, like, happily dreaming of, like, of corpses that have been hung, like, painfully, and, like, entrails dragging along the ground as the person's, like, screaming in agony, and that you finally fall asleep happily when you're just thinking the just thinking of blood, blood, blood over and over again. Oh my god. Yeah, I think think it's gonna get pretty fucking dark. Five dollars from Dark World XL, thank you. Promised Netherland meets little lamplight but robots instead of demons, with an option to turn the children into strange meat. Oh god. Oh <laughs> Horrifying. Did Cree just make the interested owl noise when the idea of killing kids came up? Well, first of all, it's not interested owl noise. It's just a... Oh. Yeah. But second of like, all, child murder in games is fun, okay? <laughs> there, there's a also, reason the killable uh, children mods exist. Uh, it's not... It, like, apparently you can throw children. Like, you can... Okay. In, in Baldur's Gate 3, you can actually pick up your smaller companions and throw them around. So if you have, like, a gnome companion or, ha or a, a halfling companion, you can actually just pick them up and throw their ass. So you could genuinely, like, run over, pick up your little gnome rogue or gnome thief and throw them at some dude's face. In fact, the developers laughed about it and they said, you know what gnomes are the best for? Throwing. <laughs> Toss me. Oh You're god, it's to like toss that. Um... Me. Yep. Don't tell the elf. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and apparently you can pick up people, including enemies, if, and you can use them as improvised weapons to smack each other. <laughs> so, so you yeah, can run just... up to a little goblin and pick them up, and then use them as a meat club to smack up the goblin. <laughs> Wow, that just, just reminds me of uh, that one game. I, I can't remember which one it is. It's it's the one where you hunt like creatures and stuff. Um, <laughs> Pokemon. Oh, well, depends. Dauntless, Monster Hunter. Um... No, it, is it Dragon Age? Is that what it is? Oh, Dragon's Dogma. Dragon's Dogma. Yeah, yeah that's you what can it do is. that yeah. too. You can pick up your your pawns and you can <laughs> throw them around and. Sh yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Is just I like when you pick up like your your pawns, you just toss them. <laughs> I yep. just imagine you grabbing this creature by its fucking ankles and spinning in a circle, just fucking hitting everyone <laughs> running at you with them. Yeah. 
exhumed. That's what I was talking. Exhumed legume says the one where you hunt creatures and stuff. Do you have the slightest idea how little that narrows it down? Yeah, I know. <laughs> like once I said that, I realized my error, and I was like, wait, that 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 explains so many different games. And then I tried to like narrow it down by saying dragon something because I was like, I know, I know it had dragon in the name, but I couldn't remember what. Yeah. Game it was. It's just. Like, oh my god, the number of, of funny things I can just imagine doing, especially if you play online with your friends. Holy shit, like, your friend gives you lip, or they, they act like a little loot goblin, right? And they have to be smaller than your character. I would run over there and grab them and yeet them off of a fucking cliff or something. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be like, what are you doing? And I'm like, time to kick the baby! No, don't kick the baby! Ah! I do wish we had more games. Go ahead, go ahead. You've looted one gold piece too many. Off the cliff with you, you little fuck. <laughs> you little <laughs> shit. I do wish we had more games where, you know, like, um, oh, what, what's that one game that Arcane made where you could, like, kick people off cliffs and shit? Uh, Might and Magic? Um, yeah, I think, yeah, I think it is Might and Magic. Yeah, well, it, it, it was uh, the bar, the bar fight simulator. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I do wish we had more games where that kind of mechanics Dark, yes, Dark came up. Yeah, Dark Messiah. That's it. Yeah, Dark where you Messiah, can like Might and Magic. Yep. Uh, yeah, exactly. where you can like kick people off and like <laughs> ice the floor so they slip and shit like that. I wish we had more games where there was more like options for dealing with enemies in that way. <laughs> I, got, I I told you guys about um, when I used to play Left 4 Dead 2 online, and I'd get the charger and I'd find places to instant kill people. Right? Yes. <laughs> yes. That was the, that was the best thing to do. <laughs> do. Do you remember in Left 4 Dead 2, the hotel one where you start up high in the hotel room? Yep. And I, they have to go out on the wait, balcony. I would wait. I, not the balcony, but gonna, in the hotel yeah. rooms. Uh, yes. One of the doors was perfectly parallel with a window and mm. i would uh, wait as a charger in there and try to knock someone out the wind like grab someone and take them out the window with me uh, <laughs> so the one of the first times i played the pvp mode in left 4 dead 2 so in part and part of that one of the routes you ha you could take in the hotel is you'll have to go out on the balcony and then go along the balconies and then go into another room because the hallway and everything's collapsed and as a charger, I saw what what kind of permutation we got, and I just waited, staring at that hole coming into the next room they had to go into. <laughs> I just waited and waited, and I see I see some idiots come right around the corner, and then something just. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got three of them off. Nice. <laughs> nice. I was about to say, too, it's extra fun when you manage to do, like, a fucking bowling thing on them where you grab one and kill them, but you're knocking, like, one or two others either down or off. Yeah. <laughs> and I, just, I just love the fact that the charger sounds like the autistic re-child. He's just like... As he goes yeah, it's... <laughs> I love that so much. I I also love the sound that the jockey makes too. The fucking jockey is just hilarious to me though. <laughs> I fucking love that shit. But also, uh, you just reminded me. Uh, I actually got uh, Left 4 Dead one and two uh, during this Steam sale, so I have those now. So if we want to play those, nice. I, I can play those with you. Nice. Oh, absolutely. We definitely gotta do that. Yeah. All right. Do it once. Kidding, YouTube. Please don't demonetize. That doesn't really matter yet because I'm a small YouTube channel, so I don't even know if you'll notice me. Um, then there's also a slaver group. Yeah, sure. Why not? Paradise Falls. A group dedicated to preserving technology and also... Have okay, so the slaver group has a single customer. That's it? That's added in a fucking DLC. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Nobody buys slaves in the Capital Wasteland, but there's a thriving slave market, apparently. And keep in mind, the customer added in a DLC has been active for like 20 years, maybe. Whereas yeah. the slaving organization has existed for at least 100. Yep.
Uh, yeah. And the fucking and the customers are literally just they're just raiders. They're just glorified raiders. But I want you to listen to this next part. You can kind of tell where he was going with it already, but listen very carefully. A group dedicated to preserving technology and also having a cool name called Brotherhood of Steel because they really just had to have a cool name and a cool motto at Victorium. And then there is the subgroup of them called the Outcasts. That is what they're called, the Outcasts. You're in trouble. <laughs> uh, he had some issues going there. Also, this is God, I, I, superficial I, fucking bullshit once again. Yeah, there's there's a town full of children that you can't kill. There there's a group of slavers. There's a group of people who collect technology and they've got a really cool fucking name. They're called the Brotherhood of Steel. And there's a sub faction that's called the, the outcasts. outcasts. <laughs> yeah, God, how do you forget that? But I, I still think that the name, the naming convention for those two should be switched around. Oh yeah, absolutely. They absolutely should. I yeah. hate that the fucking the Elder Lions group is the is named after the Brotherhood, and the actual Brotherhood guys are the outcasts. That makes Honestly, no sense. It would have been better if. The outcasts were the true brotherhood, and Lion's Brotherhood was just called something else. They've they've splintered that far off that they're just an entirely new faction. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Like, they should just be called the outcasts. They shouldn't even yeah, have like no, the Brotherhood outcasts. I, that, that's what I'm saying though is they shouldn't be called the outcasts. They should be called something entirely different. Because to be yeah. an outcast, you have to be like outcast from a group. Oh, I know. The Minutemen. <laughs> Perfect name for them. <laughs> no, well, no, what would have been actually interesting is if you, okay, assuming Fall Three was a good game, right? Uh, you need a whole ground up thing, but you're still doing the the, the water crisis and everything. <laughs> like water crisis is actually a thing. You're going to get Project Purity back from the Super Mutants, so you show up to the to the Brotherhood, or you know, air quotes, the Brotherhood. We're, we'll keep the same. And you get there, and they say they can't help you because they're currently facing an internal schism, and there's a massive conflict between the two. So now, even though your overarching goal is to help everybody, now you have to get involved in a just factional ideological fight between a faction that has splintered itself. And, you know, again, it would give you a good reason. You need their help to take out the super mutants, but... They're currently in a crisis point of their own, and they can't help you. That would be that could be genuinely interesting. The sisterhood of plastic. <laughs> 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 but he, here's an idea for uh, changing their name. The group Riley's Rangers exists for one shitty quest. Why not completely get rid of that? Make Riley a major character in this uh, Splinter faction and call them Riley's Rangers. There's a solution yeah. right there. You've got a name that works. Five dollars from ScorcherCast. Thank you. Just got soft serve from an ice cream truck. Uh, just wanted to brag. Have your five dollars. Oh, well, thank you. I <laughs> nice. despise you. I am currently sweating up a storm because it is hot <laughs> here and it is muggy. Yeah, I'm not too comfortable right now either. Skill issue. <laughs> they have a second <laughs> mission, I believe. Technically, yes, but really no. They've got a uh, one of those unmarked repeatable quests, I believe. Of them called the Outcasts. That is what they're called. They're, they're really there just because they want to focus on technology specifically, like their original view. Because they don't really care about people, they just care about technology and keeping it from people. Which, I mean, makes sense because of the nuclear bombs and everything. There's also a massive aircraft carrier called River, Rivet City that has become a city. <laughs> the ruins of what once was the... Ca yeah, no, I wouldn't have got that from the name Rivet City. I like how he almost said River City and left yes. it in and didn't re-record the line. 
Yeah. Well, it wasn't ri- it was revert. So you combine river and rivet. <laughs> rivet city became a city. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I find more amusing. I don't believe you. <laughs> no. I think they just called it Rivet City because it, it sounded like a cool name, not because it's cities there. Wow! Such, I'm gonna go get some soft serve just for you. Wow! <laughs> Getting bullied now. Ends <laughs> of what once was was the capital of a great nation, DC, which has become a complete war zone with Brotherhood members. Complete war zone with Brotherhood members and super mutants fighting. And then there's the vaults. I remember going through the vaults for the first time. I'm, I'm just... I'm feeling the same kind of annoyance I did last week, where at this point he's not saying anything, he's just describing things. Yeah, he's yes. basically he's going to do that for a few more minutes, but then we're going to get to the end, and he's going to have some fucking doozies. <laughs> yes. I remember, chat, remember, as I keep saying... Why Fallout 3 is an underrated masterpiece is the actual name of this video. I guess I should have done that, but I wanted to keep it for my records, to, you know, the audio fix that I made. But, yeah, I should have just named it what the actual video title was named. Yeah. Um, Five dollars from Holdra Dancer. Thank you. You guys have gotten me to get the old Fallout games and give them a try. Hopefully I don't screw up too badly, so thank you for that. Um... <laughs> That's nice to hear. I, I do really like Fallout 1 and 2. Fallout 2 is actually my favorite in the series. Something mm-hmm. to be prepared for, though, you're probably going to die a lot. Just just yeah. be prepared for that. Yeah, I struggled. I actually still have Fallout 1 and 2 on my PC. I should really re-download those and play them again see how I like them now. Because the last time I played them was years ago. Many, many years ago. I have not played them in a very long time. It's been a while since I've really played them, too. I should do a stream of them at some point. Yeah. Yeah. All right, here we go. And feeling this creepy sense. Whenever there's a game that has just just this empty feeling to it, it feels like it doesn't have any content to it. It feels empty. Fallout 3 does have an eerie feeling about it. That feeling where you can almost feel that bad things have happened there like <laughs> no no uh, really look around the world look around the waste by nuclear fire and flooded <laughs> with mutants and ghouls and raiders and slavers something bad has happened here fucking oh my god no i would have <laughs> never it's guessed that anything century. bad happened here this looks like a very wonderful place to live it looks like this was nothing but paradise yep tell that people were once living and thriving here that (laughs) empty feeling that something died here the feeling of loneliness in a world of death and destruction that something died here everything on screen except for that person running there is dead (laughs) in particular I mean the plant like hold on hold on I want to get a better frame of this hold on here that empty feeling Remember, guys, all the plant life is totally alive. Yeah, totally. Everything's alive, every, all of it. It's all just there. Is he describing Fallout 3 or California? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again, this, this I would almost accuse this of being a, he needed to hit a word count, you know? thing because he's just he's waffling on and going flowery on something that's like he's just describing a uh, post-apocalypse at this point that's it <laughs> i love tentacle dudes air. yes yeah i love tentacle dudes comment <laughs> also guys i'm at auschwitz <laughs> right now and i'm getting a horrible feeling that something bad happened here i'm an empath i remember <laughs> seeing that meme <laughs> 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 something died here world of death and destruction 
it's almost like you can feel exactly what happened through the destroyed ruins of the places you were going through. And there's almost like hints of what happened. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's a post apocalypse game where the whole world got nuked. No, 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 no. just like, just like, oh. <laughs> There's always hints about what happened. Hold on. Yeah, you know what's like, coming up. Maybe, Come on. Maybe. <laughs> and there's almost like hints of what happened. Like maybe something messed up, like a baby blanket or or a skeleton with a teddy bear next to it. <laughs> <laughs> Environmental <laughs> skeletons! Skeletons! It's not just that he mentioned the environmental storytelling skeletons, it's that he referenced the exact same one as that other fucking video. Yep. Yeah. Fucking skeleton uh, with a teddy bear. The hecking skeletons, bro. <laughs> yeah. Skeletelling oh storytons. <laughs> oh. I'm still annoyed that fucking Starfield. Drex said, oh, there's lots of environmental storytelling, too. Literally over an image of a fucking skeleton. Yep. Yep, they're coming back. We're getting more of them because that's the only thing Bethesda could fucking write is the most simple, bare-bones fucking bullshit of, oh, there's a skeleton next to a, a vending machine. Yeah. He, it, it's so Clearly, this person was very thirsty and couldn't get a drink and died. <laughs> How sad. It's almost as if, like, a mill was super impressed by that incredibly deep but simple story of uh, baby shoes for sale, never worn. Yeah. Which is, it is incredibly simple, but it has so much context and depth to it for how simple it really is. And then he's like, I can do that too. I am a writer. And then we get this bullshit. God damn it. No. Which I love that that like attention to deep world <laughs> what it is. Like of course you could just focus on killing things and just walking around and having fun and focusing on the glitches and things like that, some glitches. But I just love that bit of world where you can see the darkness and the grim setting that Fallout 3 does. And I think out of all the Fallout games, Fallout 3 does that the best. Strong fucking disagree. Yeah. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Me looking at a broken plate on the floor and real realizing something must have happened to it that caused it to break. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. It's, it's wild. It's wild to hear that Fallout 3 shows you the darkness more than, you know, New Vegas and its entire concepts of, like, morality and uh, the legion existing and are they actually the best thing for the mojave i argue no but you know what i mean there's that question there that they could be because and they would have their argument would have been strengthened even more if we had actually seen their territory God, yeah i, I think that was like territory. the the biggest issue with their um their crunch time was yep. that they weren't able to get more Legion content into the game. Yeah, absolutely. Because then I think you know, it would have had a lot more uh, than that. Um, or the fact that the NCR are massacring tribals, like women and children included. Okay, like, that's yeah. pretty fucking dark. Or even if you want to go back to Fallout 1 and 2, like, again... Bethesda's kitty glove clown world doesn't hold a candle to one two in New Vegas when no, it comes but you to see, showing actual darkness. But you see, Zetch, I found a skeleton in this building, and that's super duper dark, though. And it, there's another skeleton that was laying across it, and they looked like they might have potentially been holding hands. Super dark. One time when I was playing Fallout 4, I was exploring this place, and there's a... Um... 
It was like a grocery store, and I don't know if the physics unintentionally put them in this position, or if they were placed that way in the game, but there was one skeleton that was in, like, the... You know how they have the, um... The rope things for the line, so, like, it, the line goes back and forth? One of the skeletons yeah. was leaned up against that, like, backwards, and it was clearly a female skeleton, because it was in a dress. And there was another skeleton that had collapsed onto her, and his face was right in her crotch. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't know if that was fucking accidental or intentional. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to tell. There was also a skeleton I found at one point somewhere in the game where it was in the, uh, draw me like one of your French girls pose. <laughs> uh, Grandmaster Pie says, Such, I found a skeleton that was on the toilet. It was super deep. Did the nuke kill him or the Taco Bell? <laughs> 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 Taco God, Bell's I've, pretty I've had nightmares because of Fallout. What one that like the obvious one is the Death Claws. I, I've had dreams about Death Claws. Jesus Christ! But I, I I've also had um a, a nightmare. Well, it's the same nightmare. I, I've only had it like twice, but it's it has to do with Vault Twenty Two. And yeah, my brain is super fucked up because <laughs> my god the shit that goes on in that dream it's like it's like something that john carpenter would make mm. it is not pleasant it is like really fucked up like i i just imagine like these groups of people going to the vault before you do obviously you know and, and there's like the whole thing of like none of them came, came back and i just get this like I have this dream where it's like I'm like in this team of people going out here to get, you know, like, oh, well, we're just going to get this data. And we go in there and we're like looking at all the plants and stuff. And, you know, we're just kind of like shooting the shit, talking back and forth, being like, what the fuck? You know, what is all this shit? And one of the like one, one of my teammates like goes over to like the fucking spore plant. And it's like sleeping or whatever. Like it's it's like facing down. And he's like, look at this one. What the fuck is this? He like pokes it with his rifle. And it just fucking like opens up like super quickly. It spits on him. And he just like dissolves like something like the blob from John Carpenter. And it is super fucked up. And then like we back away from that because it starts spitting at us. And we go into like the hallway and one of those like... uh spore carrier things comes out of like the dirt and grabs uh this like this female teammate that's with us and drags her off and yeah you can like hear the screams and you get a pretty good idea of what it's doing and yeah wow. and then like and then like when we find her later because we get chased by a bunch of others and she's like basically ripped in half and has like fungus growing out of her now and shit like that and just yeah, it's fucked up. And basically, we get, like, trapped in a room because there's a bunch of these things outside. And we're stuck in there for, like, a couple of days. And basically, our skin starts to, like, fall off. And we start coughing. And you can see, like, spores coming out of our breath and stuff. And our skin starts to, like, our flesh starts to crack. And, you know, moss starts to grow out between our everything, basically, and start bleeding from everything, and yeah, it's really fucked up. It's like something straight out of John Carpenter. You have some crazy fucking dreams, man. I do have some that crazy dreams. I hate dream. my dreams. My dreams are always, like, super vivid, crazy, scary. The Deathclaw ones are really bad. I really hate the Deathclaw dreams I have. They are fucked. <laughs> However not death. The beauty of Fallout is that life continues. I know the motto for Fallout is war, war never changes. Oh god, the this. Is, there wouldn't be war if there wasn't people. Well, unless you count the ant war, but I'm, I'm, you know what I mean. There wouldn't be war without things to do war in the first place. So, it's not war that never changes. What a statement. 
War needs participants to be a war. The yeah, this is, yes. this whole argument has is so stupid because it's literally like, yeah, no shit. It's like, well, it's not war that never changes. It's people. And it's like, yeah, no I, shit. Yeah, that's the point that <laughs> they I, make in the Fallout games. I disagree that war requires participants. There's a war happening on Mars right now between... Well, there are no participants, but there's totally a war, trust me. <laughs> uh, for anyone that doesn't know, the Ant War is... I can't remember how many different colonies it is, but there are these massive super colonies of ants, and they're just constantly in conflict with each other. It's, it's a literal, like, battle where they'll go in and attack the different colonies and dens, and they're trying to get down to the queens and everything. They'll launch, like, raids on each other. It is fascinating to see a conflict of the animal kingdom. Again, it's just a bunch of ants. But because they're fighting for resources, they've locked themselves into this massive conflict with each other. And, yep, the ants will actually enslave ants from the other colonies that they capture. Based. It is, it is, it is just weird. Why don't the various different ants all harmoniously live together like we were told would happen? Isn't diversity our greatest strength? Yeah, ask France that question. <laughs> they are making your teammate watch a Jim Sterling video. <laughs> <laughs> That's way worse than what I thought. Yep. <laughs> Ave, true to answer. <laughs> yes, I know I say like a lot. I can't help it. I'm still trying to get out of that. ant war but I'm, I'm you know what i mean there wouldn't be war without things to do war in the first place so it's not war that never changes if you look very deep down it's people that never change oh shit there's there's so many small things even though so many of them though so many of them could live in harmony okay it, now, you need to have evidence for this because a lot of the things, like, what is a small thing to you? Because I'm going to tell you, having access to resources so I can live the next day is not a small thing. I'll gladly fight to the death if it means I get to continue going on the next day. Not just that, but the whole war never changes thing doesn't literally mean that there's no change in war ever. Like, oh yeah, fucking 2,000 years ago we used spears and now we use fucking, uh... I don't want to say nukes, but, like, crazy-ass bombs to kill people. Like, yeah, it's a change in war. No, that's not what yeah. it means. It means that humanity is always going to be fucking fighting one another for some reason. Yeah. And again, conflict isn't always a bad thing. Like, it, again, without conflict, with, you wouldn't be able to stand up for somebody else. You wouldn't be able to, to like... Be a, you wouldn't be able to be a good person, honestly, without conflict. And it isn't just the whole fact that you're contrasting the conflict. It's like, hey, when somebody gets picked on, and then you stand up to the bullies and tell them to cut it the fuck out and stuff like that, that's a conflict. It's a conflict between you and the bullies. You now jumped into a conflict that the bullies were having with their victim. Would you argue that that's bad? That you're now in the conflict? No, you helped that person. You're protecting that person. That's the whole idea, too, that um, Sir Terry Pratchett played around with when he was doing the Discworld series. A massive, great series of books and everything, too. Um, but they had a character that talked about um, war, what is it good for? Because he was obviously joking about the song. And then the other character went through and explained in detail what war was actually good for. Like, all the positives of war. Especially war that's done for a righteous and noble cause. And then the other guy looks at him like, what the hell are you talking about? What's it good for? And the guy's like, uh, nothing? Exactly. Uh, Seriously, though, it's, it's a strange thing of, like... I, I always just get weirded out when people are like, you don't have to fight ever. Just be harmonious with each other, and so harmony is always better. It's like, no, it isn't. 
Yep, sometimes there's just someone who needs their skull crushed with a rock. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes there are things worth dying for and fighting for. Two dollars from Gurusula. Thank you. The real war is this video versus staying awake. Yeah, this video is a fucking sleeping pill. <laughs> the other video we've got one. planned. Please tell me it's fairly short. It is. It's like nine minutes. And it's a listicle yeah. video. So. Okay. It, it should go relatively quickly then. Yeah. He has a bonus one. So it's top five reasons why Starfield is going to be the bestest. Oh god, I just realized something. Yeah. Uh, the <laughs> Going back to the dream thing real quick. Uh, when I said that it grabs her and runs away, uh, when I say grab, I mean its fingers are basically roots. So you know that scene in uh, The Thing near the end where it grabs the dude's hey, face? Yeah. and We don't need to traumatize everybody. No, I have to. I have to traumatize no. the chat. <laughs> no, stop traumatizing the children. Stop it. No, they must be traumatized. <laughs> but yeah, basically stop that, it. but like in her leg. God, if only SFN was better with details, I'd animate it. No! Oh, God, no. Don't do that. <laughs> oh, my God, that reminds me of that one picture that's, like, literally been described as, I've never had a jump scare in picture format before. Well done. It was, just, <laughs> it was just a still image. And it actually fucking works really well as a jump scare. It's like, what the fuck? Anyways. Yeah, go ahead and continue. It's not war that never changes, it's people. Again, people never change. There will be hurtful people, there will be love and hate, but above all else, as long as two factions- You really are struggling to reach a word count, are you? It's not that uh, <laughs> wars never change, it's people. People never change. Like, fucking get on with it! This this once again strikes me as someone who wanted to make a video and had nothing to talk about. Yeah, I, I, I put that picture, that's the jump scare picture. And I spoiled it just so, you know, if you didn't want to see it, you can just click away and go back and it'll cover you. Hmm. Neat. Yeah. Oh, I didn't mean to click off the thing. Whoops. It's it's good use of color to draw your eye to a particular point the very first moment you see it, and then you see the second thing, and it's just like, oh god. When did you become Dave the Wizard? Who the fuck is Dave the Wizard? Oh, that's that one dude we covered. Um, Sorcerer uh, Dave. That might be. Yeah. Maybe. Thank God, it's finally raining. I I still don't know what that means, though. Yeah, I don't either. I don't know what, what he's referring to with that. Yeah. As two fas factions exist, the phrase does apply. War shows the weakness of man, but the ability to rebuild is what is its strength. And war doesn't show the weakness of man. If you fight a war for a good cause, it shows the strength of man. That man can stand up and say no. Like It's just this whole concept of people have gotten twisted that war is always a negative thing. It's like, war is a terrible thing, for sure. You should only wage war when you know are certain in the rightness of your cause. Like, I'm pretty sure, e even though there was a lot of tism, America wasn't entirely clean. There's this weird notion that America was entirely clean in World War II. I don't think anyone would say, no, we should never have fought World War II. No, I think we had a pretty good reason to do it. No, Sedge, you don't understand. You should remain under a tyrannical dictatorship under all costs. It, it's not worth a war. I'm sorry. It's just not. Yeah. Really, it stopped raining? You rained for 10 seconds? It's just like, oh, that's enough. <laughs> yeah, welcome to Indiana. It's enough to crank up the uh, humidity. Exactly. Yep. God. Just I hate turn it. into a swamp already. The ability to live. 
most of the games in Fallout have this general idea, but of all the games, I feel like Fallout 3 does this the best. Original Fallout, the world is still... I'm sorry, what? You think Fallout 3 does it the best? Yeah. You better give some good examples yeah. for that. No, he's going to give some examples of Fallout 1 and 2 in New Vegas for very This is just frustrating at this point. Yeah. Oh, just you wait. Yeah. <laughs> are, are we getting into the bad part? We're, we're getting, we're we're getting, getting close. close. We're spiraling towards it. Original The world is still in decline. And you find the world bleak and desperate master and his army of mutants. So remember, he said Fallout doesn't have any rebuilding or anything. The world is in decline. It's not. But Fallout is all about the world rebuilding. Yes. Yeah. The first Fallout is as well. Like, it's just weird. He's like, you see the world in decline. It's like, your vault's in decline because of the water chip missing. But Junktown exists. You've got Vault City. Like, I mean, good lord, you've got, um... Fallout 1, 2, and New Vegas are all about the world rebuilding. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's the whole thing of, like, and not just rebuilding, but rebuilding with different factions and everything. Rebuilding with different ideologies that have been shaped and molded by their new environment. Yeah. bleak and desperate as you fight the master and his army of mutants in fallout 2 you focus on rebuilding towns and helping and helping people start to thrive so you focus on who gets to own the thriving strip and the mojave as a whole in fallout 76 the game is again, stripping thing again he's just oh, super stripping everything way down is he playing this yeah. clip of the two autistic creatures fighting again I think so, yeah. <laughs> I don't is... know if it's going to be the two fighting again, or if he's just got... If like, he just, he went, just went past circle. it again. Yeah. Maybe. So, if I, I see that I bought, I'm going to lose my shit. <laughs> <laughs> There's no reason you should be using uh, reusing B-roll in a 20-minute video. Yeah. Especially for a game that supposedly has so much content in it, guys. There's so much. You could be showing off all the cool stuff in Fallout 3 right now, and you're not. Yeah. yeah or you show any of the evidence for anything you've just already purported. This game is advertised as being able to rebuild America, but let's be honest. Oh, mother it's about fuck. fighting. Oh my god, it is. It's the exact same fucking clip. God damn it. Buddy. Oh my god. Buddy. Guy who made this video. You you might not ever see this stream, but whatever, I don't really care. Do better than this, please. This is just a representation of his like two remaining brain cells going at it. <laughs> yeah. They're trying to connect so they can make a point, but it's just not, it's not landing. <laughs> also, uh, from Coolio System in chat, if I sum up the other games in one sentence, I will make my hecking Fallout 3 look better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's kind of what it feels like right now. Again, because he's stripping out all the stuff as well, stripping out all context and everything. And he got the context for Fallout 1 raw. Not yeah. a world in decline. It's a world on the rebound. It's a world in the ride. Do better clapping emotes. Look, I, I don't mean in like you need to do better, Senator. I don't mean like that. I mean like literally there's so many ways you can improve this video. Um like it's a twenty minute video. We shouldn't be seeing the same B roll over again. I can forgive it if it's like a two hour video or longer that some b-roll is getting reused but this is a 20 minute video Th this is a video talking about why the game is such a masterpiece couldn't you get a clip of some of that masterpiece being shown off yeah yep i really don't get why he doesn't show any like evidence or clips or like he reads the audio and stuff but it's like why didn't you just play it it's like you're clearly okay with, like, you know, playing the entire song that plays at the start of the game. 
So that's fine. But showing like audio examples and just evidence for anything you're saying is just foreboding. How am I supposed to know Fallout 1 is sad? There's no skeletons! <laughs> ...with your buddies. Wow. In Fallout 4, it does have... Four, it does have a pretty big focus on rebuilding with the whole settlement, like being able to have settlements and things like that, but Preston Garvey kind of... No! That's a side thing at most. Like, yeah, yeah the one of the side... Or sorry, side factions. One of the factions you can side with will send you to claim settlements. But even then, it's not about rebuilding, because you're not forced to actually do any fucking building. The game is all about whether you want to fucking nuke the shit villain faction or not. Harvey kind of ruined that. I'm not going into that, but you, if you know, you know. In Fallout 3, the game centers around Project Purity, which is literally about saving the wasteland. Sure, the Enclave are the bad guys of the game, and they try to destroy Project Purity, but you can't even really side with them. You don't even know the fucking game you're trying to defend! Yeah, they don't try to destroy it! They, they want to activate it! What are you talking about? How the fuck are you, like... <sighs> the... An underrated What's... masterpiece, guys. It's bad when you get dishonest videos trying to defend the thing they like, where they just make up whatever shit they want to defend the game from criticism, because, like, that, that's dishonest and shitty. It is infinitely more fucking frustrating when someone who is a fan of the game, someone who loves the game, someone who believes the game is a fucking masterpiece doesn't know what's in the fucking game. Why would the Enclave need the, the password for the purifier if they wanted to destroy it? You realize you could do that with, like, a grenade, right? Yeah. Or yeah. any rocket launchers they have. They, they literally shell fucking Liberty Prime from... all the way from uh, the Jefferson Memorial... You're telling me they can't turn that thing on the memorial itself? Or they wouldn't have beforehand when they first attacked it? Exactly. Like, why not just shell it to begin with if you wanted to destroy it? This is the part of that thing is like, no, you didn't pay attention. The Enclave doesn't want to destroy it. They want to take it over. Yep. Why do I have to defend the shit game from people who like it so much? I don't know. It's so weird that the people who love this game are the people who know the least about it. Like, yeah. it is genuinely baffling that here I am, someone incredibly critical of this game for its shortcomings and failings and all the bad writing and characters and everything. And here I am having to jump to the game's defense from the person who's trying to say this game is fucking amazing. It is... Bizarre. It just keeps happening. Anyways, I need to figure out why my air conditioner is not working. It, it's refusing to kick on. Feel free to continue. Okay. It, it, it would be like... I'm just trying to think of an example. It, it would be yeah. like... Um, saying, you know, Lord of the Rings is a, a great fucking movie. It's my favorite movie of all time. I love how they're trying to destroy this random piece of jewelry for no reason. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It, it really would be like that. But even then, that's oh. different because Lord of the Rings is actually good. So it, may, it makes sense you would defend it from that. But, like, it, it's just the fact that someone praising something and then getting their praise wrong and making that thing look worse as a result. Like, how the fuck do we get to this point? Yeah, I was going to say the Doofenshmirtz meme where, like, you know, like, um... <laughs> if I had a nickel for every time this happened, 
Well, I'd only have two nickels, but it's strange that it's happened twice. But it's happened more than twice. Yeah, exactly. But that's the issue that I was going to say is like, but it's happened more than twice. So that, w that doesn't even work because it's happened so much more than that. Oh, how? How does it keep happening? It's, I can't it's just... wait for him to get to the fucking disingenuous shit here in a minute, though. Oh, my God. Uh... It's about to get real bad. that big of a deal Shrithan, your choice but your goal is to help rebuild what humanity has destroyed and your goal is to help the world you live in or be the one to do it even further if you can which you can't really but your goal in fallout 3 isn't to rebuild yeah, yeah. you're not rebuilding anything you're just you're Offering either clean water to a society that doesn't need water by evidence of the rest of the entire game yeah, or you're poisoning it and killing everyone. Those are your two options. Unless you have broken steel installed, and after you get the end cutscene of showing everyone dead in Rivet City because you poisoned the water, you stroll on over to Rivet City to find everyone is perfectly fine. Yeah, basically making it so you only actually have one ending. But remember, guys, 200 endings... And remember, by the time you wake up from Project Purity and uh, Broken Steel, it's been about two weeks, I believe. So that's two weeks of this uh, FEV-tainted water being sent all across the wasteland. And do any major characters die? I don't think so. I think they invent a character in the DLC that dies from it. And I think that's the extent of it. Like, it'll damage you if you drink it after that point. But, like, oh, hey, surely everyone in the Wasteland should be fucking dead at this point. Rivet City, uh, Megaton, uh, it, those two cities at the very least. Like, major characters should be dropping like flies because of the poison yeah. water. But no. Well, no, you and, see. And again, it's more evidence that nobody needed it to begin with. Well, you see, the, the Enclave didn't take into account the fact that you can actually filter the virus out. So, as long as the water goes through a purifier, it, it's totally safe to drink. 5 pounds from Threadknot. Thank you. It keeps happening because one of you guys has a stupid magnet. It just attracts stupid. Personally, I think Creed is responsible, given you know who. <laughs> See, that's the thing. You say you know who, but there's a few people at this point. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I think that kind of reinforces this point. Uh... But no, yeah, again, part of it is that, but another part of it is that our audience naturally wants to pick out the worst of the worst, right? That's just what they're going to suggest to us. No, I know. I know they're going to suggest the worst, but it's the fact that people defending the game don't know what's in the game and say things about the game that make it look worse that just aren't true. The fact that we have to jump to the defense of the terrible game because the people who love it are so fucking inept at defending it. Yep. Five dollars from Grandmaster Pi. Thank you. Project Purity, sponsored by Brita. Oh. I think I remember seeing a really funny video a long time ago where they were like covering Fallout 3 and basically described it as like uh, the journey to restart the giant Brita water filter. <laughs> <laughs> that does sound familiar. Oh, it's uh, doing the thing for me. That's one of the things people. Oh, okay. Hold on. Backing it up. There we go. If you can, which you can't really, which you can't really, which can be annoying, and I get people complain about that thing, and I get people <sighs> complain about that oh a lot, God, and that's one of the things skipping. people hate. There's so much choice in all the other Fallout games, and then Fallout 3 has a little less choice. A little, a little less, less choice? Yeah. You mean a massive fucking amount of l a lot less choice? Like, almost none? Yep. 
there's a pretty big difference there. That's pretty disingenuous of you to say, oh, well, it has a little less, I guess. No, come on. Come yeah, on. The choice is almost non existent in Fallout 3. Yeah, the fact that you're literally railroaded into basically one ending for the game, when, uh, for a game that is only having two endings and one of them is completely undone by the DLC. Yeah. Like, come on, man. Maybe we should have another positive stag as a break. Maybe OG Saints Row Story Breakdown or Cowboy Bebop. Yeah. I'd be up for having a um, another positive stag at some point. But the problem is yeah. our breakdown streams don't get many viewers. They get like they they cap out at like fifteen to twenty viewers. The oh the DS Nine one did a lot better, the most recent DS Nine one. Fair. But the the House of the Dragon one was brutal. Yeah, that one was really bad. I know this is a, a problem that will definitely get solved as like the subscriber base increases for the channel. The problem is growth is very slow at the moment, so. Like, until we start getting... Until my channel reaches, like, 50,000 subscribers, we're, we're just going to have to deal with a lot of lower... And even then, it probably won't increase by a huge margin. It, it just... That's kind of the way streaming works, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. No, and then that's the thing. For everybody that's here, just being here is awesome. Yeah. Like... Even if you lurk, if you don't talk in chat, even if you're just here, that works out a lot for us. That actually does a lot more than you would think it would. Hey, all the lur uh, lurkers who never talk in chat, we appreciate you. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same thing on any of my streams, the people that lurk there. Yeah. I If you're just there to have it as background noise or on the second monitor or something while you do something else, I'm totally fine with that. Because yeah. it it's still helps. You're still viewership. Especially you right now thinking, oh, are they talking about me? Yes, you. Especially you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your mom's looking disapprovingly from the other room, but, you know, she's there. <laughs> Pointing at something. However, the biggest moral de decision the player can make at the end of the game will sacrifice yourself. Or whether, uh, I forget, lions? Is that it? Paladin Lions. How the fuck? This oh isn't my even God. more This is one of the major characters in the game. Oh. Yep. It's not even a fucking moral decision. No, it's not. I thought yeah, he was going to talk about decision. poisoning the water. It's just whether you turn on the fucking computer or not. Yeah, you just tell Fox to get his ass in there and just like, go in there and turn it on. But your destiny, my destiny is to continue living, fuckface. Get in. Don't say that's not my job. That sounds pretentious. Instead, say, your destiny culminates here. I will not rob you of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, what a stupid fucking ending. Paladin lions, something like that, that has to sacrifice herself. It's been a while. I, I, I am a fan. It's been a while. <laughs> The biggest board. Yeah. You don't think maybe you should have, I don't know, refreshed yourself a little bit before doing this video? Yeah, and so maybe get some actual footage of anything you're talking about so you're not playing the same B roll footage again. <sighs> but no, Seth, you don't get it. He'd have to replay the game again, and God forbid he has to play this shitty game yeah, again. God, God forbid he has to play this game. He says an underrated masterpiece again. Exactly. You should. Uh, I already fucked that up. You should fulfill your destiny now. <laughs> the biggest moral decision you can make is that. No. He's he's no. just looping the same footage again. Yeah, he is. The two biggest moral decisions in the entire game is nuking Megatown Megatown? Sure, whatever. Nuking Megatown or poisoning the water? Yep. Yep. And by biggest choices, I mean 
none of the other choices in the game come even close to those two in terms of the level of impact they should have upon the world. Yeah. Whether you die or not, it could be a uh, bad. It's just the one choice you have is whether you die or not. It but... literally isn't because of the DLC. Yep. Yep. You don't even die now. <laughs> Ten dollars from Chick High. Thank you. Why in a game where you are falling? Yeah, why? In a game where you are falling over purified water in most locations, is Project Purity a thing anyway? The main plot device is de bleh. The main plot device is defeated by a domestic robot that you could get given to you for free. Yep. Yeah, the, I like uh, the water and it gives you purified water. Yep. Or you know, you could just start up Fallout 4 and build 300 water purifiers in Sanctuary. And here we see Cree unrespecting the city of Vil by getting its name wrong. We all know it's <laughs> Mega Ten and not Mega Town. Yeah. Oh my God! Yeah, wasn't isn't that what fucking um, Vincent called it? Was Mega Ten? I don't even remember. I think he did. I'm pretty sure oh, he did. No. Not honestly. I, I kind of agree with you there. The ending is a little underwhelming, and overall, the story <laughs> of Fallout 3 is the best. That's a little underwhelming. It was so fucking reviled that Bethesda made a DLC to retcon it. And oh, hold yeah. on. It, oh, we need to hear the rest of that, because it's so much worse. Yes. I, I, That's why I was going to laugh and let it continue. Can I continue? Or Yeah. Like, Go ahead. You, you could tell by the way the endings were designed that they were not planning on making Broken Steel. That was something they pulled out of their ass to save the game. Kind yep. of. Because, yeah, they did that because of Backlash. Yeah, because that yep. ending was so shit, especially with all your companions, including the super mutant immune to radiation, and the ghoul healed by radiation, telling you to go fuck yourself. Alright, we can uh, continue. I kind of agree with you there. The ending of Fallout 3 is a little underwhelming, and overall, overall, the story of Fallout 3 isn't the best. Mm -hmm. it, but it's not exactly the story that is supposed to be the focus of Fallout 3, in my opinion. It's just... Fuck. Okay, okay, there you go. There's your problem right there. Even if you don't want to admit that it's it's terrible, the fact that you're willing to say that, oh, well, the story isn't the focus, well, then it's not a fucking Fallout game. Yeah. But it you is fucking the focus. Idiot. It's the entire point yeah. of the game. Yeah. Yep. And also, and the Fallout games in general. And also, the story isn't the best. Well, I don't think it's the best story ever told. Yeah, we know it's not the best. There can only be one best. But do you think it's good? <laughs> well, I don't think it's the best. No, stop. I I do really need to watch that debate again because it is hilarious. It is great. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, this is the this is the, what a fucking condemnation. The story isn't the point in Fallout Three. It's like this isn't fucking Doom Eternal, where the story is pants on it's stupid, but the reason people play that game was for its fucking shooting. Makes oh, entire the fact video... that go ahead makes entire video talking about how the game is uh, deep about war claims the story isn't the focus. Yeah. Yeah. And keep in mind, this is a video called Why Fallout 3 is an Underrated Masterpiece. Masterpiece. Yeah. Yeah. Where the story isn't supposed to be the focus because it's not that good. Like, yeah. oh my God. And then he's going to have the gall to say what he's about to say yep. after having just said that. Yeah, again, we're 1542 in. It's 1830 is where the video stops, chat. Opinion. It's just the side quests, the side quests, the other things that are added onto it really do make it a lot, really do make it a lot better. 
the side quests make it a lot better. And then other vagary shit also is in there but somewhere. The side quests are all garb. Well, I shouldn't say they're all garbage. A lot of them are garbage. The best it gets is mediocre, though. Yep. And there's so few. There's like, what, 18 side quests in the whole game? 17, technically 18. One quest yeah. um, is optional in the main story, and that's Rescue from Paradise, which can be completed independently. <sighs> that's insane. For a big open-world game. A big open-world game, and there's, at most, if you're being generous, 18 side quests. I want to point out, Morrowind had something like 250 or 300 side quests. Not faction quests, side quests. Uh, Oblivion, yeah. I think, had over 100. I think even Skyrim had, like, up in the 80s or 90s or something like that. New Vegas had around 70. And again, New Vegas, 18 months. How the fuck does Fallout 3 have 18 side quests and Fallout 4 have, like, 32 or something? Yeah. Like, these are... Bethesda can afford to make big faction quest lines in Oblivion and Skyrim. Fucking Mages Guild, uh, Thieves Guild, Dark Brotherhood, Fighters Guild, um, and the Skyrim equivalents. Uh, why can't we have side factions in Fallout 3 and 4? Because the lack of content in terms of side quests, only having 18 side quests in Fallout 3 would offset or, sorry, would be offset by having, like, developed side factions you can join and do missions for. Mm-hmm. However, back to what I was saying, war that never changes, it is people and their ways that will never change. The same no, cycle you don't repeat, say. And people will always be fighting in, in constant conflict, not because of war in its ways, but because people in their ways. Oh my god, you've said it like a dozen times. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Damn, yeah. he thinks he just, like... He thinks he cracked the code. Yeah, he thinks yeah. He, he has, like, this big brain take on this thing when it's like, that's literally what they're saying. That is literally the point yes. of the saying. Yeah. But the whole thing, it, it feels like he just learned this for the first time and thinks he's the only person who's fucking ever realized this. Exactly. Oh That's why God. it's so funny. Warden it's like the, the thing that every Fallout fan knows and this dude thinks he just cracked the code. War <laughs> never changes actually means people never change. There will always be... Com Holy yeah, shit! Yeah, I, I wonder if, if another game not only said war never changes, but actually went into detail about the reasons war will always be, and that it's people at its heart, both good and bad, and, and like, oh my god, hmm, I wonder if there's another game that may have gone into fucking intricate detail in an ending about this. <laughs> oh, god. <laughs> one in character makes video. <laughs> I get that most people prefer Fallout New Vegas for so many good reasons, but at the end of the day, it comes down to personal preference. Also, so I don't yes, get Yes, completely... enjoyment will come down to personal preference. That I can agree with. Yeah. However, <laughs> New Vegas is objectively superior to Fallout 3 in every way. Quality-wise, yes. It, Fallout New Vegas is just better than Fallout 3. Fallout 1 and 2 are better than Fallout 3, objectively so. Yeah, Fallout, Fallout 3 at least beats 4, so hey, it won something. Fallout Tactics is better than fucking Fallout 3. Yeah. crucified by you guys fallout new vegas is my close second favorite because holy it's fallout new vegas how could i not and i mean it, it's still oh, yeah, yeah. again we, we i don't know why we, we keep going. having to say this but we don't 
care what game you like more personally. That's not an issue. It's when you try to use objective qualifiers for the game. Like, this is good. Fallout 3 is a good Fallout game. It's like, no, it, it's not. You can like it all you want. That's totally fine. But it's not a good Fallout game. It just isn't. Yep. So here, let's uh, let's continue because he's gonna have more to say on this this inane tangent. Mm -hmm. It's it's still a very good game, and I mean, yeah. Don't don't crucify me. I'll, I'll talk about it later. Just don't crucify me now. We you don't care. care. Shut the. Fuck the setting up. of Fallout Three is probably one of my favorite things. However, other people might find it pretty bland and might prefer the desert of fallout new vegas fallout 3 isn't the best game in the world but considering it was the first 3d fallout game i think it did a lot of things right the only thing i'm disagree there yeah i don't think it did anything right yeah i, I, I can't think, think of anything it did right i think the only thing that it did right was when if they fucked up so bad and then tried to snub Obsidian and Obsidian gave us New Vegas. <laughs> also, yeah, I like how he's like, oh, they. Some people would prefer the desert of New Vegas. It's like the the capital wasteland is a fucking desert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just annoyed at the whole fucking cruci don't crucify me thing because it it always comes down to this it, like I feel like the entire Fallout fandom is being gaslit to believe that New Vegas fans are the problem when like you say anything bad about Bethesda Fallout and you get a ton of shit for it. Yeah. Say anything about bad about Bethesda and you get a ton of shit for it. Well, because they always frame it as, oh, well, you just want to ruin my enjoyment. You just don't like that I like this game. And it's like, that's not the issue. That has never been the issue. Yes, it is my goal to personally make some person I've never heard about online stop liking this game. Because this random person I don't know, I totally want to ruin their fun and no one else's. It is all so very fucking tiresome. Mm-hmm. The only thing I'm trying to say in this video is if you have not played the game and you're not just a complete, like, I hate Fallout 3, I'm, I'm probably not going to change your mind if you, like, make yourself think you hate Fallout 3. Again, it's not about making yourself think you hate Fallout 3. You, if you look at it from an objective lens and you pay attention, you realize that Fallout 3 is a terrible game and isn't a Fallout game at all. Again, your own words have damned you here by saying that Fallout 3's story wasn't the point. You weren't supposed to focus on it or pay attention to it. That's fucking damning. This is the Fallout universe. This isn't Bethesda's usual Elder Scrolls nonsense. It would be like making a video talking about how Deep Space Nine is a masterpiece, and then saying the story doesn't matter, it's all about the cool laser battles. Yeah. Yep. God, I can't wait till we get to the cool laser battles, though. <laughs> <laughs> I really as, fucking can't, because Deep as, Space Nine does have some pretty fucking good ones. As soon as I'm done with Part 4, one of the things we need to watch is uh, DS9 Season 3. If you're someone new, and you're hearing all these things about how bad Fallout, just give it a try. If it's on sale, if it's not that big of a cost, just give it a try, and you might have fun. Here's my personal recommendation, as someone who has played every single quest in Fallout 3, and has experienced a great deal of this game. Don't fucking play it. Don't waste your money on it. Yeah, it is I a shallow get a... world with very little. If all you want to do is start up a big open world and just shoot things mindlessly, then Fallout Three actually might be the game for you. If you care I can't... even a slight iota about story or world building or anything of the sort, don't play it. 
Yeah, I can't personally recommend the game, but if you want to try it out, that's your prerogative. I just personally would say pass. I'd say if you had a choice, go get a fucking Happy Meal instead. You'll be <laughs> far better off and got some food for a meal. So Yeah, whatever Happy Meal toy they have right now is guaranteed to be more fucking well-designed than Fallout 3 is. Yeah. I'm going to fulfill my destiny now. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> All right. You will 100%. There's still a lot of problems, but it's still a Fallout game, and it's still no, it a isn't. good no, Fallout game. No, it's no, it isn't. Sure, and it's starting to show its age. But if you can maybe install a couple mods, just like Fallout New Vegas, you can have a lot of fun. That's the end of my rant. Fuck uh, off for insinuating that you need to install mods for New Vegas to be fun. Yeah, yeah okay, say, one... I don't need mods to make New Vegas fun. Fuck off with the whole, like, oh, but you could just download mods, guys. No, that's not a defense of the game. And secondly, he just lied. Like, for anyone in chat who hasn't understood what we've been saying yet, no, it is not a good Fallout game. He just blatantly lied to you. So if you're wanting to try out Fallout 3 for the first time, and you're expecting a genuine Fallout game like the other games in this series, that is not what you will be getting at all. By this own person's admission I... from earlier in the video, that is not what you will be getting at all. One thing I will say, I, I do think that's a bit harsh calling it a lie, because a lot of people do unintentionally conflate enjoyment with good versus bad. So I wouldn't consider it a lie if someone who's mixing up the term says it's a good game. Um, well, that's the thing. He would... didn't say it was... If he had just said it's a good game, I wouldn't have minded that much. But he said it's a good Fallout game. After and it cannot be... That Fallout 3, you, the story wasn't the point. You shouldn't focus on the story. Yeah. It's like, if you, if you I, can unironically say that, still, then it is not a good Fallout game. I, I agree with that. I'm still hesitant to call that an outright lie, though, because a lie is an intentional mistruth. Okay, well, then I will say this. Uh, he is absolutely fucking retarded and doesn't understand what a Fallout game is. And he just lied by accident. There you he's go. wrong. He's wrong. Yeah, yeah, he's wrong. Yeah, there you go. A falsehood, not a lie. There you go. Fallout 3, guys. If you guys like the video, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Alright, that's probably it then. Yep, that is it. Yep, that is it. Cool. I, I don't hate this guy, but my god, what a terrible fucking video. All right, we've got another sort of quick video to do. Yep. Okay. Everybody ready? Yeah. Yep. All right. The top five reasons Starfield will be the best game Bethesda has ever made. Oh, whoa. Now, I, I jokingly wanted to say that's not a hard bar to pass, but considering they haven't gone back up to Morrowind's level yet, they're like, mm, okay. There, there's there a, is yeah. a bit of a bar. I also like the difference between the video title and what's on screen right now. The top five reasons Starfield will be the best Bethesda uh, sorry, the best game Bethesda has ever made. Starfield could be a masterpiece. Five reasons why. So those are yeah. two very different things. Well, I one guess is uh, not it has that. I... No, the, well, the the one title has potential. It could be. This one is a certainty. It will be. No, I I agree with that. But it's also the realization of. Well, if all their games are 1s out of 10s, and then this is a 2 out of 10, then that would technically still be 
an accurate statement that it's the best. The problem is Bethesda yeah. games aren't all two out of tens. I'd yeah, say, they have Morrowind. Yeah, Morrowind and Oblivion. But I'm holding up Morrowind because it's got to pass Morrowind. Morrowind is the best game they've ever made. Yeah, I agree. Grab jump is ready. I love, I love this part. It's absolutely packed with great games. It's pretty, it's pretty hard to stand out. Now, you'd think that any game by the creators of massive hits like Skyrim and Fallout would easily be at the top of the most in It bugs me that he says Fallout. And not yeah. Fallout 3 and 4. Because, again, they didn't make Fallout. They just made the bastardized versions 3 and 4. And here's the other thing. If you actually objectively measure their games, they're really bad at making games. Like, really bad at it. They're good at making games people enjoy, but not good at making games that have high quality to their content. Yeah. Yeah, to the point where people unironically praise when the games are broken and buggy, because that's part of the charm. Yeah, I hate that insanity. shit so much. I do too. That No other game company ever could get away with that of like... Oh, well, it being broken and non-functioning makes the game better. Like, no other game company could ever get away with that. But because it's Bethesda, they just get an automatic pass for some reason. Yeah. But after Fallout 76, a Ooh, lot of people... it skipped really bad for me there. Skeptical. Oh, did it? Yeah. Massive hits like Skyrim and Fallout would easily be at the top of the most anticipated list. But after Fallout 76, a lot of people are pretty skeptical of Todd Howard and his next massive RPG. After the big Starfield Direct that recently took place, I think Bethesda made it very clear. Starfield is going to be every bit the epic return to form that we were all hoping it would be. So here, mm -hmm. so here are the top five reasons. Big oh, no. doubt on that one. Big, big disagree there. That that direct actually made me more worried. They yeah. had moments in there where I was excited for a second or two, and then it just got so much worse. Yeah, before the before we saw the direct footage and stuff, I was not that optimistic but i was at least a little bit like ah, well they 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 might have learned their lesson they might have improved the game and, and there's no then we saw the direct stuff themselves so. yeah then we saw the direct stuff and it's like oh my god they can't even do traits correctly or background yeah or and the or combat shooting. looked like shit yeah yeah the fucking the fucking 70 degree 80 degree bullet shit is back from Fallout 3, apparently. Just a guy from Alabama. I don't know if I got your super chat or not. And because it scrolled off screen, I don't know what the message is anymore. Yeah, I wouldn't have no idea. Start um, doing $2 ones so you can actually leave a message and it'll stay with the thing. Because we have that new tab so we can always get to it now. Um, yeah, there's also stuff like the literal... We talked about it at the start of the stream, but the literal Space Cowboy and the, the Snake Faction that talks with, like over pronouncing their s's it's like yeah. yeah that's such stupid shallow writing that is exactly what i expect from ml yep that's why starfield should be on your sh of absolute must play games this to the end because i have a pretty fun bonus reason that you don't want to miss Starting off with number one, just Starfield agree. is the first new IP for Bethesda Softworks in over two decades. That's right. I was still a little... Yeah, but again, you're talking about decades anything. of experience. When, when their decades of experience are shitting out low quality, low effort, just drivel, sure, it sells well, 
but if you think about it at all, if you're a fan of good writing or, you know, storytelling or building of, like, world world building or anything like that, Jesus Christ, they are some of the worst games made. They are, like, infamous how bad they are. Yeah, especially when you consider they're literally just cranking out shitty sequels to previous games. That's all it is. And it That's all they've them, been doing. And it takes them years and years to do it? Like, what the hell? Yeah, years and years to make utter shit. When then you look at New Vegas, which had eighteen months, if you're being generous, and no, no, if you're not being generous, or if you're not being generous, yeah, you're right. Uh, if you're not being generous, and they have like three times the content, yeah. Because if you're being generous to them, then you're also shaving off a couple months for the Gold Master creation and printing. Yeah. I, yeah, I just don't see what... Oh, this is a new IP. I, I don't see how that's a big positive. The strongest yeah. argument you have for that is there's no prior lore for them to fuck up like they do with Elder Scrolls and Fallout. But yeah. as we've seen from Fallout 4, and I guess Skyrim as well, Bethesda has no problem shitting over their own writing in the game they're making when they put in, like, the shit they're shitting over. You know? Yep. Yep. Like, yep. the amount of insane contradictions in Fallout 4 is absurd. It's it's crazy. The fact that you can not only fuck up the previous game's lore, but then also not even remain consistent in your in, in the same game? Yeah. To that level, it's just so ridiculously bad. That takes a special talent to the point where you can't you you contradict your own game, the one you're currently in. I was still a little kid the last time Bethesda Bethesda rolled out a new universe for us to explore in 2008 with their grand reimagining of the Fallout series. That doesn't count as a new universe, you... Yeah, they took they someone else's. They they poached yeah. the license. Yeah, they, they used their lawyers to browbeat the shit out of the license holder. Like, they did not take that kindly from Interplay at all. Yeah, and they, they of fucked course, them out of that contract so hard. Yeah, and of course they had to shit all over Troika because Troika wanted it. Troika was made up of original Black Isle devs. They wanted the Fallout IP. They put up their money for it. I think uh, a Troika Fallout game would have not only saved Troika, but just the Fallout games in general. Yeah. Because we wouldn't have gotten this garbage. <laughs> Deus Vault Infidel. You made this? I made this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, don't you know, it's so smart of Bethesda that the name Fallout has a double meaning. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Oh my god. <laughs> Something someone actually said. Yeah. They read the okay, we have to pause. We have to yeah, pause. I was about to say, I was yeah, about to say yeah, we're yeah. going to get hit with UMG yeah, anyway. Do, uh, do, um... Mute it real quick, and I'll just play forward. Uh, okay, yeah. Ready. Oh, wow, it, it, literally right there. Okay, Alrighty, unmute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for a second I thought he was going to play, like, a bunch of clips with that music in the background. Yeah. All No turned out to be massively successful. And massively successful, not a good game. Yeah, again, popularity does not equal quality. Yeah. Otherwise, McDonald's would be the only restaurant in existence. Mm hmm. Even Rider Scrolls for some players. But why would that make you excited for Starfield? Experience. Those 20 years have seen Bethesda release generational defining games like. Again, I hate the fact you're using Metacritic, which is one of the most biased fucking. Just, just one of the most biased websites out there, but also the fact that fucking journos slather all over Bethesda's nuts constantly. To the point where Jason Schreier's dumbass defends them to his grave because they're his sacred cow. 
I also think it's incredibly depressing that Skyrim is considered a generation defining game. Yeah, that's yeah, super sad. If Skyrim defines your generation, your generation was dog shit. It's yep. like Lord of the Rings is a generation defining movie. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Those movies were fucking epic. But yep. imagine I, I'm just trying to think of a movie that's like really crap and me Imagine if the spirit was a fucking what's called a generation defining movie. <laughs> <laughs> And if you've seen, if any of you have seen The Spirit, you know how fucking dog shit that movie is. That's another movie I want to make a video on at some point. I fucking hate that piece of shit. Amusement is a generation-defining movie. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, if only. Glass I... Onion is a generation-defining movie. Oh God, no, please. <laughs> like the Elder Scrolls Five. And while, yeah, it's also seen them release a big flop with Fallout 76, I think... And Blades. And Fallout Shelter. Like, they've done a lot of really shit games. A lot of them. And I mean, those are shit games where even the Bethesdards think they're shit, right? Yep. Like, Hell, even Fallout 4, a lot of people turned around on that game where they liked it initially and then went back on that and was like, ah, actually, no. Pretty garbage. Yeah, like the, obviously you do still have its diehard defenders, but there's a lot less of them than for like I would say Fallout Three. Yeah. Really important in making Starfield their best game to date. See lesson in what to do right and what they can carry forward. And no, it is not. No, years. no, it's a lesson Jesus in how Christ. to fuck everything up. There's a reason other developers haven't taken the Skyrim model. Okay. Yeah, no, there is nothing it's really good. really bad. Nobody wants to emulate its combat. Nobody wants to emulate its dialogue system. Nobody wants to emulate its choice systems. There's it's nothing dragons, about nothing. Skyrim. Yeah, no, nobody wants to do their version of dragons. In fact, we're, the, the crazy thing is, with Skyrim existing, we are actually seeing a revival of the CRPG. Like, holy shit. That's something I didn't think would come back, but no, CRPGs are now main course menu items, boys. Like, yeah. and I don't just mean from Alcat, but Larian Studios. Like, holy fuck. It's just crazy. Yeah. I, I, I still love the fact that, like, people looked at Elden Ring and was like, yeah, this is basically just a better Skyrim. <laughs> like, this is what Skyrim, or, like, yeah, this is what Skyrim could have been. I don't know if it could have been, but it's what it should have been. Yeah. I feel that love and Fallout 7 to do and what players don't want out of a big want out of a big Bethesda RPG. All of that player feedback from years of gamers living in these worlds has most definitely shaped how Bethesda has approached Starfield, and it definitely shows. There seems I, to be so that, much. I that. fucking this doubt that because they I, never learn their lessons. They always double down. Look what they did with Fallout 4. No, no, no. no. Or, or Fallout 76 I, I think, after Fallout 4, I should say. I think he's correct here, but he's not correct for the right reasons. That's why they're showing vapid, empty wastelands of nothingness. That's why they make meaningless statements like, you see that moon? That moon's real. You can go to that moon. It, again, they've learned their lesson that their audience are such sheep and are so filled with cope that they see this vast, empty, nothing wasteland ahead in front of them. They're like, so cool. It's like, yeah, in that God, regard, you just jangle keys in front of these people and they'll just hand you money. Yeah. In that regard, I would say, yeah, they, I guess they did learn something, but they, they took, they learned the wrong lessons. I would say. Yeah. Now, it's for actual but, feedback from the community? No, they shit all over the community. They think the community are idiots. They attack the yeah, community constantly. They hate the community. They hate feedback. Look at all the stuff people said about Fallout 4 and what they could do better in the next game. And then they made Fallout 76, which literally just doubled down on all of the bad stuff that people criticized. Not they do that. not take feedback. Not just that, but not interested in talking about realism in a game with talking mutants. And yeah. Animals. Yep. yep. And then every time somebody brought up something about Fallout 76, they would just write it off as like, oh, shut the fuck up, stupid. They even 
ban Ugh. people permanently who are trying to help them with bug fixes. Yeah, they banned people for trying to bug fix the game for them and shit like that. It's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. Also, since uh, we what just... did? Go what ahead. was that dumb thing Pete Hines said about? Um, because they they did the Brotherhood thing and people were like, what the fuck? That makes no sense. How the hell can the Brotherhood be here and like still be whatever? Like, and then they did the satellite bullshit. What did Pete Hines say again? He said something really so, fucking stupid. We we care about the lore. Um, we try to stay true to it. Something, some. You know what? I have it in a folder because I used it in a video. Give me a second here. All right. Yeah, because I know he said something really dumb, and it's like that right there. Just that's all you need right there. Like Fallout seventy six. It's an absolute dumpster fire. People rightfully criticizing it now that they're updating the game with this brotherhood stuff and even after all this stuff after all the stuff with fallout 4 all the backlash with fallout 76 all all the lies that were exposed all the stuff that um oh well well, what is it again all the stuff that came with the game if you bought the like special edition uh you know all that stuff and then this people criticize the brotherhood stuff and he says this dumb shit right here um, I'm going to get this up on screen quickly, copy link, then I'm going to read it out. So just give me a second here. There we go. Alright, so. In fact, Pete Hines recently spoke with GameSpot about this very question. Our developers take things like lore and canon seriously. And if they're going to do something, they're going to make sure that there's a real and defensible reason for it. He says, We have proven with Elder Scrolls games we're willing to say, Well, lots of people say things happen one way, and the opposite or something else could entirely be true. So there's no question that we've gone back to change things to fit what developers have wanted to do, and not be beholden to something that somebody wrote 20 years ago, even in franchises re- bleh. Even in franchises we created like the Elder Scrolls. Right, that's where the fucking beholden to something that was wrote 20 years ago. Yeah, that's where that came from. But it's the contradictory bullshit that you always hear from Pete Hines. It's not DLC, it's not microtransactions, it's like mini DLC. Well, that's the worst of both worlds, you piece of shit. But, yep. um, here, let me just bring this up again on my own screen so I can uh, read that part. Oh shit, I closed it. Um, our developers take things like lore and canon seriously. If they're going to do something, they're going to make sure there's a real and defensible reason for it. We're not going to be beholden to something somebody wrote 20 years ago. Yeah. Like, like it's immediately. Yeah, immediately contradicts himself. Uh, and, also, and then, of course, there was the thing that I kept referencing that pissed me off so much was the, um... Oh, well, we're not going to sell stuff on the Creation Club that's already in the older games because we wouldn't make our fans pay for stuff that, you know, that they got for free years ago. And then they did exactly that. And when people fucking criticized him for it, he was like, it's our property. We have the right to do whatever we want with our property. Mm -hmm. But it's also the whole thing of um, they're going to if they're going to do something, they're going to make sure there's a real and defensible reason for it. Then we have Kid in a Fridge. Yep. Another I would, I would genuinely just be like, oh yeah, what's your real and defensible reason for Kid in a Fridge? Oh, well, I'll tell you what that real and defensible reason is, uh, Such, Not interested in talking about realism in a game with talking mutants and ghouls. be so much that they have learned from past games that Bethesda is using to make sure Starfield is a return to form for the studio. Just That's looking at the recent deep dives movements over past Bethesda games. And this leads me right into number two, improved gunplay. Ha! <laughs> yeah, the gunplay looks really bad. Improved gunplay? I'm sorry. It looks... Fallout 4 had improved gunplay. This looks like it's going backwards. This looks like it's going back to Fallout 3's gunplay, which was atrociously bad. Yeah. How can you say improved gunplay? No, just watch. You're just going to have to watch. They, again, this whole video is supreme levels of cope. 
played Fallout knows that gunplay just hasn't been Bethesda's strong suit. And Skyrim showed that they just really need to work on the feel of combat. They seem to have taken this challenge on in a big way with Starfield. And the resulting gameplay looks phenomenal. The gunplay looks way smoother and more engaging than anything they have done in the past. As he's one tapping everything. And again, this fucking awful revolver that doesn't spin or anything. It doesn't move. It just... It's independent cylinder. It, again, this this gun is just the most like the embodiment of just shit. Yeah, that is it doesn't make any sense. Game. How do the bullets get from the cylinder into the single barrel? Yeah, that's on the bottom cylinder, by the way. Yeah, it, it doesn't make any sense. Doesn't rotate at all. I didn't even if it doesn't rotate, it's not rotating. Hold on. Yeah, it's really bad. Taken on in a big way with Starfield, and the resulting gameplay looks phenomenal. The gunplay looks way smoother and more engaging than anything oh they God. have done in the past. Yeah, it doesn't shit. move, but somehow that all of the bullets. So shit. Yeah, yeah again, all the bullets go to the single quality. barrel. Their usual quality of no quality control whatsoever, just complete dog shit. Uh, and the shooting doesn't even look that good. It it looks like right here. It looks basically the same as Fallout 4 right now, but we know it gets worse because we've seen the P90. Mm. The past. Guns shoot with actual weight and feel visceral. Unlateral. Unlike most... You don't know that! Even have overhaul... <laughs> it's, again, this, this video is cope. This video is That is cope. pure what... cope. How can you say it feels weighty and has impact when... You yeah, haven't watch, even played the game. Watch the, watch the footage he specifically used when he's talking about weighty and impact, too. This most of the weapons in Fallout, and they animation and movement system. That's, they don't even react in a low gravity to getting shot! Look at this! Yeah, until, they until they die! Oh my god. How are you going to say weighty and visceral for this? Mm -hmm. Oh my god, play some fucking Trepang 2 or something. Jesus. Oh, God, yes, please. Also, I was going to mention it earlier, and I forgot because we got talking about stuff, but every time I see the aliens from this game, like the wildlife, I am just dreading this more and more because they all look like absolute shit. I, I dread it because the first thing that comes to my mind is always the No Man's Sky launch. Yeah. yeah. I don't think this will be a No Man's Sky tier launch, but... Jesus Christ. I don't know, man. It's Bethesda. It could be it could be worse for all we know. It could yeah. be, but I just I don't expect it to be that bad. Uh one dollar from just a guy from Alabama. Thank you. Id Software is a part of Bethesda. Why can't they take notes from them on how to model believable guns? That would take we're effort. Not, we're not gonna be beholden to the experience of a much greater <laughs> dev. Yeah, I don't get why they can't just take a couple of like devs that worked on the gunplay in those games and just be like hey can you come over here and help us with this it, it's not that hard but they won't even do that apparently you make it so our gunplay doesn't suck ass and make it so our weapon models actually look good especially when that's been like their weak point like their biggest like one of their biggest weak points even among like diehard Bethesda fans is that their gunplay or really any of their combat combat stuff is just awful. It's always been so bad. Morrowind gets a bit of a pass, but well, because Morrowind actually had the, the combat change based on how skilled you were. Yeah, exactly. And which is why I give it a pass. But like everything else, it's so bad and they've always been that way. So how have you not learned your lesson by this point to bring someone in who knows what they're doing. You kind of did that with Fallout 4, but then never again. And even then, Fallout 4, who boy, there was still some pretty big issues with the gunplay in that. The fucking shell casings. What the fuck? Yeah, it's not great. Yeah, I swear the shell casings are like, their kryptonite, whether it's coming out of a fucking revolver, like it's a semi-automatic like Glock or something, hmm. or the the fucking assault rifle, where it comes out of the right side, but still, but they go left over the gun somehow. Oh my god, how do you fuck that up? 
I wonder if the model was supposed to be mirrored from what it is. So, like, w w the version we have is actually the mirrored version. And what it was supposed to be originally had the shells come out from the left side so they fly left. But even then, that wouldn't work because if you did mirror it, then, like, your character would be holding the gun in the same position. So the bullets would still be... Oh, God, it just doesn't make any sense either way. Yeah, no, they just completely fucked it somehow. I don't know how they managed to do it that badly. Not to mention the gun itself just looks really not good. It's like an amalgamation of, like, three different guns that just don't go together. Yeah. environment if you shoot while flying with your boost pack the iner the inertia from the blast will have always been pretty open ended with how you approach with how you approach combat but in starfield the skipping shit is pissing me the fuck off yeah that's getting annoying but also what he just said here i'll let you replay it so you can hear what he said but it is yeah the fact that he's praising this as like some amazing thing it's like man this kind of shit right here is like almost 10 years behind the curve. Like, there was games that were doing this years ago. Yep. There were games that came out over a decade before Fallout 4 that did their guns, at least in some aspects, better than Fallout 4. Oh yeah, for sure. But here he's talking about, um, oh, well, when you shoot, you actually get propelled backwards when in 0G, and it's like, my guy... There have been games that have done shit like that years ago. Like, this is not new groundbreaking gameplay by any means. In fact, that seems to be like Bethesda's um, MO is that they're always like five to ten years behind everyone else. Yeah. Then they just take ideas from everybody else. Yeah. Like, Fallout 3, when it came out, Call of Duty was already a, like, bedrock gaming, you know, like, it, it was it was already out there, you know, it, it was a yeah, again, there's big a popular they, game already. They held and, it because they wanted to be the next Call of Duty for a reason. Yeah, so, and the fact that you were so far behind Call of Duty and the gunplay in that regard is just... I don't even know what to say. It's just abysmal. It's unacceptable. The game has been pretty open-ended with how you approach combat, but in Starfield, the variety of weapon choices looks staggering. If you want to fly what overhead and do a bombing run with mines, go ahead. Or maybe you want to stay at a distance and snipe with your completely modded out sniper. But that's not, and of course, you can throw a suppressor on and- That's not a bombing and, run, you toss down a single mine. That's yeah. also not yeah. what mines are used for. Yeah. Couldn't you also do that in Fallout 4 with that really stupid perk where you like eject the fusion core yeah. out of your back? So if you just put a jetpack on your power armor, you could literally do exactly that. Yeah. So that's not even new. That's base like the only difference is you're dropping mines instead of a fusion core. But at least the fusion core had a really big explosion, like a mini nuke. So at least it made some amount of sense in that regard. Here it's literally just you're dropping mines and hoping that they walk close enough to set it off. You throw mines, just like in Fallout 4. Yeah. It broke new ground! <laughs> yeah. I was tempted to do a quick video in August uh, going over the Starfield uh, Direct again. And, like, just putting in stuff like that. It broke new ground for, like, basic shit. Yeah. It's just mm. criticizing how bad it looks in a more compact way than a seven-hour stream suppressor on and do some metal gear inspired inspired stealth runs over the combat of any bethesda game the improved the improved combat uh, that is That's... not a hard bar 
Yeah, that that is not a hard bar, and if that's what this is, that is a big indictment of all of their games. Yeah. That is definitely a welcome change, change, and something that has me super exploring the world. And exploring is something we will be doing a ton of, because the third reason... Oh my god, it's the fucking Fallout 4 knife animation! Did you see that? I've never used knives in Fallout 4, so... Uh, so, basically all of the knives in Fallout 4 use the exact same poking animation, and that was literally the exact same animation. It was exactly the same. Now, which, again, just makes me think that this is... They, they just took Fallout 4 and set it in space and just made some, like visual changes to make it look like a different game. Now, the problem isn't wouldn't necessarily be the fact that the animation is used over again, but the knife poke, the little dainty e looks so bad. <laughs> yeah, it does not look good. It didn't look good in Fallout 4, and it does not look good here. This, this isn't like a Kratos getting in the thing, getting in a boat, and it's the same exact animation. Well, if the animation was good the first time, why would you need to reanimate him getting into a boat? We should play the knife stabbing again, too, because that did look really lame. Was, you made the perfect sound. It's like... Yeah. Stabbing you. That's how people described it all the way back when Fallout 4 first came out, was just like a... Eh. And super excited to get hands-on. Exploring is something we will be doing a ton of. Because the third reason <laughs> exact the same animation the best Bethesda RPG to date is just how insanely massive it is. It's over a but yeah, like a oh like, my god, did you hear what he just said? For it's good, fuck best, off. best RPG because it's big. And again, oh my god, for this single biome wasteland, no life, nothing to explore planet right here, right now. You oh, can, it's yeah. so you can set a really good RPG on, like, a relatively small island, and it could be a great game. Having a lot of space to move around in doesn't necessarily make it good. Nor does yeah. it improve its RPG elements inherently. I like how <laughs> Admiral Tony Donning says, Pagan, nobody played Fallout 4 with knives. Nobody would notice. And then I, <laughs> I immediately think of Angry Joe's Fallout 4 review where he would not shut the fuck up about his melee build and how it was the best thing ever, where it was literally just him poking people with combat knives. Eh. And how it was like the most amazing thing ever. And in, of course it would play the exact same eh animation. <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, I, I like I like uh like we said reusing animation not the problem my issue with it is that it to me it just shows that they just took fallout 4 and reskinned it so i don't have a high hopes yeah one dollar from just the guy from alabama thank you oh my god starfield uh has you move backwards when you shoot your gun in zero g Call of Duty Ghost said that in 2013. That game was asked too. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah like I'm saying, we it's don't know not a new Starfield thing. Starfield will be asked. We don't know that. Yeah, we don't but, know. If, there's a lot of bad signs. Yeah, yeah, there's lots of red flags, klaxons blaring. But we I'm don't genuinely know. hoping we we're say. wrong. Like I'm genuinely hoping when this game comes out and we play it, we can actually come back and say, you know what, we were wrong. They actually yeah. did learn their lesson. This was actually a really good game. Hopefully they keep this this trend, this upward trend, and all their newer games, you know, learn from this. That's what I'm hoping we'll end up saying, because that would actually be a nice change of pace and would actually give me some fucking hope again, and maybe I can actually start looking forward to video games again. <laughs> but I don't have high hopes. Yeah. Because the choice, though, it's not ours, it's yours. 
Even the most dedicated players will probably never run out of planets to explore and things to do. Even the most dedicated players will never run out of quests and things to do in Skyrim. Even the most mm. dedicated player will never run out of quests in Skyrim and Fallout 4 when we have a radiant quest system that infinitely generates generic garbage for you to do. You yeah. will never run out of planets to explore in Starbound when we program the game to generate literally f fucking thousands of them when they're all reskins of each other. There, there's like seven planet types or something, but there's there's tens of thousands of them that you cannot go explore. Isn't it fun? Hey, look. This is the 37th forest planet I found. Isn't that cool? It looks very similar, but not quite to all the rest of them. Oh my god, this is a 500th desert planet I found. That is super duper cool and exciting and unique. It's, it's totally different from all the other desert planets. Yeah, but unfortunately, despite all these planets that I'm going to, there was only a limited number of uh, fauna in the game. So they basically all have the exact same fauna on every single planet. So What do you mean you're getting bored of exploring all the planets in Starbound? What's that? You've found your fucking 3,000th fucking ice planet? Well, go searching for more. You can find more ice planets if you want. You can explore them. There's so much to do. That thing I just posted. Read that for a second. God, that's that's so good. My hat is off to whoever earned that ban. You sir are a legend. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> you have been banned from Halo, the Master Chief Collection Community Hub. You have been banned from the hub, from that whole thing, by a forum moderator for your post in Disability Pride Month. So glad there's a 343 shill month. Ban reason. Show basic courtesy and respect. This is a permanent ban. Yeah. Oh my god, that is hilarious. Holy shit. They are yeah, so absolutely. fucking ass mad. Alright, let's get this over with. I need to turn my air conditioning on. And if they do, I'm sure the modding community will make sure there is... Oh, fuck off. I'm so oh, sick boy. of fucking shit cope argument for me. Fucking faggots. Mm. Guys, guys, even if the game is bad, it doesn't matter. The The modders will fix it. The game is good because modders. Oh, my God. I'm so sick of this cope argument of, oh, well, these games aren't meant to be actual games. They're meant to be modding platforms so we can make the games we want. Like, shut up. Remember, if any game you play is bad, just mod it and it'll be good. <sighs> it's sad, too, because I genuinely really like mods and the modding community. So do I. But it's just I just really cool hate. argument that we always hear. Yeah, I just hate this constant cope argument of... Well, these games are actually good because they're modding platforms. So, therefore, it's actually a very it's, good quality game. It's not even just the modding platform thing, because I do see that one somewhat rarely. The one I see more often is, oh, mods will fix it. If there's a problem with something, you can use mods. Hey, is the environment a little too boring for you? Well, mods will make it better. None of enemy variety? Well, there's new enemies added with mods. Mods are the solution to every... You know what? Why don't the game developers just release buff. a fucking game engine like Unity and allow everyone to make their own games in it and call those mods? <laughs> fucking Game-breaking bugs? Well, the developers can't be ours to do it, but mods will take care of it for you. Yeah. I, I hate it so much. It's one thing when mods are used to, like, improve 
or enhance your experience with a game that's already good. Like, you, you don't need mods for the game to be good, but they can enhance your experience. That's nice. That's that's why I like New Vegas' modding community so much. But then you get shit like this and Fallout 3 and Fallout 4 where people are just like, oh, but it's fine. The mods will fix it. It doesn't matter that the game is shit. The mods will fix it. <sighs> Shut up. I'm just going to state this for the record. Anyone who uses mods will fix it as an argument for criticism against the game or a potential disappointment of a game has sub-50 IQ. Yeah. Honestly. Plenty more to come. For 1,000 planets in the game, Starfield is absolutely stuffed with places to explore and things to find. Not all of these. Are oh boy, we'll Only see. Only a hundred of those planets will actually be like, and I don't even believe a hundred. I think that these full of shit there. Only a hundred of the planets are going to be apparently handcrafted or touched in any way. All the rest of them are going to be procedurally generated. I don't even believe that they did a hundred. It's fucking well, Bethesda. They're lazy as shit. Remember, Fallout Three has two hundred endings. I had someone exactly. on Twitter trying to argue that that's actually true, and the statement was misinterpreted. That the 200 endings thing is, like, all the different combinations of the end slides you can get. When the combinations are good, neutral, and evil karma, poison the water or don't poison the water, activate the purifier yourself or let Sarah Lyons do it, and then four for certain quests, nuking Megaton, burning Herald, helping um, the slaves at Temple of the Union, and there's one other I can't remember. Like, all those combined together don't reach 200. But even if they did, that doesn't make up for the fucking fact that that is pathetic. Especially yeah, when that... four of those have no narration at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is the most, like, technicality of technicalities ever oh there's 200 endings because there's slight variations in the slides that mean absolutely nothing most of them don't even have fucking narrations see, that go to them see if you complete the main story with good car sorry let me change that slightly if you complete the main story with evil karma don't poison the water and uh activate the purifier yourself that's a different ending than if you did all those things and nuked Megaton and you got the slide without narration that shows the nuke going off. Those are two completely different endings. No, fuck off. Toaster yeah, no, bath. that's shit. <laughs> of course, not all of these worlds will be brimming with life with life or exciting adventures. No shit. That around 10 or so percent of the worlds have active life. But even with that information, they have said that Starfield has more hand-built worlds and cities than all of their previous games combined. Okay, so you uh, realize if they have two planets with, like, handcrafted combat, or sorry, content, that's more planets than they've done in all their previous games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the previous games combined, so... Uh, Arena, Daggerfall, Morrowind, Oblivion, Skyrim, there's five... Uh, Fallout 3, 4, and let's say 76, that's 8. So, 9 yeah. planets, that's more than all of them combined. Yep. Wow. Super, super, like, yeah, that's a super exciting number. 9 handcrafted planets. And, like, I, I just need to make clear, too... If you're talking about 9 full planets, and yeah, that's a lot of content... But even one full uh, plan, one full planet is more than Bethesda has ever done before. The problem isn't that there's a lot of handcrafted game space. The pl the problem is they're selling this as over like I shouldn't say over. They're selling it as one thousand planets to explore when you're probably going to have an area probably bigger than the map of Fallout seventy six that's actually handcrafted. Okay, just to be sure that we're not being unfair here, is it just like? Could it mean like, um, in terms of handcrafted co like content, 
they're talking about specifically like non radiant quests from their previous game. So that would include stuff like all the side missions and stuff as well. I would assume so. So it could possibly be somewhere in like the hundreds, maybe. Well, here's the thing. Um, he, he didn't mention quests. He mentioned, let, let's hear that again. Cities. He said he mentioned handcrafted cities and planets. That's all he did. Cities and planets. Then yeah. you're talking about a lot of fucking cities if you're talking about all those games combined. Because Morrowind had a bunch of cities. Oblivion had a bunch of cities. Skyrim had a bunch of cities. Arena and Daggerfall had um, a bunch of cities. Yeah, but none of those are handcrafted. Really. None of those are handcrafted. True. Okay, we'll exclude Arena and Daggerfall for the sake of this. But even taking the three most recent Elder Scrolls games, those are already a lot of cities, like, more than they've ever done before in a game. And, like, considering their track record, I'm not expecting those cities to be very good. I I have a feeling that this is bullshit, this is another just straight-up lie, and that Marketing they've only... Marketing bullshit. Yeah, they've only handcrafted maybe three worlds at most. Yeah. And in that, probably three cities for each, and that's it. Mm. Yeah, that's maybe. more fitting with Bethesda's lazy, really shit style. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, you know, it's like almost every time they've released one of these major games, they've had some absolute bullshit statement, you know, of like 16 times the detail, 200 endings. You know, that kind of shit. And it's like every time. So it's like there's no reason to assume that this isn't also that. It's just a part of the pattern. One dollar from just a guy from Alabama. Thank you. If Starfield ends up being good, I would wonder why they were apparently trying to sabotage their own marketing. Yeah. Yeah, because this is the thing. A lot of people are getting mindlessly hyped up for this without looking at it critically. Looking at that direct critically, there's a lot of fucking red flags. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if Whatever it ends up being good, I'm going to be... <laughs> yeah, I am going to be very surprised by, like... Yeah, if it ends up being good, it's like, yeah, what, what was the marketing then? And the planets that don't have active life could still be worth exploring for certain resources and base building. Not only is the amount of places we can go to absolutely insane, but the density of these areas is next level as well. So, for the yeah, base yeah. building <sighs> thing, I, I feel like I need to say this. Base building needs to be really fucking good in order for people to want to engage with it a lot. Like, sure, sometimes a mediocre system will draw people in. A lot of people did like the settlement building in uh, Fallout 4. But why should I get involved in base building in Starfield when I could do that in a whole bunch of other games? When I could do it in uh, Minecraft or um, the Planet Crafter or uh, Subnautica or Seven Days to Die or Valheim? Or a whole bunch of other games. Yeah, and a lot of those are games where you have a lot, probably a lot more control over what you can build. Because from what I've seen of this game, it the, the stuff you can build looks very modular. So it's like, why would I want to build these modular outposts on every single planet I go to? Yeah. What is Bethesda bringing to the table? That's going to make it worthwhile for me to go onto a random planet to build on. Is essentially what I'm getting at here. Because um, I don't remember them mentioning a lot about base building in the direct. It was kind of brushed over very quickly if I remember correctly. Yeah. yeah. Which is odd because you would think after Fallout 4 they would have really leaned heavily into that. And been like we, we improved it even more since Fallout 4. But it's if anything, it looks like it's a step down. It looks like they really made a lot of it modular, like the ships. Which, okay. 
which is really does not look like a lot of fun. I, I don't really want to just build a modular base, especially on every single planet that I visit, just for the sake of building one. If what we recently saw in the Starfield Direct was any indication, level of depth and detail that make past Bethesda RP that make past Bethesda RPGs look trivial by comparison. Long story. I disagree with that. It looks about on par for the most part. That <sighs> I don't know. Or, there's one or two towns that look decent, but we don't know like how deep any of that goes. Because this is the thing. There are some areas in these games, like if you show off selective things, where it does look deep at a glance. Um, mm -hmm. An example I'm putting in the part four of the Fallout 4 analysis is there's this really neat detail in Vault 81 where um, the, the half that was the disease researchers that all died, there's a set of lockers with folded up uniforms on top of them and flowers where... These lockers were clearly used as a uh, coffin for people who died. It's like, okay, you know what? That's actually kind of a neat, like, detail to put into the world. But then you have situations like, oh, here's a raider at a grave, and then he attacks because they didn't build anything around it. It was just a generic encounter. Or, worse yet, for the quest order up, if you approach in power armor... One of the characters will uh, acknowledge that you're in power armor. But in the USS Constitution quest, if you side with the scavengers, they will fucking betray you even if you're still wearing fully decked out power armor. And they don't even seem to acknowledge or realize it. Mm, yeah, that's pretty bad. Yeah. I guess on the surface, I could say that these cities and towns look a lot better than some of the, their previous works, but that's on the surface. We haven't played the game yet. We don't know how far this stuff goes. It could literally just be like the entrance to the city looks good, but everything else is shallow as fuck. Yeah. This is the facade put up front, and when you look behind the curtain, it's going to be a fucking another world as shallow as uh, Fallout 4 or Skyrim. Or fucking mm -hmm. Fallout 3. Long story short, there should be no shortage of places to go and meaningful things to do in Starfield. Okay, so... Depends on your definition of meaningful. Radio yeah. bullshit is not meaningful. Yeah. Welcome back. Yeah. I'm getting super fucked tired, though. No shortage of meaningful things to do. You would need a lot of handcrafted quests for that. And I genuinely, like, there, there's no telling what's going to be in this game. With the Fallout games, they can barely get enough quests in them to be, like, significant. Elder Scrolls games, they tend to do decently with it. In, in terms of quantity, not quality, obviously. They're going to need both for this to be good. Although I guess I would prefer, like, ten really well done quests on the tier of, like, Come Fly With Me or G.I. Blues, as opposed to a hundred quests on the tier of Kid in a Fridge or Here Kitty Kitty. Or Order Up. Feel. Okay, so, there's tons to explore, but what about how you act the game? Well, the fourth reason Starfield will be amazing has that covered. Not only is the gameplay and gunplay overhauled, but the skill trees and the way they help the player engage with gameplay are Security. While the standardized dig digital locking mechanism is renowned for its security, any code can be broken with proper training. Rank 1. You can attempt to hack advanced locks and two auto attempts can be banked. You can attempt to hack expert locks and uh, three auto attempts can be banked. Rings now turn blue when the pick can be slotted. You can attempt to hack master level locks and four auto attempts can be banked. Expend a digit pick to eliminate keys that aren't required to solve the puzzle. Five auto attempts can be banked. Wow. Uh, I guess... Huge, intricate changes to gameplay. 
I guess it depends on how the skill system works, but it is looking to be less shallow than even Skyrim had. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it could be good, but this doesn't give the best impression to me. No, yeah, it, it is... honestly just looks like uh, it. Honestly, it just reminds me of Fallout 4 skill tree. It, it's basically yeah, it's just perks. Fallout. Yeah, it's just Fallout 4's perks with a different like coat of paint. Yeah, that's what was reminding me of, and that's okay. That's kind of my problem with some of what they showed off. They really glossed over a lot of this stuff, too, like the uh, traits and backgrounds and everything. Um, the fact that they've turned skills into perks is something I don't like. It's like they heard the criticism that the, uh, the perks were shit in Fallout 4 because they did what skills were supposed to do, and rather than fixing that by adding skills back in, they just renamed perks to skills. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, God. And then, uh, whenever I see this stuff, whenever I see, like, the where it's just perk trees, I just think, well, no point in doing a fucking, like, trying to do a build because that shit ain't gonna work. It's literally just be a jack-of-all-trades. Especially if there's level caps on this, like, like, level requirements for each perk again. So, rank one available, rank two is locked. So, obviously, you need to get rank one before you can get rank two. But, do I need to be, like, level 20 to get rank 2? Or level 25? Or 27? Or whatever? Because mm. that was a big problem in Fallout 4, too. Because you couldn't be as free with your builds as you wanted because they put these arbitrary limitations on you. Yeah, you couldn't just, like, spec into one specific thing because you literally couldn't pick that perk until you reached a certain amount. So you had to either just not spend your skill points at all while leveling up, or you had to put them into different things. Yeah. And it's like, ah, that's not good for when you want to build a, a certain type of character. And it also doesn't help that you basically level up infinitely so you could just get all the perks. So again, yeah. it's like, even if you want to build a specific build, you're just going to get so many perks that it's like, you're going to become a jack of all trades unless you like willingly choose to just never spend your perks anymore. Did you hear that Last of Us 2 is getting a remaster? Yes, I did. What the fuck is the point in remastering a game that's been out for like four or five years? Yeah. Because they, they have no talent to make anything new. And they it's Neil Cuckman at the helm, so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah especially when they like championed it as like oh look how amazing it is it's it's so like next gen it blows everything else out of the water and then five years later they're already like we're gonna remaster it if i just want some quick cash flow anyway go ahead massively improved as well ranks are unlocked by completing ch completing challenges associated with there's five skill trees each with 16 or so skills per tree and four levels to each skill. So there is a lot to get into here. And luckily, it seems they are... These are all just perks, though. Yeah, these aren't look. skills, really. These are perks. Yeah, I mean, look at this. You can force a target NPC up to 20 levels higher than you to flee for a limited time. Intimidated targets now flee for a substantial amount of time. Like, that's... Does anyone actually use those? Like, I'm trying to figure out, like, what in the fuck... With this too, like, how does this dramatically change the combat? Also, is there no limitation on it? The whole, like, it now just up 20 levels for me? Can I do that on bosses? Well, assuming there are bosses, I guess that's that's a stretch too. Yeah. Um, but, like, what is the utility of that? You can force an NPC to, uh, to flee for a limited time. So if they start running away and you shoot them and interrupt their running away and they start shooting at you again? If it does interrupt. If, if not, if. it's just, I guess, an I win thing? Kind of. but that... that or it's literally just like a really annoying, like, oh shit, now I have to chase down my fucking target. But it, it's that whole thing in games where um, a character will run away, though. Like, in Bethesda games in particular, I give up, uh, I surrender, blah 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 blah, they'll run off. Then they'll turn around and come back to fight you again as if they never did. 
Yeah. yeah, or they'll like run ten feet away from you into another room and then crouch down and just to do this like same looping animation of them like groveling on the floor for yeah. a few minutes before they get back up and pull their gun out again. I also like how he said skills actually matter now, and again, this is a perk system. This is a perk system being called a skill system. Yeah. Yep. And I hate that. It's like, if you're going to bring traits and stuff back, like, why not just go all the way and bring back proper RPG mechanics like skills and then make the perks have less perks, but make them more fulfilling and worthwhile to get. Like, I'd rather spec my character into a certain build and then get really fulfilling perks that actually make the gameplay better and more fun rather than just being able to level up and getting like, oh, here's a standard perk. There's four ranks of it that get better incrementally each time. Yeah. Like, that's so fucking boring. Again, it's not like a huge difference thing. It's like, oh, it's good. The perk got slightly better. Got slightly better. Yeah, exactly. Slightly better. It's like, God, what if like rank one intimidate is? Yeah, you make you make somebody run from you, something like that. Rank two intimidate, you make the person drop their weapon, something like that. So now they're unarmed and have to switch to a backup weapon or try to retrieve the weapon that they dropped. Uh, rank three, you get them to outright surrender. Like, instead of putting up a fight, you're such a billy badass that when they look at you and they see, like, your fucking visor, in your own fucking helmet visor, you've, like, done uh, little check marks for how many people you've killed or whatever. And like, that's what you tell them. It's like, they just outright surrender, like, nope, I'm not being one of them. Yeah. And, like, the last part could literally be, like, if you, if you successfully intimidate them, uh, they will actually turn against their comrades or something. Yeah. Like, turncoat or something like that. Yeah. One dollar from just a guy from Alabama. Thank you. You know, these Starfield videos have the same energy as the pogging soy jacks pointing at a thing. A lot of these <laughs> Bethesda defense videos do. Yeah. Look, it's Power of the Atom. Such a deep moral choice. Yeah. <laughs> Your actually meaningful upgrades is unlock things like the ability to mind control enemies or getting a booster pack that drastically adds to your mobility in the world. The upgrades that we've seen look like. See, now that's the only one that sounds like it'd be genuinely a good thing. Like, I increase my mobility. Yeah. Yeah. Like, look at all these perks, and these are the only two that look interesting. Yeah, and, and this thing would be like something actually used in combat. Like, oh shit, I, you know, I, I'm getting flanked here. I'm going to flank them, so I'm going to use my jetpack to just completely burst from here all the way to the other roof and run along that instead. Yeah. Uh, God, why does it keep getting worse the more we go into it? I don't like that. I hope, I this, game, just... I hope this game is at least mediocre so I don't have to do a fucking seven-part series on why it sucks. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, I'm just kind of hoping that it's, like, not so abysmally bad that we need to go super in-depth with it. I'm hoping that it's just, like, eh, it's okay. Eh, I stab you. <laughs> eh, 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 you're dead now. Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> We've seen they are actually going to add depth and that far exceeds previous Bethesda. <laughs> okay, no. That's Death skipped and gameplay for me. variety. That's skipped for on me. On a level. Hearing uh, they're actually going to add depth is fucking hilarious because out of context that implies that the other games didn't have depth, which their most recent ones haven't. I'm actually yeah. very curious what he's going to say here. Like, because he, he was starting to say something that sounded very... Ooh, well, that we it. haven't... What? They are actually going to add depth and gameplay, and gameplay variety on a level that is. So your space raider... Okay, that's not yeah. as bad as I was thinking he was going to well, say, but that's still not very good. It actually yeah, kind of cut out for me. What did he say? 
far exceeds the depth of variety of previous um, Bethesda games. Bethesda like, games. That's okay, not so much. Let me put it this way. Uh, the bar you have to get over is lying on the ground, and you are not disabled at all. Yeah. Yeah. God, for a second, well, I thought he was going to say, like, we disabled. have seen before, and I was going to be like, I was like, this looks like something Deus Ex was doing, like, two decades ago. <laughs> Pirate, Captain, look, your spaceman, whoever he may be, he may be and how he engaged depending on the skills we've upgraded throughout our throughout our adventure you don't know that the skipping is getting fucking worse but he, he says that the the spaceman that we make whoever it is will be different than his just based off the skills totally different it's like you don't know that you don't know how the actual game plays you don't know if everybody will be shoehorned down the same path because it's the most optimal strategy yeah i highly doubt that that's going to be the case because like what he's saying is going to be the case because th that seems to be a, again another one of bethesda's mo's is that they love to railroad players into choosing very specific classes and builds and stuff where it's like because it's always the most optimal and choosing anything else is just a waste of time yeah uh, fucking stealth archer is a meme for a fucking reason yeah and unfortunately, Fallout 4 wasn't that much different. Stealth Sniper was basically the same thing. Yeah. Unless the enemy was slightly too far away and didn't render properly, so you failed to shoot them because the game detects their hitbox differently. Yeah. Oh my god, and it's so annoying too, because big guns should have been like the thing to go with, like miniguns and stuff, but then they neutered miniguns to the point where they were like shooting paper pellets at people <laughs> it was so bad i hated it i hated it so much because i was so excited to be like oh yeah the fucking the power armor actually feels really good now it's like driving a car and this minigun model looks insane and like oh i'm gonna shred these freaking fools and it's like it's like yeah sure it's not very good now but that's because i'm level one i just got this thing i'm sure when i level up it'll be amazing no no it's uh, shit all throughout the game. It's so bad. <laughs> even when, even after you put fucking um, explosive shit on it, like if you get one that shoots explosive bullets, it's still dog shit. I I have to uh, get this comment. Why does that model look like Nick Ricada? It looks like a dollar store knockoff Ricada. <laughs> it does kind of look like Ricada. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, my man. I, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I am. Please too. forgive us. Where is the Baldo on this guy? <laughs> 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 this guy's gonna sit down in front of his computer and start streaming, drinking alcohol and chilling the Baldo, and reading unbreaded. <laughs> oh, and uh, no. no. Gold Birch, oh, what's the the gold he shills constantly? Oh, I forget the name. Gold Birch something. Yeah, <laughs> and, and he's like, and he's like, the Jews pay me in gold to shill gold. <laughs> oh God, I'm about to say something that's even worse. I, I'm I'm really sorry, Nick, if you ever see this, but if you made this character model like, well, uh, okay, actually, significantly fatter. It would almost kind of look like um, Dark Side Phil. Oh, oh no. God! <laughs> I I disavow. I do. Not. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't I'm worry sorry. I'm sorry, no, but I'm just saying. Like, look at it. If you made him like really fat, it would kind of look like Dark Side Phil. Don't worry, Rack. It's none. Of, nobody in the real world will, would ever confuse you for Dark Side Phil. Don't no, worry. no, not in the real thing. world. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get Nick Ricada? We have Ricada at home. <laughs> <laughs> Ricada at home. <laughs> oh. Each tree will be equally valuable, so no matter which direction the skills you choose should affect you. Did you seriously have to do that? I saw I just... something quickly, but I, I looked away at chat. Mine, depending I'll try on the and pause skills right on it. Adventure. It also looks like each tree will be equally valuable, so no matter which 
I doubt that. Oh my god, yeah, the fucking red circle and arrow. Jesus. With Shaggy on the screen. Yes, that is a sandwich stash. <laughs> you didn't know. Oh, are we cringe. Are you funny? Did you see it? Is this a spooky ghost or just an elaborate hoax? You decide. Oh, uh, <laughs> Staff Sergeant British uh, Carver guy says this was paid for by the Kojima World Order. <laughs> that tangentially reminds me of uh, in Baldur's Gate 3, they were talking about how they had 176 hours worth of cutscenes in Baldur's Gate 3. That was the last time they clocked in how much footage there was. And they said, don't worry, they're not going to be really long. In fact, the longest like, you know, you're not going to be sitting there for a Kojima length of time. I was like, nice. <laughs> God, I just want to see this entire room and this character just get in... in <laughs> just get fucking enveloped in white phosphorus. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say explosive <laughs> decompression and blown out into space. <laughs> that would also yeah. be good, but I don't, I don't know. know. I feel like white like phosphorus would be your worse. Sandwich stash now, shitty. <laughs> what am I even looking at? You're looking at some weirdo who's pointing at the sandwich collection and putting a random picture of uh, Shaggy on screen. God, this is so close to literally just being a soy jack pointing at something. It's so close. It's like right there. The meme yeah. is almost real. Is there? A, is, hold on. Is there a soy jack pointing meme of Shaggy and Scooby pointing at a ghost? Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm pretty positive there. There has to be. I'm sure there is. There has to be one. The skills you choose should affect your adventure in a meaningful way. I agree. I agree. I'm glad we could agree I absolutely on something. Agree. Now let's see how he's going to fuck this up. Adventuring on the ground isn't the only adventuring you'll be doing in Starfield. The number five reason Star... Oh, he, he just ended it there. Okay, well then I agree, yeah. The skills you pick should affect, like, the way you play, your experience with the game and world. Starfield is going to be incredible is that you will actually be able to completely customize your own ship and take it out into the galaxy to explore the world to explore the world around the world buy a ship i'm sure you can find something you like customize and upgrade that ship but hang on though so limited with how modular it is though yeah uh, again this is not I, a space suppose... engineers where i could custom build my own fucking starship like down to the last wall bulkhead in it i suppose having it be modular might be a solution to the alternative problem because you know if they don't make it modular you're gonna have issues where people don't build their ships properly and there's a wall or a floor or a ceiling missing somewhere that's vital to your ship remaining like airtight and pressurized and you're gonna get annoyed and pissed off at the game and say it's a piece of shit or whatever so they implement the modular system instead to completely prevent that. I can't wait for them to have us do a boarding action and then we can't take the ship until they're all dead and the enemy's all gone or dealt with and they <laughs> spawn an enemy in an area you physically can't get to because of the procedural nature of the ship generation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see that. I will be right back. I I can't wait until they release two or three DLCs adding additional ship parts to the game. Mm. Rather than substantive content. Hey, pay $15 and you can get these 30 new ship pieces to build with. Isn't it cool? Yeah. That ship... Dash ship, dash ship. And hire a crew to keep it up and running. I I still don't believe you. Yeah, I, I like the concept of having the crew to keep it up and running, but what does the crew do? Like, can we get boarded? Does the crew act as, like, counter-boarding? Like, do they, uh, do they assume battle stations in the middle of fights? Can I wander around in the middle of a fight and see them actually, like, trying to do stuff to engage the enemy? Can I take them over as a boarding party? Again, none of this stuff has ever been shown. We don't see any of this stuff. So it almost feels like the crew is just 
they exist. They're set dressing. Yeah. Because that's the thing. If you can have a boarding party, they 100% would have shown that off. Yeah, I feel like that would have been a major selling point. Like, go attack one of these big ships and then boarding party with, like, an entire crew. Yeah, of course. How do you make a space game where you do have boarding parties, where you select NPCs to board an enemy ship, and you don't show that off in your thing trying to sell the game that's coming out in, like, three or four months from whenever they, uh... Whenever they first posted this. Yeah. That's what makes me think they're not going to have bar- boarding parties. Because why the fuck would you leave that out? Exactly. You can actually fly your ship for a new level of exploration. Okay. First off... Alright, be- that's a lie. Not around the universe. Around this particular galaxy. Or this particular set of stars. They did say you can go to Earth, though. But, oof. I, I don't even want to imagine what they make Earth look like. Mm. Go ahead. Exploration. First off, you'll be engaging in space combat that is more than just gliding around and shooting. You'll have to balance how you. He actually says as he's showing gliding around and shooting. How you <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, this looks a lot like gliding around and shooting. Now he's gonna say that you have to balance out the systems, but. We don't ever see that in practicality. Like, why are you fiddling with your systems right here, right now? Are you taking fire? It doesn't look like it. This looks, looks like you're just beating up on something that's not fighting back. This looks highly inspired by FTL. Or uh, Elite Dangerous. I've never played so, that, so I don't know. Uh, Elite Dangerous has been uh, colloquially referred to as the... Uh, <laughs> the space freighter simulator. Because, hmm. again, like, being a long space trucker, essentially, like, long haul deliveries and stuff is actually pretty fun in that game. That's how you actually allocate your ship's power, and that can drastically, drastically change how you interact with power on the guns and shields and take the fights head on. Or you can... De- again, right now, you're just speculating for what it is, because we don't have the game in hand. We don't know if we'll ever need to mess with any of these systems at all. Or, if we could just build a ship that has all the systems max at all times. We don't know yet. We don't know if there is a thing that will fundamentally undermine this entire concept out of the get-go. All the power to the thrusters and make sure you can... This looks to add another level of depth to how you interact with your ship, but flying around and dogfighting isn't all you'll do up in the void of space. Not only can you find entire bases out in space to explore, but you can actually dock on and board enemy ships and take the fight right to them. Then you can proceed to raid their stash and get out of their extraction style. I think overall- Extraction style? No. No, they never said anything about like needing to extract. Like they did say you could take over the ship though, because I'm gonna tell you if I'm if I'm boarding your ship, I'm gonna take it the fuck over. Cause if I board your ship and I'm already taking your loot, I'm going in there for the kill. I'm gonna take everything. I'm gonna take your ship and I'm gonna sell it. I'm just reading this as here's all these basic things you should be able to do in a space game that you can do in Starfield. There's yeah. space stations out there that you can go to. There's enemy yep. ships that you can fight and board and, I guess, steal. Yeah. It's like, I, yeah, that's kind of expected for a massive open world or, I guess, open galaxy um, sci-fi game. Absolutely. I find it funny that he's basically describing this as, like, a really watered-down Marauders. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where it's like, I would infinitely prefer to just play Marauders than to play this, like, super watered-down version of it that's likely shit. Yeah. Just based off of Bethesda's normal track record. Yeah. I feel people get too excited over little things nowadays. Like, this would be like selling Oblivion by, like, there's dungeons you can go into that has enemies in them. There, There are bandits that you can kill, and when you kill them... You can loot their bodies for the equipment they have. And when you kill them, they die. Yeah, it's like, 
Yeah, that, I'm pretty sure that's how it's supposed to work. In fact, it would be a little bit weird if it didn't work that way. In fact, when you do play games where characters have uh, weapons that you kind of want and those weapons are unavailable, that's something that a lot of people tend to call out or take issue with. Yeah, the magical disappearing weapon. That guy had a super awesome shotgun. You kill him and he flips around and dies and ragdolls and then you can't pick up the shotgun anywhere. Like, it doesn't fall somewhere off of him. It just vanishes into the fucking ether. Gloomwood at least makes up for that by showing those guns getting fucking destroyed when you kill the enemy. Yeah. that That's the good solution to that. Like, the best solution to that problem. Wow. I think overall Starfield could easily exceed Skyrim. Exceed Skyrim as my favorite Bethesda title. Proven that Starfield is shaping up to be the biggest and best, biggest and best Bethesda RPG ever. Then I have one more bonus for you that will definitely. You're not prepared for this bonus, by the way. What oh, could what no. could you possibly think is the bonus? The super hype bonus that will totally, totally okay. get you down for pre-order. So we've done shooting, exploring. Building your ships, um, RPG mechanics, technically, and something else I can't remember. Is it going to be the factions? Oh, no. It won't be the factions, Silly Cree. Oh, silly oh. Cree. Will it be the fact that we get to hoard sandwiches? I really hope that it's the fact that we get to hoard oh, sandwiches. Oh, Pagan, it won't be the junk economy, silly Pagan. <laughs> Here you go. This is exceptionally retarded, isn't it? So, <laughs> if you've played the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion back in the day, you're probably going to be seeing a very familiar face when you drop into Starfleet. Are you fucking Oh kidding my me? god, <laughs> are you <laughs> Oh fucking, my god, I was holding it I was holding it back up till now, but actually fucking kill yourself. <laughs> toaster bath. Yeah, toaster oh, bath. God. Holy shit, are you serious? Is this really what he's gonna be like? Oh yeah, th that stuff didn't convince you. This will definitely convince you. The adoring fan, he's in the game. Commit shootless cliff diving. Well, these videos both sucked. Do we even want to continue yeah. with this one? There's like less than a minute left. Nah, we don't have to continue. Hang on, okay, wait. Okay. Actually, he it's may do a bait and switch. I'm going to just jump ahead real quick. No, he's not doing a bait and switch. I thought he might like do that as a... <laughs> I'm just kidding. But no, alright. He didn't. Get the shit off my fucking screen. Wow. That was a yep. stag. Yes, it was. And, uh, I, I suppose we, we might as well do this now before people start uh, taking off. I want Kree to go first this time because Kree is going to be on another stream. Yes, uh, True Pop Culture 7 has a stream in about an hour and a half that I'm going to be on. Uh, he's invited mm -hmm. me to. Well, it's a pop culture stream. I'm not sure exactly what we're talking about today, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, absolutely. Kree is going on InfoWars. No, no, that's not yet. Maybe in the future. <laughs> I can't. I can't wait to. I, if I ever got on there, I'd be like, "Don't worry, y'all. I'm gonna translate uh, Alex Jones' tism into real speak for you." Let's go. But anyways, yeah. Um, I released a video on Friday. Go check it out. Part 3 of the Fallout 4 analysis. Um, I've got less than two weeks to complete Part 4, and I'm still early into editing. I might not get it done on time. It might be delayed slightly. I'm going to try and work my ass off to get it as done as soon as possible, though. It's Part 4 where that one, my, the thing I sent you goes in? Oh, the music? Yeah. Yes! Yeah, that's, that's... I'm unironically excited for that. I want to be there for the the thing on that. Last time I could, I was trying so hard to stay awake, and I passed the fuck out. Let me grab the um, link for that uh, thing, by the way. 
Did yeah. You continue. But I, I super want to be there for that moment. I want to, I want to see the premiere. So I'm hoping the chat will really fucking dig. The. Anything else, Creep? I'm just grabbing the link for the thing. Gonna knife, um, Fallout for a knife step. Why did the link look fucked up there? I, I hate this shit. Hold on. There we go. There's the proper link. Copy. I'm gonna fall out for a knife stab it in the chat. Eh. Why the fuck up again? Eh. Hold on. Select all. Copy. Paste. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Do you have more Cree? I don't believe so. Pagan! Show thyself. Uh, same as usual. I have a YouTube channel. Uh, I have stuff there that you can go check out uh, that I've done in the past. I will eventually get around to doing stuff again. Uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I'm over on uh, Rumble at uh, Seth Dresscar, so feel free to come on over. I have my own uh, channel here on YouTube as well. A lot of people subscribe to it. There's nothing really here yet. There's a few videos you can watch if you want to see them. Um, and uh, one of my attempts at doing a more of a long-form review, I can see some things I fucked up on. I want to change that in the future. So that'll be uh, that'll be a bit different. Uh, yeah, we're on Rumble. We're just a variety stream. We just have ourselves a good old time. And love to have you guys come over. And if you are show up over there on Rumble, I'm actually going to try Kick at some point too. Um, I'm going to try and do a dual stream with Rumble and Kick at the same time, if that's possible, which it should be. But uh, yeah, Kick does look genuinely interesting, and I'm really hopeful that it it takes off really well. Like Rumble, I hope Rumble takes off even more. It's already doing gangbusters. I hope it dethrones YouTube, and I hope Kick dethrones Twitch. Um, but yeah, we're just over there having ourselves a good old time. We've been playing, uh, recently a Minecraft mod pack that lets you be a dragon. It has all kinds of different dragon abilities and everything in it. It's been a lot of fun. So feel free to show up there. And I'm still working on the Halo Reach script. And yeah, we're just, uh, we're just getting things rolling. It's, Rumble's been great. I've had great viewership over there and everything. It's been going really, really well. So I've been appreciative a lot. Very, very much so. Yeah, I guess that is me done. Cree, show your. Oh wait, we already did that. Cree, look at the news and say today, old friend. Today, old <laughs> friend. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, thank you for coming out, everyone. It's very much appreciated, and we'll see you next time. Yeah, I, I probably won't be doing any gaming streams until I get part four finished because I'm. I am kind of down to the wire on that right now. But after that, I want to finish The Bunker. I want to finish Saints Row 2 and get on the Saints Row 3. And I want to play other games, too, on stream. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, also, uh, if you want to come to my Discord, we watch free movies every Saturday. Like, you guys get to you get a free movie every Saturday if you show up on Discord. This Saturday, we're doing the Lego movie. So, if you haven't seen it before, uh, come on in. Enjoy yourself. Yeah. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you for coming bye -bye. out. Bye-bye! 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 See ya. See ya.